Gas mask and then grenades. Gas mask and then grenades. Gas mask and grenades. Gas mask and hand grenades. <laughs> Good evening, Good children evening. of the night. <laughs> it is I, your ringmaster. Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? <laughs> what is up, everybody? It is Gas Mask and Hand Grenades. I am your host, Clowny. I was going to say a particular, uh, a particular political figure's name, but I probably better be, be careful of that, so. <laughs> What is happening, everybody? It is Gas Mask and Grenades here. I am your host, Jeff. And uh, next to me, who's that guy right there? What's up? Dennis here, Analog Art Guides. How are you guys tonight? It is the reincarnation of Dead on his way to a football game. <laughs> <laughs> next to him, who do we have, sir, in the corner? Tom uh, from Cine Arcadia. Productions. I'm incredibly uncomfortable right now, but <laughs> I think this looks cool, but it's hard, hard to tell. Well, yeah, hang in there just for a little bit. <clears throat> Below you, sir, is Mr. It's the Lobo. Who are you, sir? The Accusation Network, of course. How you doing? What's up, Matt? Good to see you. And below me is Todd. Find me on Instagram at totally. Yes, this is Todd. Todd's a newcomer here. Now I'm getting an echo that I wasn't getting, and Todd, I'm fearing it might be you. So we'll sort of see how that goes. Um, but we weren't we weren't getting that before we went live, and now I'm hearing it a little bit. So is it very hard to hear me, guys? Yeah, I can't hear shit, dude. Shit. Ah, well that sucks. I didn't think about that. Um, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. How about now? A little bit. You're just muffled. Yeah, yeah. I'm too muffled. All right. Well, that kind of blows. It looks like I uh, should have thought a little bit about that. I I can try cutting this out. Let me see if that works. I'll do that. And um, so, real quick, before we get into this, Rick, where the fuck are you at, dude? <laughs> He's right there. Of course you're fucking late. You're going to be late for there your own is. funeral, dude. Holy shit. All right. I'm going to go cut this out while you guys chat for a few minutes. So go ahead and, uh, Dennis, you're in charge. All right. Be right back. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck? All right, guys. <laughs> All yours. So, uh, yeah. Uh, we're here tonight to do kind of talk about our favorite uh, Halloween flicks or movies that we watch or even like it could be anything. I, I kind of opened it up for everybody, like just to show some stuff, even if it's like comics or um just horror in general so if you guys have like any kind of things you want to show or talk about um and kind of what you guys like to do during halloween like what what it means to you um for halloween for me i mean halloween obviously kind of my favorite holiday believe it or not um but i think growing up for me halloween was always like a a time to kind of like get into these costumes and back when i was a kid we had those fucking plastic fucking vinyl costumes oh, yeah. that had, like, <laughs> had that weird oh, yeah. just that that rubber band for your head yeah and i think i was like i think i was frankenstein like two times and then i was batman batman was big when i was a kid yeah especially the tv show yeah um, so i was batman and then star wars came and then i was you know fucking and my grandma made me a a fucking hand solo like she sewed all so had the vest and the pants and i had the gun the star wars gun nice. yeah that thing was badass it was one of my favorite costumes uh, it looked really good even had like the stripe down the fucking pants and everything uh, but that was one of my favorite costumes as a kid and then they came out with these costumes collegeville came out with these like cloth costumes i don't know if you guys remember those hmm. but they were they weren't the plastic ones but they were 
they still had the same generic mask, but they had a stormtrooper one, but it didn't have all the like, I guess like the black under stuff. So my grandma sewed in all the black stuff underneath everything. So it looked pretty accurate to the um, original. I used to just run around in that and play even when it wasn't Halloween, but back when I was like six or seven years old or something like that. But that was one of my favorite costumes too. And then, then I got way more into horror and, um, I got the Dick Smith monster kit that had all this latex shit that yep. you could put on your face. And for some dumbass reason, when I was like in fourth or fifth grade, I decided I was going to put all these appliances all over my face and I had all this blood and shit. Uh, I was like the last kid out of the class for the parade, like running. And I had like appliances falling off of my face, bullet hole. <laughs> but yeah, man, that to me, that's, that's what I love about Halloween is just kind of, the fantasy about it and just watching horror movies and yeah. like can you for me right now like i do what i try to watch like m- movies i haven't seen even if they're old like stuff i just never never saw for some reason um and or i haven't revisited in a long time so uh, yeah man it's, can you it's, guys it's, hear me any better huh about the same yeah about the same all right well Unfortunately, then I'll just have to sort of go without that. Then that was, I didn't think about how bad that might be, and cutting the lip lips open didn't really seem to do much for it. So anyway, yeah, kind of a bummer. Bad. Actually, the uh, the mask itself was just a clown thing, and then yeah. I bought a bunch of fucking fake blood and dripped it all over. And I gotta say, it came out looking pretty fucking gruesome. Yeah, it looks quick, cool. Dude. Quick, quick story on on this. I had. Back when I was around 25, 26, I worked at at this place. I may have told this story. I think I told it, Dennis. You probably heard it. The other guys probably haven't. But um, I worked at this place called Boobies Brewery. No lie. It was called B-U-B-E-S, Boobies Brewery. And it was a period um, turn-of-the-century functioning brewery. And they had, like, catacombs where the the cellars were where you could could, uh, brew the beer and the giant casks were down there. So when I worked there, I was like, you know, my like I think I was like a junior. In, I was a junior or a senior in college because I was fucking around getting my college degree done. And long, yeah, way scarier without the mask. Yep, yep, exactly, Marty, precisely. <laughs> um, so I I ended up working at this restaurant. I was a waiter, and I worked with a lot of younger kids that were like 17, 18, 19, in that range. And these dudes, man... They were like always dropping acid, number one, smoking weed before they came in to, to cook and make dinners. But these dudes were into like fucking like some hard stuff. Like I, they introduced me to Typo Negative, the first Typo Negative album. And what happened was every Halloween we would do the we would turn the, the brewery into a fucking giant haunted house. And these kids, man, like industrious as hell, they would just come up with the craziest, coolest ideas. And so I was the one year I did like Dennis with the bat wing makeup and just put a big cape on and was the the guy that guided people through the next year. We hung all these curtains and drapes and like sheets and everything from this long hallway. And then we blew dry ice or whatever smoke the uh, fog machine through it. And I had a mask kind of like this, but it had a breastplate to it too, like of bones. And then I dripped fucking blood all over it. And these kids went all out, man. They got, like, pig's heads, fucking pig's guts, entrails and shit. And they were, like, laying out on tables. And people would come up with these guts and fucking these kids would, like, no joke. They would put these guts in their mouth. It was like, yeah, okay, nah, not doing that shit. But so I'm I'm in this hallway, and I would jump out and scare people. You know, there, there was this one little alcove area where i could jump out and kind of hide behind and then as people were led through in groups i could jump out and scare them well you know invariably we we were all drinking while we were doing this you know we were the cast members but we're drinking while we're doing this all night long we're getting free booze we're going in the bar and just pouring ourselves shots and you know so i'm about half ripped and i jump out in front of these two girls and two guys and i you know whatever this chick fucking flips out and just hauls off and punches me right in the face, man. Just like damn near fucking knocks me out. I'm like, 
I'm like, dude, get her the fuck out of here because I might beat the shit out of your girlfriend, man. I mean, <laughs> it, it, she hit me so hard, literally almost dropped me, man. It was like unreal. So that was kind of where the impetus for this came from. And then I'll never forget that Halloween. I thought, oh, this works really good with the adults. I'll just wear it when the little kids come to the door. Not a good idea. Not a good idea at all, man. Like, I got yelled at by this one mother. She's like, are you crazy? Scaring the crap out of my kid because it just scared the shit out of her little kid. And I was like, yeah, It's right, fucking cool. Halloween, dude. That's what it's about. I know, I know, I know. But, uh, yeah. So, what do we got going on here? Yeah. Don't let you down. All right, man. We want Metal Connection. We're, we're, we're getting there. I thought Gandalf was the librarian costume. Oh, here we go again. Um, so anyway, yeah, we, um, we're doing this thing tonight. What were we talking about? That's when I stepped away. Like how you relate to yeah. Kind of like what Halloween kind of means to you and, you know. Sure. What... How about you, Tom? Can you, can you actually hear me through the mask? I can actually quite <laughs> yeah, well. I don't know why you guys <laughs> I can't believe um, you couldn't hear my big mouth through that mask. <laughs> so this doesn't fit. Okay. All right, well, I'll do this. We'll do this. Well, I mean, one thing <clears throat> in terms of older older folks uh, like myself, the one thing I remember is I think I was seven and I went as John Matrix from Commando, the Schwarzenegger character. And I had a very realistic looking Uzi that I would point and shoot at people. <laughs> um and that's something that's you don't really see much anymore of. Um, yeah, I mean, to, to me, the the um, I guess the 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 coolest costume to me was when they came out with all the Freddy Krueger costume, like the glove and the sweater and the mask, and and I went as a uh, as Freddy Krueger. Um, you know, with with to me, which was like a realistic love, and that uh, that that was really cool. Um, yeah, and then I mean, but general with with me, it's like finding costumes has always been the pain in the ass, being so big. So, I, the person I've gone the most of most most times as is Jason Voorhees because that's just easier, you know, to grab a machete and a hockey mask. Yeah, right, easy and, one, and right? Face after people. Um, oh, it's an easy one, yeah. Yeah, and I can't breathe in this thing, by the way. Yeah, just take it off then if you want to. <laughs> I mean, it sucks that I didn't think about the mask being so Ugh. obtrusive there. With with my big fucking mouth, I thought I could easily out, out overpower that mask. But, yeah. uh, no, I, like, and I'm sure Nick will have some smart ass dickheaded comment to say about that. Masks but, are um, cool. Like, I always love masks. I still do, but they're always just a fucking pain in the ass to wear. Yeah, it's like you yeah, wear they them for are. like yeah. 10 minutes. If it's, and you're like, if it's not a prosthetic where they're actually doing the stuff on your face, even yeah. those can't be that comfortable. I can't imagine. But at least you can talk and drink. And, you know, I was thinking, shit, I'm not going to be able to drink with this thing, so I was probably going to cut the mouth and get a straw, but then – yeah, if you guys can't hear me, it doesn't make any sense. So um, I'll put it on again in a little bit when a few more people come in, and we'll we'll let Dennis do more of the talking. But um, how about you, Matt? What uh, what what's your fondest memories of early early Halloween and what it kind of meant to you? So Talk I dress up like kids. Uh, you you know the usual kind of thing. I do remember though uh, on my ninth Halloween, it was October seventy seven. I dressed up as Doctor Shrinker. For those who remember who the hell that is. Yep. He does. And uh, what was cool was my aunt at the time was going to college and she was in this dormitory with all these hot co-eds. And she had me trick or treat throughout the dormitory, which was amazing because it was all these, again, really <laughs> hot girls. I'm there with my bag. I'm going, oh my God, I don't know what I want to do to you yet, but it's got to be something. <laughs> but give me candy right now. Kind of thing. <laughs> I'll take candy now, but uh, can I get you? Yeah. later. Um, what, uh, you have any costumes that you remember doing? I mean, I gotta be honest with you at almost 58, I'm, I'm struggling to remember, but I do have a cool story to tell you guys yeah. about haunted house, but go ahead. My earliest was probably when I was six that I remember I was definitely Dracula. Um, I remember the fake teeth cutting into my gums a lot throughout yeah. the day. Those things always hurt for some reason. I did go to a haunted house. I remember it was this dilapidated Victorian. This is in Worcester, Mass. Uh, 
the house isn't there anymore. They tore it down like maybe the year later. They put a gas station there or something. But it was a pretty cool haunted house um, back when they were trying hard to make it safe and nice back in. It, that's back a great point. Park. That's yeah. a great point to bring yeah. that up. Yep. Yeah. Because back then, man, like all kind of things were kind of all. I mean, within reason. It, but right. I mean, things were. I just remember the haunted houses back then being pretty fucking gory and yeah. creepy when where or or even the hay rides were pretty pretty intense. We have a good one around here, man, where God admit this guy owns a huge swath of farm territory and about this time of the year all the corn stalks are up from the summer. He leaves them up yep. and you kind of go through the cornfields and this guy, I went to high school with this guy. It's called um Oh, God damn it. Are you kidding me? Scream after dark. And he, you know, they have two or three tractors running. And they have various, like, s segments that you go through. And, like, the one is, like, the fucking, the dudes in the pig heads and costumes jumping on with the, the fucking, uh, you know, the, the chainsaws. You know they're not real. They have, they're not blades on them and shit. But they're they're coming up and they're banging against the backs of the things, scaring the living shit out of like most girls right. and well, not all girls, but most girls and little kids. And it's like, man, it's pretty intense. But um, yeah. How about you, uh, Todd? What what uh, what memories do you have of? And how old are you, Todd? Like in your forties? Uh, yeah, I'm forty four. Okay. Uh, much like Dennis, I. I had the plastic outfit and uh, that mask with the little rubber band. I went one year's Sergeant Slaughter, and I just remember nice. all the spit just like pooling up in the bottom of that mask. <laughs> all those yeah. masks like that. And then like a few years later when they came out with the more like rubber mask, I remember having one that kind of looked like raw head rest. And yeah. I wore that for a couple years. But then as I've gotten older, I just kind of got lazy and just buy like the banana suit or the hot dog suit to wear at a party. <laughs> speaking of, speaking of fucking ugly, look at this guy right here. Holy <laughs> shit. Hey, look, it's one of those guys in it. It's one of those guys in Imperial triumphant. Look. <laughs> Sorry. What's up, Rick? I got, I got, I'm going to go back and finish Todd up here a minute. So go ahead, Todd. I don't know. Other than that, I just uh, I don't get too much into the, the Halloween spirit because I pretty much live it every day. So, what do you got behind you there, man? You got zombie and what uh, pinhead behind you there? Oh yeah, and then there's Frankenstein up above Hellraiser. There's just stuff all the way around. No so shit. All kinds of memories. Oh cool. I love going to horror movie cons. I just buy all kinds of stuff. Nice, nice. Well, since this guy arrived fashionably late, I think he wanted all eyes on whatever the hell that is. I don't even know what what is that? Rick and Morty? Is that Rick and Morty? Rick Sanchez. Oh, it's Rick. Okay, Rick Sanchez. Rick He's Sa probably had a higher body count than most of these murderers here, man. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, we I had to take my mask off. Nobody could hear my giant mouth, so, shockingly. Yeah, no, I was I was putting this thing on. Uh, right before the stream, I go, fuck, you guys are not going to be able to hear me, are you? Yeah, it's yeah, it's pretty <laughs> rough. Um, didn't think about that. It. Only Matt was thinking, uh, Matt and Dennis were thinking outside the box. I was thinking, oh, cool, I'll get a really killer mask. And then I'm like, fuck, early, earlier today, I'm like, shit, are they going to be able to hear yeah, me? Yeah, there's the logistical problem with the actual wearing of the mask. Yeah, so. Actually, it's interesting Todd brought that up. Um, those old masks, those rubbery ones the, the, that were kind of like, stiff yeah. and they come out of the box and they'd smell like that powder and shit man you're right man you put them on and you'd have them on for like three minutes and you'd be like hyperventilating and fucking breathing in toxic fucking shit off the inside of the mask <laughs> that was that was a flame retardant uh powder they put inside of them. yeah right right exactly man and i mean you were right todd i remember you'd you'd go walking around and before you knew it oh look at this look at this guy he escaped. He escaped. Barely. Barely. What's up? I'll, I'll blow you up here. I'm not going to blow you. I'll just blow you up. All right. I'll take what I can get right now. <laughs> Let's go. Are you working? 
Yes, man, I'm working. I've got people following me. I've got everybody on my ass. And guess what I am for Halloween? What are you? Sober, Phil. Oh, my God. That's, I don't know, guys. Do we really want Sober Phil here for the rest of the night or on and on? <laughs> I'm just going to be sniffing my boss's chapstick all night. <laughs> Is this a good time to break out the, the Warlock Imperial? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Hey, listen, uh, Rick, you were in the middle of a story before I so rudely interrupted you. All right. Oh, uh, no. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Did you, did you do the, the go around asking what everybody was drinking besides Phil? I, I did not yet. What are you drinking? I got a Warlock. Pumpkin Imperial. Uh, not, is that stout? 8.6, yeah. Holy balls! So, right. Yeah, man. So you know, I gotta, I gotta prepare for you guys. I know how heavy you guys can go. No, it's gonna be ugly, man. It's gonna be ugly. I might even get a little drunk tonight. It says I know Matt on board. Uh, I, I gotta be extra ready. <laughs> I might, I might get drunk and slit my wrist. Okay, so uh, that was not a dig at you, Phil. <laughs> by the way, someone has to bleed tonight. Someone has to bleed. That's right. <laughs> I am drinking an Atomic Citrus. 7.0 percent uh blood orange man i love these things dennis what are you drinking there boss i am drinking a uh gin and tonic in my fucking horror fucking cup all right god damn it hold on oh man we're back to this shit again. come on jen well it, this fucking hold on is there a way that i can oh i know how i can do it i know how i can do it Hi, Denny. There's there my boy, Hi. Dennis. Let me try this. Can that, will that work now? Nah, it still won't work. We're just going to do this to uh, show off what we're drinking. So what do you got there, Dennis? Sorry. Uh, it's just, I just did a gin and tonic, but I got this cool fucking horror. Ooh, fucking look at that. This will keep your drink cold for 12 hours, according to the person I bought it for. Not that I'm ever going to have a drink in here for 12 hours, but. Did you kill him after he told you that or before? Yeah, right there. <laughs> Flip that throat. <laughs> All right. How about uh, Tom? You're drinking coffee, you said, right? He's, he's doing the old caffeine thing, right? Yeah, and this is this is late night, the leftover bullshit that they have at Starbucks. So, it's okay, yeah. Tom. Starbucks is pretty evil. B burned, and but it, it was just uh, – I just ran over there quickly and – Grab something to eat. And you didn't even this. go for a caramel macchiato or whatever the fuck. No, was. I just wanted something. I needed something quick to get back here to be here for the oh. show. Oh yeah, that's you gotta be that's here. My, for this. That's my new band name, Caramel Marsh Macchiato. <laughs> <laughs> we do like coffee mosh. It's fucking killer, dude. With uh, what do they call those people that are coffee do people? What do they call them? Barista. Baristas. Yeah. Baristas with a great barista on lead guitar, right? <laughs> Matt, are you drinking or are you not a drinker? I don't know. I mean, uh, I drink a little bit, but this is just plain old water. Oh, uh, Matt's going out here tonight, guys. Glass. Matt here. Matt. Matt. Matt is going hard tonight, kids. Look <laughs> he's, he's right, going Todd, you drinking it anything, man? Living on the edge. Todd, you drinking it all or no? This is alcohol. What's it called? This is a this a lager. Oh, okay. Cool, I quit cool. drinking real alcohol about a year. So good I man. got really a lot of uh there's a lot of good like microbreweries doing a lot of good beers now. You're just not stuck with uh old Milwaukee or O'Doul's. A lot of good Yeah, for NA, right? right? Nice, nice. Phil so, is oh, Phil I still love the taste of beer. Phil is a uh total NA fanatic. He loves the NA beers. Oh man, this, I'm sponsored. The show is now sponsored by it, by the way. <laughs> is it? You're watered you're... down bullshit. <laughs> so, Phil, UDB. can we ask where oh. you're at? Not not location wise, but like, are you? I'm, I'm going to dox myself. You're going to dox yourself? Oh, I was hoping you would. I was <laughs> hoping you would dox live on air uh -oh. tonight. Uh oh. <laughs> I no, but am, I mean, do you, do you, where do you work? Do you hold on, let me get my notepad. You know what I don't care. They're probably going to bust me in a second anyway. Uh, I work <laughs> at Tecora Mining Company. It's kind of like, you know, uh, it's, it's just a it's cloud city, but on the ground. I think I've said that to you guys before. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it's what city? Cloud city, you know, oh, from, from, those movies, from those obscure movies. 
Ah, okay, cool. cool I'm on cool. the cold and sinus, though. I might take two more than what I actually need. Uh, oh, oh God, you're not going to OD on us tonight, this are you? This is hard. <laughs> yeah. I want to see you on, uh, like, three bottles of NyQuil and some sinus medication. That That's something I got to see. <laughs> um, I don't have anything to drink, obviously, but my, my boss, I'm in her office now. She doesn't know. Uh, she left a coffee from today. And you're going to spit in it, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> got a mouthful of skull right <laughs> let's be honest here when we're not looking you're gonna hang your wang in there aren't you just teabag city usa <laughs> oh shit all right well i i guess you're gonna have to you're gonna have to go and maybe you'll pop in later or something like that but you gotta you do what you need to do but before you go yeah. we were just talking about like what we remember oh by the way who's this clown who is this clown? I don't even know who I left in here. You don't know, do you? It could be I anyone. Don't know. Do I? Now this thing is like seriously uncomfortable, and I can't fucking see. <laughs> you're, you're you're like the you like the you're like the inbred Eddie with the guy from House. You know, Sergeant like dopey <laughs> cousin. Wait, is that Eddie? That's supposed to be Eddie, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's it's an official Iron Maiden mask. We got it on discount at Halloween City or Spirit of Halloween. <laughs> But yeah, I watched Spirit of Halloween the movie with my kids. I have to wear day. I have to wear sunglasses underneath that, it, otherwise it's like hitting my eyelids. Uh, I was gonna say, Nick, get the dicks out of your mouth, but hey, you just had a mask on. Never mind. Oh, well, I got other stuff though. I mean, you we know, were uh, what, what, what we were talking about here, Phil, before uh, when Rick popped in. We were talking about what we remember from like being a kid and what <laughs> what Halloween kind of means to us. Maybe some costumes that we did and. Yeah, that kind of stuff. We're getting into the movies in a little bit. Sure. Um, well, for me, growing up in Labrador, which is like freezing cold, um, we used to have those, like we all did, those Collegeville or Ben Cooper. Um, yep. So uh, for we'd go out for about five minutes, and the costume would just crack. It would just fall apart. <laughs> and the mess would just tear up, too. Right? So they were, they were bullshit for around here. But I do remember... Did I tell you guys about my mother putting me... This is uncomfortable and shameful, but it was a different time. I told you about my mother dressing me up as Mr. T, did I? No. I don't know if you did, maybe. No. Yeah. I remember. Mr. T was there, and my grandmother came down, and we got the... the you know, it had to be screen accurate. <laughs> so we had the, oh. the cut-off jean jacket and the feather earring. Uh, so what were they going to do? How were they going to make me black? <laughs> they did. <laughs> they did. <laughs> they did. <laughs> they did. Oh, yeah, there's a there's a and I had all my grandmother's jewelry and my mom's jewelry oh. going around and uh, yeah, so they and I went to school, right? <laughs> oh <laughs> shit! <laughs> we need uh, pictures. Yeah, and and for my hair, my dad knew a man who owned a carpet shop, so I had a ball thing, but he took like this br dark brown piece of uh, carpet and they glued it on top of the ball. <laughs> oh, so I, was, I could never go for politics or anything like that because I, I did go in blackface, unfortunately. You were blackface. I know. <laughs> wait, wait, Trudeau went to a party in blackface, didn't he? Th that was that was me and him. We were I was okay. <laughs> That's where he got the idea. I just wanted to be Murdoch, but uh, you know, is what it is. <laughs> you pity that fool's uh political career. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I wish I'd known this is what you were going to talk about because there is a photo of my mom dressed as a witch, me as B.A. Baracus, and my grandmother as a giant crayon. No way. That's fucking nice. hilarious, man. Yeah, we were celebrating. I'm trying to remember. Uh, okay, so who did we not hit yet? Did we talk to – let me see. Rick, were, you were you were next, I believe, right? Or And Nick, too. So. Uh, wait, what? Well, uh, well, <laughs> I'm I'm just talking about do you remember any uh, costumes from a kid, and being a kid, and what like what – how important maybe like Halloween's been to you throughout your life? Yeah, th there's two sides of it. Uh, well, when you're like a welfare kid, like you couldn't get the good costumes. So I was a very DIY kind of guy. Oh, yeah. So I had like the, uh, you know, so I was that kid, you know, that, that came in with my, you could tell. It's like, so I always, I was, I was the artsy kid. So that was my, that's the way I played it off. I'm like, I'm, I was too cool for the store ball shit. So I kind of went in there with the, my fucking paper bags and, and everything else, my, my, my trash bags. And I wore whatever to kind of you know make up for that. Uh, I, I also offered to do it for people. It's kind of a kind of like a, a barrier just in case you know they try to come at me. You know with that, it's it's like so. Played it played it cool, 
Uh, but I was around horror most of my life. Exposed way too young. My family had a video store. Uh, we were one of the first ones in town uh, before Blockbuster came and killed us. Uh, but I had access to all that shit, man. Like, I was oh, too young nice. for Robocop. I was too young for, like, all that shit. But uh, it made me who I am today. So uh, uh, take that as you will. But uh, I think uh, my, years, my years of Halloween, and you just saw my promo video for this thing, Jeff. So I yep. was trick-or-treating all the way up to 16 uh, because I always looked like I was 13 or 12. You know, it's so... <laughs> That's it, true. It, it, that's true. I was there. I saw it. Rick is Rick is challenged vertically, like I am, but even more. Not so. in every area. I would just. I need just need to. Nah, make that. Well, yeah. Well, I don't know about that part. I was not there for that. Well, I don't want to get you canceled, so I'm not going to make a demonstration of it. <laughs> yeah. Just, just take my word for it. <laughs> we'll take your word for it. I'm a very endowed human being. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> not to dox myself. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it, it's just. Halloween's always been my favorite time of year. Like, I like a lot of you guys. I find a lot of people in the metalhead community. Fall is like this thing we all have in common and we all really enjoy, uh, especially when you live in this part of the country with the fall air and all that shit. I feel bad for you people who don't live in the fall air kind of weather. Yeah. You know what I mean, you're really missing out. Yeah. We don't get it. So I got to say. Yeah. But, could yeah. you imagine can you ra imagine living in like Arizona year round and going out and this time of the year, it's still fucking 100 degrees in the afternoon. It's like. Yep. You know, it feels yeah. that way um, now. It's like 80 today, Rick. It was like 80 today. It was like I gotta give a shout out. So you seen MJ in the comments. That's my, my friend Melissa. So she hey, Melissa. was going to move, she was going to move to Florida, right? It didn't work out. So she moved back up to Delaware and she's experiencing fall. She thought she would be missing out on it. And uh so in a way, it's kind of like you don't want to be in Florida right now. You know what I mean? This this is where you want to be. This is the spot. So thought I gave her a quick shout out and the fact that she nice. uh, enjoyed Halloween. So we have snow. It's there's snow everywhere. Yeah, you do Who have has that. snow. Who has snow? Me. Dennis. No, Labrador. No. Oh, oh, you you have snow up there already? Already, man. Wow. Holy fuck. Oh, I mean, Damn. it was literally 80 degrees around here today. What the hell is up with this guy? What the what? Oh what? Oh <laughs> I'm a I'm a carnivorous <laughs> testicle. Look at the mouth of that guy. <laughs> That kind of looks like you've you've got a carnivorous penis head. I'm not sure, but <laughs> I mean, have you ever have you ever seen the album cover for Regurgitate's uh, Carnivorous Erection? This is not. this is cosplay, technically. Ah, okay. <laughs> well, speaking of which, Nick, do you remember any cool costumes that weren't those hot masks that you're wearing right now? Um, God, I I swear I went <laughs> I went as like. Batman and a ninja, so many like multiple years, but it took me a while to like really like kind of like embrace like like the more horror side because I was like terrified of that shit. Because I probably told the story countless times. I fucking saw Bishop get ripped in half by uh, the Queen Alien while my mom was watching Aliens, and it just fucked me up for a while. But um, yeah, it was usually you know, um, go out trick or treating. We'd watch a lot of, um, Oh God, uh, Ichabod Crane, the animated Disney movie. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. this weird one that I guess is not on like the Disney app. Um, oh, what was it? Uh, Mr. Boogity. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That. yeah. That, that used to be on like every fucking Halloween season, like multiple times on like the wonderful world of Disney and shit. But, um, yeah, like, I either went as like a ninja, Batman, or occasionally a dinosaur. <laughs> like I wasn't super <laughs> creative with my costumes. It's interesting though. Like I think back, and you still see it every now and then. But like all the kids dressed up as like slasher villains, like you know Jason, Freddy, and fucking you know Chucky and shit like that. I was like, these kids have not even watched these movies. Like they have oh, yeah. no idea what they're. They just know the image and like yeah. Nick, 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 it's the same people that think Nirvana's a clothing brand. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but, but I mean, I don't know. I, I was always like the, the 80s were weird. Like we would take like rated R properties and make cartoons out of them. Like there was a RoboCop cartoon. Yeah. I still don't get how that kind of like flew by the sense like, no, you know, that movie that was ultra violent where people are the dude got shot in the dick. Yeah, that movie. <laughs> we're going to make a cartoon for it. Market the, to the, the Toxic Crusaders is the greatest yep. one to me. Yeah. Uh, Tale, Tales from the Crypt Keeper. Yeah. Oh, shit. I remember that one, too. That was actually not too bad. That was good. I can't believe they released Airtight Granny 3 as a children's animation. 
Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, hold on. You got Airtight like a, you, Granny you know like a Download on that's that. That's another horror movie. Wait a minute. That's, uh... <laughs> that was the Canadian tax shelter uh, shelter animation series. <laughs> Nelvana put it out. I mean, he's, 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 he's got he's got, a, he's got a he's got a rep the Canuck exploitation classic. I was gonna say there's <laughs> probably a lot of axe wounds in it. It is. She goes around with a little a little uh, dinosaur that can talk, and they solve mysteries. So. <laughs> <laughs> who, who stole the pie from the ledge <laughs> so for me we did this thing um again to go back to the haunted house thing we had the we lived at the top of a, a circular uh subdivision and actually it looked like a queue because there was like one road that kind of went off with the uh the hook out the way and there's probably i don't know maybe 40 houses in that neighborhood. This is going back to the seventies cause I'm an old man. And so mid seventies, we, we did this haunted house in the basement and basically, you know, we just put up sheets on clothesline to make people wind their way through. And then we do the, you know, the, the spaghetti with the crystal ball thing with the eyeballs and <laughs> you know, things like that. But, and this is the weird part of the story. So, <clears throat> In the corner of the the, the um, basement there, I don't know who came up with the idea. I think it was my dad. So this will go show you how warped my dad is. But they basically hung me <laughs> from my armpits with like belt straps and wrapped them around. So like, and then they put, like, the boy. Well, they put a fake like rope around my neck with the thing like around the back. It wasn't hanging right. But here's the fucking weird part. I didn't know this until after this, but a woman hung herself in our basement. Oh, <laughs> nice. And my mom claims that after they did that haunted house in the basement, that she saw this this ghost started to appear the next two years. And then, of <laughs> course, she tells me that. And what do you think I see a year later? Oh, mom, I think the ghost came into my bedroom last night. <laughs> and I think that had something to do with airtight grannies. Uh, part three later. Yeah, it was around the throat, right? <laughs> yeah. Something yeah. about putting tight and granny in the same sentence is very unsettling. I just thought. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's all. Gagging things. Grannies three. I think that was the one actually, right? Yeah, Gagging. Well, but that was the spinoff. Right? Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, they they uh, they made the the bootleg figures in Honduras. It wasn't the same. <laughs> Grannies well hung. <laughs> <laughs> on your christmas tree of course you're talking about right nick like, uh, well, yeah. yeah i mean well, we're, we're fast forwarding a little bit too much let's not talk go about that i'll yeah. be back in a sec sorry guys all right man just pop in and out when you want dude thank you, a spot you, for you. all right see ya. um i'm trying to figure out how to hold on one second guys here let me get if i can get rid of i'll go back to that Johnny Mac is in the t in the house. Yo yo yo! Hey, hey he mate. sleeping hey, in, snapping. What's up? Hey, good, good. Johnny, you know Nick, of course, and I think you've met. Uh, you know Rick, of course. And yep, yep, yep. You know Dennis, I'm sure. Boy, Nick's pulling out all the props today. I mean, yeah. look, yes, we, we have a collection of all this goofy shit in my basement. <laughs> we'll bring up. We're like the fucking carrot top of like metal reviewers. <laughs> Yeah, right. Exactly. The carrot. We top. might be a little bit cooler than carrot top, though. At least that's what we're trying for. It's you're barely nice. making it. You're barely making it, man. I know. I know. That's kind of that's kind of what we're also shooting for. Barely making. Are we talking it, about so. pre-steroid or post-steroid carrot top? <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh God, I don't like either. Post <laughs> post steroids just kind of hard to look at. Like, <laughs> like I don't. I don't even know. What's going on there? Like, I don't even know what motivated him. It's like, you know, I'm just going to be this hulked out ginger that just looks yep. weird. I don't know. I'm still going to dress the same, though. <laughs> anyway, uh, in the middle, in the Paul Lynn Square here, we've got Mr. Uh, Matt from Accusation Network. You ever uh, meet? I guess you just salute the whole night. 
Yeah. It's just, just salute. Uh, you know, I feel like we ought to be playing uh, Muskrat Love in the background right now while you're on that. <laughs> he, he needs a, a tumbler of whiskey. Like, yes, good, yeah. fine, whatever. Mm, yes, right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right, good show. Starter, masterpiece starter. Um, and then uh, next to Matt, uh, not th the guy that's not uh, Nick, is Todd. So Todd's the first. And then above Todd is uh, Tom. So Tom has a channel. Uh, uh, Todd had a channel, but he's not doing anything with it right now. So Johnny's over in the United Kingdom. He's up in the wee hours of the morning, and Johnny had the displeasure of hanging out with me earlier today already once. So um, we did the uh, Warrior Soul thing earlier today. Yep. So Johnny, what um, what goes on over there in the UK for Halloween? Like, what? How's it? Yeah. Differ at all from here? Any well, much? It's 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 a lot better than it used to be. Let's put it that way. Um, back in my day when I was growing up, there wasn't a lot. To be honest, it was like, oh, it's this big American thing. Oh, we don't do that. <laughs> so we did. It, what we, we honestly didn't really celebrate it. I, I know it was starting to become a thing, but I was we were becoming teenagers, so we just used to go around and terrorize people around Halloween. You know, you'd see a few bunches of kids. We just knock on people's doors, go sick or treat. And they just look at us and go, oh, trick. So we go and trash their gardens or something. So we, we, it wasn't nearly a big thing. But obviously now it's it's it's, it's a lot got, got a lot better than as we were growing up. We'd, we'd dress up to go to the pub and stuff. So um, And now you do get a lot of groups of kids coming down, and it's quite cool. And we do the jack-o'-lanterns and, and dress so up. They, and that, did, I think so they didn't actually do uh, trick-or-treating back in your day? Not really, no. If it, you didn't see people coming around, um, uh, obviously I'm I'm your sort of age, aren't I, Jeff? So, you know, you're talking. It, it really wasn't a thing. Seventies, uh, never heard of it. Never wow. heard of it in seventies. Wow. And it was kind of things you'd occasionally see on the telly, uh, in movies and TV shows that had come over from the states. But it wasn't a UK thing at all. Seventies, yeah. uh, possibly just getting into late eighties, maybe. It was starting to come, um, but obviously now, like everything, it's uh, it's huge. And, and as you say, I just I caught the the um, a bit of the stream before uh, when I was making myself a, a cup of tea because I'm literally so I need to drink tea, obviously. Um, and 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 I caught the bit where where you say you know costumes and that sort of thing. Now recently, we the past say 15, 20 years as adults. We've we've done costumes and stuff, and you know I think a couple of years ago I was um, the uh, emperor from Star Wars. I had the full mask and the, the cowl, and I can't. I don't think I quite worked lightning bolts coming out my fingers and stuff. But um, you know you do that sort of stuff, Harry Potter things and all that. And then before we, we, you know I think in the I've done Eric Draven out the crow and um, Alice Cooper and the same sort of when you can just do the the sting. From the wrestling makeup, you know, it's quite yeah, easy right, just right. to white face and that kind of stuff. So, uh, but yeah, it, it was growing up. It was never. It was. It wasn't. Wasn't. Wasn't even a never a holiday. A as such. It wasn't yeah. a holiday. No one got excited about it in the UK. It just wasn't. It wasn't there. It was just it wasn't stuff a thing. that yeah, other yeah. people did. It was weird. I don't know. But now, now you do get them. You, you just get groups of kids coming around, and you know, you you get your your pumpkins out and that sort of thing, and people right. are. Uh, people are starting to dress the houses, but it wasn't back in the day. It was just, Tom, we started, how old are you? We had the movies and stuff, but you know. Tom, how else. old are you? Who? Tom? Oh, 40. I, I just turned 44. <laughs> okay. So you're okay. So Dennis and me and Johnny and Matt, Matt, you're 52, three, right? 55. 55. Okay. Yep. So you guys, yeah, you guys are, we're all in that. You'll remember this, Matt. You remember back in the 70s when you'd go out, man, you'd get fucking apples, you'd get yep. open candy. Now you don't get any of that shit, right? You, you never see any of that stuff because you started yep. seeing the weird shit like razor blades and apples and you know, strange. And then even like strangely, every now and again, you'd read something where somebody either poisoned someone through something yeah. like that in the 70s. Late seventies, you know, into the eighties, it was more a thing because then well, you had the Tylenol to see scare too. The time I was just going to say the Tylenol right. thing, right. exactly. And so, but it, it's weird because you know I always think about like, well, 
back in my day, because I am the old cat here at almost 58, it's like I I just kind of remember the very tail end of that being like that. Mm -hmm. But I remember a lot of times before, like we'd go out as 9, 10, 11, 12 year olds yep. and we just run all fucking night, like literally till like yeah. 10 or 11 o'clock at night in the neighborhood. And, you know, on a trick or treat night, it seemed now, granted, you didn't go trick or treating till 11 o'clock at night. But if you were like 12 or 13, you were running around. Now, by that time, yeah. you were kind of outgrowing candy and you were kind of thinking about a different kind of candy. And if you get where I'm going with that. So, I mean, then you do. Cocaine, know. right? Well, no. Okay. What, what's no, that? Under, under grand, <laughs> under grand bar is what I was thinking. What's that? What's that, Dennis? I was thinking 100 grand bar when I was 12 or 13. <laughs> 100 grand bar. Yeah. We're talking about nose, that. nose, 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 the good shit. Yeah. nose candy uh, is what you're. I, <laughs> I mean, um, 100, grand, 100 grand and whatchamacallit are probably my two favorite candy. Oh, oh dude, 100 man. grand bars are awesome. They're that, yeah. That's like the caramel with the yep. Rice Krispies, but, right? Yeah, dude. Uh, I used, dude, I remember, you know, generally you'd get the Hershey bars. But you remember when you get the Nestle Crunch, man? You were like, yes. Oh, yeah. Fuck dude. yeah, I got the fucking... Oh, shit, I got a full-size fucking Snickers. What the dude. hell? <laughs> yeah, you you remembered the houses that gave away the full-size bars. Like, you, you're you're not going to get shit back tonight because you... Yeah, that. right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember Actually, the year when... when Remember when the fun size first came out? How much of a dis disappointment that was for us? Yeah. And I remember one time my neighbor... And the first time I ever heard this word, I'm like, showing him the fun size... He's like, yeah, that's that's inflation, and I, I'm like too young to comprehend what the hell he was yeah. talking about. You're like four years old, kid, but don't worry, you'll understand what inflation's like when Joe Biden's the president. You know, we end up talking <laughs> fun size. You know? What was worse than that? Like, worse, right, was, fun size, fun size was like that. Then you start seeing the Snickers that just had the S, and it's like a little yeah, fucking it's like a little square, square, right? Super what the size. fuck? Like, oh, this is the ultra fun size. Like, do you not know what the word? Fun means fun means sugar coma at least tonight, and I'm not gonna oh, yeah. get there with this little fucking nugget. All right, so there you go. What, Rick? What was your favorite candy to get as a kid? All right, going back. See, I'm gonna be that guy. Right? So I'm, I'm the welfare state kid, right? right? So I was the one that usually got Rick the one got rolls of toilet paper. I, I got the, I got the black snake. jelly bean. I got the black licorice. I got the candy corn. <laughs> <laughs> Everything candy I got corn. was. Bad. Uh. If it had sugar in it, I, I wanted it. You know what I mean? Like, I was not very discriminate. It was, like, also survival, Halloween survival for me. Uh, so, you know, and also, we never went through that thing where, like, we were checking for razor blades and shit. Like, you know, like, people, I mean, the news was out there and it was circulating. But I grew up in a Hispanic household. And it was, in our community, it was not something we really did. You know, it was just, like, you got your dulce, right? We got, we got our candy. And we were, we were happy and content, you know, just to get anything. <laughs> so the fact we were going to worry about getting poisoned or not i mean in hindsight now it's kind of disturbing we're like maybe we yeah, should have been a little bit <laughs> you know but at the time but ignorance is bliss right so it, it was not something that i thought about too much but as far as favorite candy i mean i always went for the the chocolates first we all fought, fought a tooth and nail for the chocolates you know that's the thing that always went first uh and then you know there was like a tier system and then um i remember i would save the smarties so we could I was those say, Smarties, at school. man. Yeah, man. I remember I saw one kid do it the one year, and he'd bring his little fucking sandwich baggie with the Smarties all crushed up, you know, and he'll do the whole, you know, uh, the Al Pacino thing, right? Ah, <laughs> you were doing snorting Smarties. Yeah, there you go. That sounds like, like fun. That sounds like, like that's, a, that's a thing. Okay, I can do that thing, you know, because it's like there was always the bigger class clown, you know what I mean? And it was just like yeah. everything was like a competition. So I always tried to, uh, I couldn't, I was never quite at that level, but uh, you know, I was monkey see, monkey do, you know, but it was fun. So I always save the Smarties for those particular occasions. All right, Dennis, you already said 100 grand or whatchamacallits, right? Yeah, but I think the worst that I ever got was that old lady that would just fucking give me a fucking baggie of pennies that had like 10 pennies in it and it would be wrapped up with a twist tie on it. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, what the fuck is this? What am I going to do with fucking 10 cents? <laughs> Inflation. How am I going to tip hookers <laughs> with this? Come on, man. It was that or the McDonald's coupon when McDonald's. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. They had those coupons. It's a yeah. free, free drink or a free French fries. It's free like, French fry or free drink back mom, in the day. My mom's not going to take me to McDonald's. What? 
Yeah. I, what do you think I can drive, lady? What the fuck, man? <laughs> nice, nice. How about you, Tom? What do you uh what do you remember? What was your favorite uh Um I did I did like uh Green Apple Jolly Ranchers. Oh uh, yeah. Um on top of all the the chocolate stuff, uh obviously like Snickers, Twix. Um sort of the more if you got like the <clears throat> Something with like toffee or caramel, like the what was the name of that? Uh, Heath bar, Heath yeah, bar, like Heath bar, or yeah. that seemed kind of fancy. And I remember there was a convenience store uh, nearby when I was a kid. They would just give us cash out of the register. So really? they would, it would just like the guy would just give you fifty cents. It's like making whatever. it rain for all the kids. Yeah, <laughs> I I I think I don't remember if it was that store or somebody else, but I remember getting a dollar. Wow, you were like, um, and that was probably the rich. ultimate because that was like you could get two full size Snicker bars at the, t- at the yeah. time for yeah. a dollar, or you could get like back then, man, you could go to like your convenience store, like a Pen Supreme or a Turkey. Well, around here is a Turkey Hills. You could get a fucking like two slushies for that, like a a, a thirty five cent slushy, which now is what I don't know, like four dollars or something, probably. Yeah, yeah. All right. How about uh, Tom? What What do you remember? Your faves were peanut butter cups, Nestle Crunch bar, and his cousin the cracker. Those were like my three favorites. What was the last thing? Cracker. It was like Nestle oh, the Crunch cracker. bar, but yeah, like yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. I was I like, yeah, them, I was so like, I like that just as much. I, I was like, man, yeah, I know the crack's pretty big down in lo- Southern Ohio, but I didn't, I didn't know they were getting it out for <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> um, what, uh, it's more meth and more than crack. No, oh, it's more the meth thing now, right? 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 Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, how about you, uh, Matt? Did we do you? I'm sorry. Nope, not yet. Uh, anything chocolate? I wasn't really picky about it. Hershey with almonds, I loved quite a bit. Oh yeah. More, it was more about the bag, like how full the bag was. Yeah, I wouldn't go yeah. home until that thing was like massive. Yep. Yeah. But how about how disappointed were you when you got a lot of fucking almond joys or the ones with the coconut? I was okay with coconut. Maybe you do later, coconut? I like a little bit more, but yeah. Oh man, dude, I get the coconut shit, and I'd be like, "Hey, my again, brother, my I, younger- I was." I was the black licorice kid and candy corn. Give me the coconut all the way, man. Like that was like. <laughs> well, I, I was. I hated coconut. I'll eat it now, but I hated it back then. So I'd be like, I'd be like, I'd get my brother's sack, and I'd be like, my brother's four years younger, and I'd be like, Hey, man, I got like six almond joys. You want to give me all your sweet tarts for my six almond joys? And then he'd be like, Oh, I don't know about that. I'd be like, Yeah, you want these, man? And I'd fucking steal sure, like. Fucking almond joy, fucking rules, dude. Uh, I, I don't, I don't, I still don't love them anymore. Wait, no, I just, I mean, that's what you were trying to tell him when you were, oh, trying yeah, to oh, yeah, I definitely, oh, definitely yeah. was trying to coax him into it. Yeah. But I, is that the one? Is almond joy the one with the coconut, or am I thinking, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, 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 yeah. is yeah. it okay? Yeah. Almond joy has nuts, mounds, mounds don't. <laughs> that's it, yeah, man. Yeah. All right, Nick, what do you got there, man? I mean, other than the cocaine and the meth, what were you? Uh, oh, after? man, those were my favorites, though. Uh, it kept me up all night. I can go, like, get all the candy. Um, <laughs> honestly, like, growing up uh, down in my piece of shit town, uh, Lima, uh, at least on the the neighborhood I was in, there was an old lady that did uh, the classic popcorn ball. Oh, God. Uh, oh, yeah. Was yeah, she, she, was, she was fondly uh, sought after for those every year. That was one of my favorites, but I mean, I always looked for Reese's Pieces. That's like one of my favorite candies, and oh, yeah. Butterfingers. Yeah. I oh, I love, love Butterfingers. Butterfingers. Yeah, dude. Um, yeah. If, if I got like black licorice or anything, I'd pawn that off to my sister because she loved that shit. That was actually great because that was good trading bait for something at least. But yeah, if I got like Mike and Ike's or anything black licorice, that is that is not candy. That is just no. hot garbage. Ugh, I hate it, dude. That was punishment, actually, dude. I used to get punished with black licorice for like running my mouth uh, in front of my fucking grandpa. He had a bowl of black licorice jelly beans, and if I said something out of line, it was like, and just 
Yeah, you got to eat a black jelly bean. And it you make me black jelly beans. No shit. They suck. They suck so fuck. That is that's never been candy. I don't know how no, the hell no. that was. Was there nothing else? Like this is it. This is might like have been candy. it. Yeah, might have been. Did like, you? Have, we're have we're, we're still like a couple of steps away from inventing candy corn to ruin more candy yeah. for you. But have you ever done? Um, have you ever done sambuca shots? Sambuca shots. Which is sambuca's black licorice anise. It's called anise. Anis, A N I S E. Yeah, it's rough, man. I mean, kind of like Jägermeister. I mean, I've done Jäger bombs, but that was mostly just to get drunk to the point where I couldn't taste them anymore. No, Anis, Anis is Sambuca. I I think it's called Sambuca. I believe Anis. Man, that's like, woo! It's just all black licorice, like in uh, liqueur form. So it's that. You know, it's like a liqueur. It's like a like a syrup, and it's like black licorice. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I've had I've had absinthe before, uh, and I've had a bit of ouzo before. So I've tried like the black licorice drinks, and yeah, they'll, they'll get you drunk. But you know, burping that stuff the rest of the night and like, oh, mistakes. Yeah. I'm sure they had a good supplier, right? Your high school chemistry teacher was his name Walter. Yeah, actually, the yeah, only time I did absinthe was at a it was at an unearth show, and my fucking brother in law fucking bought it for me. I was like, here, drink this, like. It's green and it doesn't smell good. I was like, so? So I drank it. And yeah, I got plastered and got in the pit for unearth. And I watched some dude fucking spit his teeth out. And they went scattering across the fucking floor like chiclets. Oh, nice. Pretty awesome. Not not for him. Not for him. Yeah, right. No. How about you, Johnny? What's your favorite candy there? Well, I guess that's, again, here in the UK, sort of mostly, if you're talking chocolate and stuff, we, we do... Um, the Cadbury's chocolate, which has just got like oh, so yeah. much cocoa in it, it's just uh, it, it's it's quite scary. My my, own, uh, my wife, she won't have any other chocolate. She only wants the Cadbury's stuff. She wants the good shit. Right. So, um, to to be honest, I, I I used to eat anything, and I'm still quite happy with uh, with any sort of candies. To be honest, so I'm I'm not really fussy. As I said, that we, we it took us till about the night mid 90s to get a lot of the hershey's and all that sort of stuff over them still you can only no find kidding. it there's no there'll be a there'll be a, an aisle in the supermarket that says american shit on it and you could just pick up american stuff because it was okay. still like a big thing it honestly didn't import at all and when it, whenever people would go go over to like florida on holiday and they'd come back and, they, and they'd go oh we've got this chocolate for you and you'd pick up a hershey bag and go, oh fuck, what's this shit doesn't taste like chocolate it's like bitter and it's like it doesn't doesn't taste creamy and chocolatey yeah, yeah so yeah. uh yeah it, it, I, it it's kind of like i know you you can't get the, the cab these chocolate you used to not be able to get it anywhere apart from the uk because it had like too much cocoa in it and i think people were going well we're not just eating that stuff it's just pure lots your teeth and it's like well, yeah that's why you why you have it obviously right so <laughs> um yeah as i we did for us it, it sweets and stuff it was always kind of different um, we never called it candy, obviously, because it, mm. it was just sweets. <laughs> so, Cadbury's yeah, chocolate so. bars are awesome. Oh, I think they're great. Don't they make the one that uh, Cadbury makes the one with the, uh, the caramel in it, okay. right? They make, the, they yeah. make the, that horrible fucking the Cadbury egg. I hate those things. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a commercial. Yeah. commercial. They've been running for 20 years. They just won't change oh. it. You yeah, know, yeah like, no, there's no need because it's the same people buying it. I know, like, a handful of Cadbury eggs, <laughs> but fans and it's like oh yeah i know it's great it's like it's it's a chocolate ball filled with snot and it's <laughs> it's awful yeah, yeah it does Stop look like slime to yourself kinda, yeah i my favorite though yeah. man were the uh the sweet tarts man like the real sweet tarts that you would get It'd be like oh man and then you know you'd pig out on them and then your fucking tongue would be all like gnarly and you'd get like fucking ulcers on your tongue from all the the yeah. acid and shit like that that shit was awesome man and the uh, other things um, that I loved were, um, I think they were called, were they called marshmallow? Marshmallow? Mallow cup. Mallow cups. Those ruled. And then my favorite, without question, man, the fucking, I don't know who makes them, Whopper, I guess, the malted yeah, milk bars. Oh, yeah. Oh, holy shit, dude. Those things. Milk yeah. duds, too. I can sit there and eat like a fucking... You know, like a big one of the. I think they come in like a, like a milk carton, like yep. sort of old milk carton like thing. Yo, but not, man, if I open one of those things, I'm in serious danger of di- diabetes at that moment, right then and there. So, 
Um, <laughs> well, listen, guys. What do you think? Do you think we ought to show one of our selections from our pack of movies and things well, it might we want be to time. talk about? I think it might be time. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I will start with Johnny since he was the last one in. We will okay. start with Johnny. And Johnny's got uh, – what do you want to show us and talk about? And, by the way, to our watchers, uh, there are some people that are going to start dropping in. So you can start, um, I would say – if you're watching, like Eli, uh, Nate, different Nate than uh, Nate Beltran, Nate, the other Nate, young Nate. Uh, also, Celestial Andrew, you want to drop in? Let's just start. I, I can only take two people, so don't everybody jump right away. But if you guys want to jump in, we'll we'll get you in, let you do your top ten, and then we'll we'll dip you out. So, uh, yeah, Johnny, go ahead and start. Cool. Okay. Well, um, I'm going to do start off with a few, a couple of UK classics, and um, this is one of my favourite films of all time because I'm sad like that. You can't beat Carry On Screaming. Now wow. uh, I don't know how how the old Carry On films translate over there in the states, but as I've said, never it's, seen it's them. No. Classic UK humour. Um, not very really PC these days, but it's. Um, this this is their take on the uh, the Hammer Horror stuff. So you've oh, got nice. um, Frankenstein's monsters. Uh, you've got uh, vampires. You've got Wolfman. It's basic. They're basically just comedy, <clears throat> and they parody every different thing. There's a there's a, there's a, there's a carry on abroad where it's the British people abroad being British and stiff upper lip and all that sort of thing. You've got. Um, I think they were they were most of the, they were started sort of like sort of fifties, sixties, seventies, um, and you 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 basically have there'd be one carry on up the jungle, there'd be one carry on up the camel. That was uh, going to the uh, the French Fallen Legion. The jungle one was obviously like a Tarzan type thing. Um, they 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 basically take any any sort of movie that you could think of back in the day, and they just do a piss take on it. So this is your one of your original horror comedies, Carry On Screaming, just just basically taking all the best of the Hammer Horror stuff uh, and just make it into a comedy. So kind of a little bit like, um, I don't know, um, oh, it's Young Frankenstein or something like that. That kind of thing, but with proper British comedy talking about tits and ass and nice. all that sort of stuff. Oh, and, um, yeah, tits and ass and, you know, British stiff upper lip and drinking tea and all that sort of thing. So yeah, excellent stuff. If you if you do get a chance to cop up cop a look at this, carry on screaming is yeah. I've never heard of that classic. before. That's a new one by me. I'm yeah, yeah. It, it, it's what year one is of the that? Big ones. What year? Shit. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, I don't think this says. I've no idea. I tell you what. While while you go through everybody else, I'll Google it and let you know. Okay. Um. Uh, Andrew, Celestial, jump in, and I think Devin's going to pop in here in a minute. We'll let them run through their tent. And uh, how about uh, Tom? How about you go next? All right. Um, there we go. Go ahead. So I'll, I'll start with uh, some Mario Bava, Black Sabbath. Oh, there we go. Yeah. This, this just uh, – this is the American version, the AIP version. This just came out on Blu-ray, so I picked it up. I have the Italian version on DVD. And there's, um, so if you don't know, this is uh, 1963 Mario Bava. Um, it's uh, three stories. Um, uh, Drop of Water, which is a ghost story about a, a a woman who steals a ring from a witch and is haunted by the witch and then um and then uh the verdelock which is sort of a take a russian take on uh the vampires uh mythos and then telephone which is more of like a modern like stalker thriller and if you don't know just to kind of tie in this is the the first deceased al album look of the corpse this is basically they the cover is basically a like they just recorded the 
the TV screen playing the movie. So this is the the uh, the witch from the uh, drop of water story. And um, yeah, I, I mean, it's so for, for the Italian version, like they reorder the the stories and they cut some stuff out that would have been considered offensive and they change the score. And then also Boris Karloff introduces each story. Right. But, but the introductions are different in the Italian version versus the American version. Like he shot different intros. I don't own that one. Is that the one where there's like a face? There's like this, like a, it almost looks like a dead doll, like face in one of the three skits. Yeah. It's the first was that, one. Was that this, was that this one? Yeah. yeah that's the one. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. that's the best. Yeah, because it, it's 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 the first, in the American version, it's the first story, and in the Italian version, it's the third story. Right, in the time, ta- that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah, I gotta pick that up. That's been on my wish list for a while, and I just never did it. But yeah, definitely check out. I th- I think the drop of water, which it which is the one you're referencing. Yep. Um, I think it's one of the best. Like. Because it's uh, maybe it's creepy. 20, 20, 20, 30 minutes, but one of the best like horror shorts yep. or episodes or however you want to say or um, sections of a, you know, like an omnibus. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a, creepy, a, a, ever made like the sound design, the cinematography, and just like the 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 witch corpse, whatever that is, is super. What creepy. year is that? Sixty eight, right? Sixty three. Sixty three was oh, three. Was at least the Italian release, I think, was originally in '63, so okay. so it might have been a few years later in, in America. Well, yeah, that would make sense because uh, Boris Karloff died in '68, I think. So, yeah, nice pick, nice pick. That's one yeah. I don't know. Great, so. great, great movie. Great. Everybody answer say all. hi to Andrew. He's down in the corner down below. Nick, there, Andrew. What's up, Andrew. Celestial, whatever, something, <laughs> effigy. I think it is. Yeah. Cosmic Paul like Bear. It. Yeah, good to see you, Andrew. We'll uh, we'll good jump in you on you after we all get our first one in here. Um, Mr. Dead, what you got? Yes. Oh, I thought, fuck. I thought you yeah, I got it. Stuff. This is this is a fucking great movie, man. Uh, movie hold on, hold on. Johnny. What? I was just going to say it was a 1966 Carry On Screaming. So okay, yep, cool, sorry, cool. Dennis. Yep. All right. Go ahead, Dennis. No, you're good, man. This is a movie I just revisited, and it's a really, really great movie. Um, ghost story. Oh, dude. Yeah. Um, man, shit, man. Uh, I just watched recently rewatched this maybe a week ago. I mean, you got all, all the players in here. You got, uh, Fred Astaire and, uh, Melvin Douglas. Oh yeah. Fairbanks. And they, they have this, um, kind of packed. They did something really awful, um, years ago. And now they have this society. I, Fuck, I can't remember what it's called. It's like Crab Society or something like that. Um, but they they still talk and stuff. But now they're they're um, one of the siblings is experiencing something that's going on where uh, they know about it and it's haunting them. And one of the they each die in horrendous ways one by one because of what they did in the past. And it's it's got Dick Smith effects and. Uh, Man, the corpses that they show, fucking amazing. What year is that? That is seventies, mid seventies. It was eighties. Was it eighties? Uh, it's like eighty-one or something like that. Yep. Yeah, okay. eighty-one. I was 81. saying it was like late 78, 79. Yeah, I remember that. That's a yeah. good one, man. Yeah, and I really, it has a really good atmosphere to it. It takes place like kind of in the winter, so there's a lot of a lot of snow scenes. Yeah, um, man, this movie. If you like the Changeling, I suggest this is a yeah. really good yes. um, double feature with the Changeling. So, uh, really, really good fucking horror movie, like real horror. It's not like the shit they show today. Um, but man, this is a good. Oh, uh, fucking what's his name's in it? Um, from uh, John John Houseman is it? Yeah, like, well, John Houseman. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Um, so check this one out if you guys. If you like kind of like the movies like The Changeling or even like kind of The Ring, or which is kind of like The Changeling in a way. Um, kind of, yeah. Yep. So no uh, definitely check this one out. It's creepy. That's a good one. Great fucking direction. And um, man, killer fucking movie. 
great makeup effects. Dennis yep. OG Presto and Dennis VHS tonight. Yes. Yep. All my movies are on VHS in this episode. Oh, really? Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not shocking. Rick, what you got? I'm going to grab a beer, so carry on. All right. I'll be right back. All right. Actually, I picked this one also because I got a tie-in uh, for it. So uh, I just moved to Philly, uh, went to art school, and uh, I didn't have a car. So public transport it's my way to get around so going to shows and hanging out too late was very difficult but had a high school buddy named chris and uh, he actually was uh renting a place downtown and kind of worked out conveniently he was to describe him he was kind of tall and kind of lanky he kind of looked like marilyn manson if i had to describe <laughs> kind of a bit of what he looked like big long black hair and just the whole that whole deal and uh so i went to go see uh immolation for the first time and i didn't didn't want to miss it out. So I went to go check out the show. I don't remember who played with them that night. Uh, so uh, it was like one or two in the morning and I was out and about. I said, well, trains aren't running. And so I went and knocked over at his place. Uh, I wanted to make sure I got the right apartment because no Google uh, or maps or not like that, that I had access to. So uh, I think I knocked on the one door, nobody answered, knocked on the other door. And it was, I was like, okay, Chris answered. He's like, what the hell you're doing here? I'm like, I need to crash here for the night. <laughs> I got nowhere to go. He's like, well, in the middle, I'm in the middle watching Nosferatu. So I'm huh. like, of course you are. <laughs> but I've never actually seen the movie. I, I knew of it, but I never actually sat down and watched it. Uh, so I saw it for the first time uh, that night after Immolation. Go figure, right? So uh, this right here, it's I think out of everything everybody's going to show here, it's probably going to be the, this is probably going to be the oldest, probably the most stripped down. No, I'm not and, yet. Not quite. I got you. Okay, by one. okay. one of the most. Um, <laughs> but it's up there. Yep. Details matter. Uh, so anyway, uh, this right here, it, 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 it because of its basic and the silentness and everything of it, it's what makes it so eerie. It, 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 you could play it today, watch this thing in the dark. It still has that feeling, considering how old it is. I uh, also wanted to say this thing just celebrated its 100th birthday. Uh, last year, yeah, so it's crazy. crazy. Think how old this thing is. Uh, so it still gives me the heebie jeebies even today. Uh, it's great, great, great film. I think it will still stand the test of time. It's just an essential classic. They, they got they got sued oblivion, you know, <laughs> <laughs> doing this. Uh, but the tie in is something that came out uh last year, uh, Halloween Day actually. So this is a reimagining, uh, a recomposition of Nasratu's uh soundtrack. I know this one has a, I think how I think this one had a remastered score too, um, but Joseph Van Wiesem was commissioned in France to redo the uh, the score for this, and he used a lute. If you guys know what a lute is, it's a big string instrument, very, yeah, yeah, like but but just like a modern one. It's, it's the thing's freaking heavy, you know, it, it it's huge. Yeah, so it's, it's called uh, the call of the death bird, and. The reason he called it that was because as a kid, he had a seven inch. It was actually sounds of extinct birds. So huh. those are like the only last lasting true recordings of these birds that you'll never hear ever again. So he still had that recording and he actually incorporated those sounds into the recording mm. of the reimagining of the Nosferatu soundtrack. Huh. Uh, wow. Very interesting. Gives it a very eerie vibe and atmosphere. Also hearing these sounds of these creatures that are no longer around. You know, the kind of incorporated with this quite quite interesting with the with the imagination. And who was who's that soundtrack? Who who did that? This guy right here, Joseph Joseph Van Wiesem. Oh, that guy. Yeah, I know that guy. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Maybe you do. I don't know. Like, no, I don't. I have no idea. Who it is. Right. That's pretty wild. <laughs> that yeah. was that was the cool thing about the silent films is you would go to the movies and sometimes there was a guy that would just play like a piano to. What yeah. yeah, watching yeah. and uh, I mean, I went to film school and shit like that, uh, and we would we would watch these things and we would talk about them and we would go and see these films. I got to see Nosferatu um, on the big screen and somebody playing whatever their if their feelings to whatever was going on during the scenes, which was a really it's kind of a it it's an extra experience because they're playing something original to something right. that you feel is yeah. what's going 
happened with that that movie. So um, that's what's really um, cool about like the silent films is they would have somebody maybe in a corner like playing music to something that they feel is appropriate for what's going on on the screen. So it's like a it's almost like a immersible experience that you get when you're watching these films, which is incredible. It's true. It I was mean, like a live experience at the same time, yep. pre-recorded, yeah. but also live. It's almost like that's a concert, like to people back yeah. then, because they get to see uh, they get to see images and they get to see somebody performing at the same time. But you're not really paying attention to who's performing. You're just you're just immersed in that experience. So, fucking crazy, yep. man. Good, good, good. Great movie. Also, the seventy nine. Well, I, sp- I, sp- with, uh, I suppose Kim. with that, you you're also going to get a different experience if you go to yep. a different town or city. You're going to oh, get yeah. a slightly different experience because it's someone else's interpretation, isn't it? So yep. you, you can you can technically go somewhere else on, on vacation and and watch the same film and have a slightly different experience. So. Yep. All right, Todd. Right, what do you got, man? We'll let you uh, jump in now. Todd. Yeah, steel hey, box. Beyond. Beyond. Uh, yeah, this is, this came out early two thousand. Comes with all kinds of cards, book. Even has the necrophagia video on it for "I Will Live in Paris." <laughs> included. Wow, that. nice. Uh, but yeah, this this is my favorite Fulci movie. I never saw it when I was a kid. It came in later, late 90s, when I got into Necrophagia and was inter- introduced to a lot of that Italian stuff through them. So, uh, but the movie really connected with me. And I probably watch it, I don't know, two or three times a year. <laughs> I really love it. Yep. Yeah, beyond. Great, great movie. Good pick, good pick. I don't have that one. I need to grab that one. Um, hey, we got uh, explosive action. That guy, you know, he doesn't have much to watch, that poor guy. Yep. Just saying, poor explosive action. It's like when he walks into his movie room, it's like, geez, I only have like six titles to choose from. What should I watch? Yeah. They're all Filipino action movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. uh michael skidmore always loved the uh, typo version yeah, uh with typos yeah. are you talking about nosferatu yep mm-hmm. yep um human blotful mario says love Werner Her- herzog's version you might see that soon oh, the Randy, what's up dude Good to see you, man. you got drunken metalhead musings here mr logan what's happening uh, yeah, Devin, I don't know if you're jumping in, but you might want to do it soon. Um, there you go. Don't be knocking my Pinoy action, Devin. <laughs> All right, um, Matt, what do you have for your first choice? And by the way, I wa- I did not do any of these like in order of most importance. I just kind of pulled together a big list of movies. I think my pile is in order, but I'm just okay. That's fine. Yeah. So my number ten is definitely. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, mm-hmm. 1974, directed by Tobey Hooper. Tobey, I guess I'm making it <clears throat> uh, Great movie. You know, five kids in a van. They run into a charming young uh, hitchhiker who likes to take pictures. And they follow him and they, they get to meet the family. And we all know their strange dietary practices and all of that. So yep. very cool movie. I remember when I first saw it when I was a kid in the early days of VHS. Mm-hmm. I was blown away by how like the griminess of this yeah. film it was like visceral like, and i definitely felt that this is the closest i was going to get to a snuff film at that <laughs> age yeah very cool movie yeah yeah and greatest that, that what, rom-com is, ever is yeah. that what veganism does to you i'm just curious i don't know <laughs> could be who knows yeah i mean you think about those 70s movies and how many you know how many i i never hitchhiked but yeah. you know i knew a lot of people that did and i remember yeah. and Con- it's like you think about that now and you're like i've never fucking hitchhiked now right. for all the money in the world i just yeah. keep walking right because you yeah. never you have no idea who the, the fuck's gonna pick you up yeah um yeah. 
And even though now you have cell phones, back then you didn't have cell phones. So I think serial killers in the seventies and the eighties killed all of that. So yeah, yeah, they kind of did exactly. So probably um, didn't help the the Texas tourism industry a little bit. It's like, oh, this right. is what y'all like. And like, <laughs> not all of it. Like, all right, like West Texas maybe. But right, Brooklyn Texas. horns meant something very different. Before this. <laughs> yeah, we're very cosmopolitan right, in yeah. Houston. We got Nick. Well, I mean, it was already brought up, and I have to show it because this is like one of my favorite haunted house stories, like ever. Oh god, uh, Changeling, nineteen eighty or was it eighty one? I think it was eighty. I believe. Eighty. Um, George C. Scott. Uh, he's one of my favorite actors all time. Yep. Um, just a really cool, just creepy, atmospheric movie with. Um, a lot of just sounds that scare you. Like, there's not really a lot of gore. There's not really a lot of, you know, like jump scares. Like, there's maybe one, but the the constant whispers and you know the noises that go on in this really cool house and the uh, very depressing story that goes on because you get like a good kind of like mystery solving bit to it. But like, the main character is going through a tragedy of his own and the spirit kind of attaches itself to his tragedy and you get this just really haunting, well-directed piece. There's like a lot of big open shots that are almost kind of like, like Stanley Kubrick esque. Yeah. And um, I just love this movie. Like there are some scenes in here that are still just flat out creepy. Like uh, the chick being chased by the wheelchair. Like that's, uh, that still bugs me. And uh, yeah, just all the creepy whispers. They're, they're persistent too. But yeah, there's a lot of just like good subtle scares in here, and again, just really well directed, really just atmospheric and dreary, and no real happy ending to it. I kind of like that. But yeah, uh, my mom watched this one uh, a lot, and I ended up checking out because she loved it so much. And yeah, this is like one of my favorite, just flat out spooky stories, right up there with Ghost Story, which I was so glad to see Dennis bring that one up because that is an underrated movie. But uh, yeah, one of my faves. Oh, this this is this is fucking great. If you haven't watched it, this is just a great haunted house story. I'm sure that's a real good like film school study kind of flick too, because today people resort to the cheap jump scares and shit. Like that one kind of shows you like how to do good pacing and how to yeah. like, get the satisfaction of the buildup. And honestly, I think it, it became like one of the the most like successful Canadian horror flicks uh, of all time. Like it has like a big cult following. Um, and, but they did a lot of like great shooting, mostly around like Seattle, um, the the building where no, Melvin Douglas was, works. Well, they did some in Seattle, but the main stuff was done in Denver. Oh in yeah, the house. Yeah. yeah. Um, the really, the really cool thing about that movie is just George C. Scott for the most part, and the house and his acting and what's going on mm -hmm. in the house is like. Yep. That's like. I, I read some reviews where they criticized him being too confident and too like not not terrified enough. It was like, yeah. no, he's he's trying to process. Plus, I mean, you know, he's kind of kind of dead inside from everything yeah. that's already happened. To I, him. I think what what already happened to him, he's already like like you said, he's already dead inside. So it doesn't fucking matter. And he like, conveys okay. so much emotion without even really raising his voice. And when he does raise his voice, yeah, well, everyone's paying attention. Okay, who is this? Wish.com. Good evening. Who is okay, that, was, that was fucking oh, weird. Jesus Christ. That, was the Christ. that scared the shit out of me, that face. Good Lord. Do your parents know you're up right now? Fuck off, Nate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Where was I at? Uh, we did, did we get to everybody? Yeah, we did everybody. So I'll... I'll go next, Yo, then we'll get Andrew in here to dump uh, about five of his, and we'll let Devin do five of his, and we'll go back, and we'll let um, Nick, because I got to I gotta keep two slots open for, and, and some of you guys, if you <laughs> want to come back in later and we're open, we'll do that, so not a problem. Uh, just to kind of reiterate, this was definitely one of mine, absolutely in my top ten. It's just such a fucking killer movie. This is the uh, Severin, is it? No, who did this? Second Sight, the UK um, box set of this. I've showed this before, obviously. It's got a nice uh, book with it. Ooh. It's also got the, um, you know, like a, a write-up on all the, some of the nice. features. It's got another disc that shows 
uh, all of the sites and things like that, the house, the writing process. And then it's also got the soundtrack. So oh. great, great soundtrack to this one too, right, Nick? Is that um is that Blu-ray awesome. or DVD? What's that? Is that Blu-ray or DVD? That's Blu-ray. Oh, I, mine's a like a first gen fucking DVD. I just yeah, watched it again a, recently that, too. That, like, that man. DVD box where you get oh, yeah. it like open. Got yeah, that no, snap. No, mine's got that little sideways. Oh, on. I'm only showing me on the that's yeah. the OG. Yeah, no, mine's there got the. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, oh yeah. Well, the DVD is still in my. Uh, hell yeah. My PlayStation. Yeah. yeah, that's that's pretty old school. But this one here, the last I saw was going for a pretty penny because they only did so many of them. And it's got the um, theatrical, what is it? Upside theatrical down. Theatrical poster. Whoop, upside down. There theatrical you. poster on that side and then the cool double-sided one there. And then, like I said, it's got the um, the special feature, a ton of special features and the limited edition, um, the uh, – uh, the soundtrack to it, which again, it very haunting. A lot of mostly piano stuff, but yep. just, just very because he's a piano teacher. He's a um, like a concert pianist, right? Yep. Um, yeah, composer. And, right, and it's like you're right. He does start out in Seattle, but then he ends up in Denver essentially. Um, but you know, it's got the J card, so that's one of them. But I, I had to one up Rick. Might be the oldest thing we're gonna to see tonight. And that is the strange cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Yeah, the slipcase version. This is uh man friend uh German impressionism at this yep. point in time. The sets on this are just really hard to fathom unless you've seen it. Has everyone seen this or has anyone seen this? Yeah, yeah, I've seen yeah. it. Yeah, it's um just the the set design is is amazing. The painting of the the walls and the, I mean everything's distorted and it makes you feel like you're kind of either drunk or kind of like you know in this sort of dystopian sort of thing. You have the somnambulist, obviously the the dreamer or the sleeper, or whatever. Um, yeah. Very really surreal. really cool story. Kind of a creepy story overall. Um, is it scary? I don't know if it's scary. It's just kind of creepy and again the the music the soundtrack to it really really fantastic um the, the music is just so part of, of the whole thing the use of film, film techniques nobody was doing at the time too to get yeah. the that effect that vibe nobody else was doing yeah Devin, are you banging around with your cd cases in the background or who was doing that all right uh chill for just a sec or or else mute yourself and then go back in if you are but um yeah, this is a – man, I, I really, really recommend this to anyone. A lot of people are kind of like, well, silent films, man. I don't know if I can – it's it's just – the re, the thing that about silent films that I really enjoy is it makes you use your imagination. You're not always constantly waiting for the next line. Yes, you're reading. You know, you're reading the dialogue. But it's kind of how the, the scenes connect to the music, like Dennis was talking about, how that – it's just, and Nosferatu is one of them that's very much in that vein as well because it was silent as well. Uh, just the imagery is kind of like haunting and, and, and trippy. So, Strange Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, a fantastic film. I'm, I'm reasonably sure that Tim Burton probably had a lot oh. of inspiration from that. Oh. Like, cause the first time I yeah. saw it, because I had already watched like, you know, Beetlejuice and right. a whole bunch of shit like that. Um, and it's like, yeah, dude, I, I'm, yeah, dude, Tim, Tim Burton definitely watched this movie. Yes, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, Andrew, what's up? Say hello to everybody, buddy. Hey guys. How's hey, it all guys. going? What's, what's up, man? Hey. Andrew is uh fresh off of seeing the last weekend, right? It was last Sunday, Saturday. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, Maybe last uh, Cannibal Corpse Mayhem Gorgut's Blood Incantation. Nice. And it fucking ruled. Yeah. Absolutely ruled. And Luke, of course, asked for me, right? Of course. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah, totally. He uh, he misses you. I know. He misses me. That's exactly Yeah, it. but yeah. No, he did remember you and everything. Well, cool, cool. Told him that you said hi. He got it. He said so, hi. 
Mm-hmm. What um? Where are you at, Andrew? You're in Kentucky somewhere. Where at? Um, I'm about an hour from where John Carpenter used to live. Really? Yeah. Yeah. His dad used to teach at a Western Kentucky University, and one of my old work buddies used to work in a, a movie store down there, and he'd see the dad in there sometimes, like John Carpenter's dad and stuff in there. Wow, that's trippy. Yeah. Oh, shit. All right, what do you got, man? Um, what, what kind of stuff do you want to show us? Show us uh, five, and we'll jump over to Devin, and then we'll come back to you. So I don't have all these on physical that's why and it's and it's not all movies. I got a couple like TV show episodes, a game. That's cool. Cool. My first one is Alien. Yeah. Because of course. why not? Yeah. Um, there's not really a whole lot that I probably can say that everybody here's obviously seen Alien. Uh yep. I first saw it when I was like yep. nine, nine years yep. old, give or take, nine, ten. So and, last year then? Last year? <laughs> yeah, in the grand scheme of your life. It probably, <laughs> right? you him. Oh, did you hear that? The <laughs> use I take as an elder here. <laughs> Actually, one quick interruption here. What's the first horror-like thing that sticks out to you? What was the first thing you remember as a, as a younger guy? Um, So... I remember my dad always watched um, like the slasher movies and like the exorcist, the omen, which the omen is on this list at some point Mm -hmm. we would, uh, or he would watch all these movies and it was kind of, Oh, I wasn't allowed to watch them yet because I was a little too young, like six, seven, you know? And then I, so there was always like kind of this mystique for a little while for me around some of these movies like Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street, Halloween in particular, just because you know, I wasn't allowed to watch them until I was like probably 10, which that's still pretty young, but at the time it felt like forever is like the forbidden fruit because I had a couple friends that were still watching those movies already and I hadn't seen them yet, so. Cool. Mm-hmm. All right, go ahead. Continue on. Sorry. But yeah, uh, this movie's got kind of like a lot of, I don't want to say, yeah, I guess sentimental value to it just because <laughs> I saw it at such a young age and you'd hear all the stories about how it would, or back in 1979, they made like action figures for this and it ended up scaring the, scaring the hell out of a bunch of people who went and saw this movie, apparently. I wasn't there, obviously. But, um, This movie, uh, I was initially attracted to like the Xenomorph, but uh, you just kind of get this dark vibe because it kind of lurks in the shadows throughout the movie, and then it uh, kind of builds up. It's been a few years since I've watched it, so my memory's a little fuzzy at certain points, though. So that's kind of why I'm having a little bit of trouble thinking about it. But I used to, but I've watched this movie a bunch of times when I was younger. But uh, yeah, I kind of wanted to just bring up more like the sentimental value of this one versus some of the other ones I've watched more lately. Right. Mm-hmm. Just uh, real quick, hang on. Somebody's trying to get in right now. Uh, Nate, if that's you, you're going to have to hang tight, dude. Somebody else jumped ahead of you, so you're just going to have to chill. Uh, we'll get people in. Uh, as we can so just kind of just kind of chill out andrew and and uh devin are going to hang for a little bit and then they're going to bounce out so and then they'll come back maybe later so yeah where are you at where were you at number three number two two okay so like the first slasher movie i ended up seeing which i saw it after alien and predator and that kind of stuff scream which is not which is like it's kind of corny but you know, it's your first uh, slasher movie. There's like the mis- uh, the mystery of who's making the calls at first. Who, and then you kind of figure out throughout the movie, there's two of them. And they're covering each other's tracks. And I always liked that aspect of the movie. It kind of gave them like a... It made it feel a little more sinister. Uh, 
for that movie anyway. It felt a little more sinister to me. I haven't watched a lot of like a ton of horror movies, but I've seen a decent amount. And that's just kind of how I felt about it. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's one that I mean, I don't know how the rest of you guys feel, but Scream was always kind of like the high school you know, kind of, I don't want to say cheesy, but it just didn't do much for me. I only ever watched the first one. Well, it was like self-aware. Like, it was transparent. Yeah. It was, in a yeah. way, making fun of slasher movies, but right. at the same time, making a pretty good slasher movie. Like, I liked the first Scream. The sequel. Yeah, they, they kept pushing Drew Barrymore. We're thinking she's going to be, like, the main star. She gets killed, like, in the first five minutes. You're like, yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. The tongue yeah. layer trails. Yep. <laughs> All right. What you well, got? What else Psycho, you got Psycho, um, Psycho did that as well. So yeah, no, oh, big time. Yeah. What else you got, Andrew? Uh, number three is Eraserhead. What hmm. is body horror, but it's still horror. Yeah, it's, it's kind a, of a, a sci-fi dystopian horror, more or less, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, that movie. The thing I liked about that movie, uh, that was one that I've seen a lot more recently. With me, I don't watch movies a ton. I kind of have like a bit of a hard time paying attention for long periods of time. But I just recently watched this one, so I have a little more to say about it. But, you know, it kind of just starts off. There's not a whole lot of dialogue throughout the movie. So it, a lot of the storytelling is a lot more visual, and it's a very surreal movie. And you kind of get the, and I kind of liked how as the movie progresses, you kind of feel how the main character is starting to lose his mind at various points. Like when the baby keeps crying while they're trying to go to sleep every time or when he's interacting with the girl across the hall in his apartment room, it would just start uh, distracting him or, uh, Towards the end of the film, you can hear it start laughing at him, like taunting him in a way. Oh, yeah. And, it, and I, I feel like that movie does a really good job of showing how he's going insane and how right. the baby's driving him insane. And how, right. Uh, and the soundtrack's cool because it's kind mm-hmm. of a industrial wasteland sort of ambient, right? Yes. Like Almost like a machine whirring all the time, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the soundtrack does a whole lot uh, to build that creepy, tense atmosphere. Yes. Huge. And I mean, even at the uh, dinner table scene where the uh, where the uh, the mini chickens start dancing around. Yes. And uh, the dad just starts looking at uh, Henry. I think is his name. Yeah. He just starts looking at Henry, and he just keeps this dead stare at him. Mm -hmm. It's really creepy. And then, like, the uh, grandmother just sitting in the kitchen, never saying a word, never never moving. Oh, yeah, creepy as fuck. So I I forgot. Does anybody remember? Matt, you probably know. What's the name of the – he just died. The dude that was in Twin Peaks, the guy that was the the father. Oh, uh was it Ray Jeffy? Wise? What was it? Was it Ray Wise? That's right. Ray, no, Ray. Was it? Fuck. I'll have to look it up. I, you, I, I think you might be right. Ray might be the first name. But Did he just Ray died, die? Right? I think he just died. Right? Jack Nance. It's Jack, Jack Nance. Nance. That's it. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Yep. He's great. Great character actor. Someone's trying to enter, guys. I don't, I have, I'm full of 10, 10 people. So, Jimmy, if that's you, you're going to have to hang loose. I sent you a message. Um, I also, Nate, you're in the chat, so chill. We'll get to you guys. This is gonna, we gotta roll some people through. So, um, all right, Andrew, what's uh, number five for you? Uh, number five is Halloween, just the yeah, first one. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I told you, Jeff, I'm not really like a super, right. yeah. I probably should have watched some of these movies again because I feel a little unprepared, but that one's one I've seen a lot. A lot. And I, I think that's still like my favorite uh, slasher movie for I mean it's it's uh it's iconic. It's iconic, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, no matter how many times you watch it, you still 
probably still enjoy it. And I still mm-hmm. like, I don't know about anybody else, but that scene where the girls are walking down the sidewalk, which by the way, that's in California, but they brought in leaves yeah. from Illinois. And they, and you, if you really you look carefully, you can see the palm tree back in the very far distance, yep. but, but it's basically supposed to be Illinois. And that scene where Michael Myers steps out from behind the hedge, man, that's a fucking, that scene just always gets me like, whoa. Yeah. Always. It's like the menace walks among us. All right. Yeah. Look who it is, everybody. Look at, look at everybody. <laughs> Give him a round of applause. It is past your bedtime, young man. Shut up, Nick. I <laughs> oh, said do five. Yeah, do five. They better all be PG rated. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, and this isn't like airtight granny's number five, right? No. No, he's got four in there, though. I'm sure of it. <laughs> Uh, I start the classic, Evil Dead. There you go. Good, great flick. Yeah, what year this come out? Eighty something. Eighty one. One. Eighty one. Yeah. American Wolf of London. Mm, ah, yeah. you bastard! You stole that's, one from me. Uh, well, you that's st- on my list too. Well, you and Nick stole the changeling from me, so fuck you both. Well, ah. Where did you find? Where did you find out about the changeling from? Um. Um, uh, my next pick is the internet, which I probably, which I probably off, also influenced him to buy. But go ahead. No, you did not. This one. Ooh. Ah, there you go. You nice. animator, classic. <laughs> Jeff, I don't think you've seen this one, which is a shame. What is it? House of the Cemetery. Good one. I actually have not seen ah. that. No, that's a Fulci, right? Fulci, yeah. Yep. My yeah. version is uh, titled Zombie Hell House, but it's the same movie. The little kid I wanted to die Bob. the entire time because he was so fucking annoying. Good old I'm Bob. kind of a I'm kind of uh, weak on Fulci. I know that's a, terrible, but I just am, and I haven't gotten there yet. Mommy, mommy, help me! I did. I hated his voice. His voice. I know. That 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 might be my favorite Fulci movie. I'm generally a fan of his. I love, I love to say, or, or or the Beyond. <clears throat> it's my favorite Mortician album, but I don't really have a favorite Mortician <laughs> album, but. <laughs> And then this one's listening. kind of ridiculous, if you've seen this. Oh, oh dude, God. that's got Robert Forrester in it. Yeah. That movie's <laughs> awesome. I mean, it's dumb. I know it's dumb, but fun, though. And it Henry, is fun. Henry Silva, Henry Silva as the, uh, um, the the alligator hunter. Is yep. Awesome. <laughs> yep. Oh, I like the fucking, how the, the chick always, like, makes fun of him being bald the whole time. <laughs> like, you're balding. He's like... <laughs> Just trying to fucking hunt it out. I'm just a cop, man. <laughs> Love that, that movie. Is that five? Yes, yeah, five. Look at you, man. What a rock star. Hang on. I'm going to try to do... How did I just do that? I don't know. Oh, fuck. Hold on. You're just, Somehow, you're I was in full ball. screen mode. Does anybody know how you get into full screen mode again? I did that, and I don't know how to get back to it. Shit. Because that would be perfect for me to blow people up but anyway all right um tell you what we'll run through uh one more of ours uh sorry tom hold on i'm trying to somehow i had a full screen i had the whole screen with everybody's face on i was going to put us off to the side and pull people up to because i unfortunately because this the screen is only about this big on my computer screen i can't easily get at the individual windows to drag you guys over that's what's why I went with this full screen and blow up mode here. So, um, who did I go with first? Do we remember? Was it Rick? I think it's me. No, it was, my... was it was me on that? Yeah, it was you, right. Yep. right? All right, Johnny, what do you got for number okay, two? Yep. Well, I'm gonna follow on from Lex. Um, it's, it's, I think this is, is a UK movie, but I'm not sure. Shadow yep. the Vampire, I don't know if anyone knows it. This oh, I is know basically. It. Oh, it's a, it's a classic. I yep. did um, a little mini review for the oh, uh, fanzine in Scotland for this movie. It's basically Nosferatu, if the guy playing Nosferatu was an actual vampire. It's just surreal. Um, it's got John Malkovich, mm-hmm. William Defoe in it. I think one of the producers is actually Nick Cage as well, which is, I, I didn't realize he did shit like that. But this is just creepy. 
And when they do the filming of the Nosferatu bits, they do it in black and white, which is a nice touch. And then the other parts, just, you know, people wandering about and, you know, sort of on, on the set and all that, they do that in colour, which is really cool. It's done as like a black comedy, um, but it, it, it's basically as, as you as you think it's going to be. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's just an awesome, awesome uh, vampire movie. But it's just got so much. There's just something about it. It's just weird. But I've yeah, not seen Shadow that of Vampires. Hmm? I've not seen the, that the, one. Oh, it's great. Oh, it's, You'd love it. it. I'm sure. Yeah, it's great, Nick. Yeah. It came out about 2000, 2001, something like that. Um, okay. Just really, really good. Defoe is just so creepy in it. It's um, just something about him. Yeah, there's Absolutely. one I there's one I got to get into that. Yeah. that's cool. Um, yeah. it's it's kind of dark comedy too because it kind of yeah. well, there's there's some good jokes peppered in there, but again, it's like it's kind of like Scream where it's kind of self aware of what it is. Yeah, right. I guess it's kind of meta in a way too, but yeah, like the when they shoot back and forth between the scenes they shot for no like that's just a clever touch and. John Malkovich chews scenery better than most. He's, he's always over the top. And Willem Dafoe already looked like a vampire. So that was perfect casting. Yeah, excellent stuff. Yeah, he does look like a vampire, doesn't he? I mean, when they only cast him as the Green Goblin, it's like, they're not going to need any makeup. Oh, yes. Yeah, right, right. You, okay. you could say Christopher Walken kind of there, too. You know, he's yeah. Um, All right. Yeah. All right, I'm just going to start. It doesn't matter. We're just going a different route here because... Frankly, I forgot where people were at. So, Tom, we'll do you next. Okay. And I look like a shitty wizard now. I just you realized. Do. You do. I went from scare. I, I really downgraded from the scarecrow. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, since you guys are talking about the changeling, uh, I'll go ahead and bring this up. And also Ghost Story, because this is kind of related. Julia. This is Haunt, Haunting of Julia, 1977. Uh, the Peter Straub is... Uh, wrote the novel entitled Julia. He also wrote Ghost, the novel Ghost Story. Yeah. And then I would describe this as like a female, the changeling. It's a, it was okay. a, wow. Um, came out in the UK in 77 and I think in North America in 82 for some reason. Um, but it's basically Mia Farrow's daughter dies in an accident. And then uh, oh. she breaks up with her husband and then moves to London to move into this creepy house and just to get away from him. And there's a she starts seeing ghosts and then she basically uh, there was a mystery about this uh, murdered boy. And then she kind of investigates and then there's also people being murdered. And, and I've actually read the novel it's kind of interesting for this movie kind of how oblique it is like you kind of have to put it together or you know interpret it um which some people might not like in terms of like what's actually going on and this, this is also probably one of my favorite movie scores of all time honestly which i have it uh, i've seen that but it's been a long time and i don't own it there okay you go. and the it's like piano strings and the really cool thing is yeah the, the it's a got a moog synthesizer in the score and it's using like this really like creepy haunting way haunting yeah as opposed to like the normal like prog rock right right moog yeah. synthesizer that you normally hear like uh various bands like camel tangerine um, dream and stuff like that yeah yeah, yeah. it's That's sort of a, what year is that tom what year was that movie uh 77 was which, okay yeah it was originally released yep uh, so it was before the changeling, but it does re remind me um, of that movie. Yep. But it was a lot more obscure, um, even though it's and it stars Mia Farrow is is the she plays the lead. So yeah, that's great, man. That's a great pick. I I gotta grab that on Blu-ray. Yeah, and this just re this recently came out. This is 4K Blu-ray, and in. in in North America, it was only released on VHS until this came out. So you couldn't get it. There might have been like a French DVD or something, but you couldn't. It was hard to see until this came out and, and like a, a decent version. Nice pick, man. Nice pick. Like that one. that one. How, how about you, uh, Captain OG Press? Okay. Here we go, guys. <laughs> we're, we're going. We're still going Ghost Story. And on here, we're going uh, 
Session nine. Oh, oh, good fucking pick. Yeah, man. Uh, I've not seen it. that one. It'll so, creep uh, you out. I, David Caruso's in this. and um, Oh, man. So these guys are hired to go clean up a abandoned uh, mental hospital. Get, wow. up, get, the, uh, get the asbestos out of it. What could go wrong? Right. And uh, <laughs> so things happen. Guy finds um, some reel-to-reel tapes of, of the mental patients talking. So session nine is the last reel on the tape. But during that time, I, I, it's hard to explain this movie because you have to watch it. Um, but uh, it's very well-made, and there's a lot of character study in this movie where... You get to know the characters and you get to know what's going on in their lives while they're trying to clean up this hospital. And this all plays into the haunting of what's going on and the ending of um, what happens is uh, really eerie. And there's a lot of good things that happen. There's somebody, there's a one of the kids that's helping has nyctophobia who's afraid of the dark. There's a really good scene where all the lights go out. And he's running down this hallway where all the lights are going out. Uh, man, just a, a really good movie. And I think this movie came out in like, I want to say 2005 or something like that. Oh, wow. Fairly uh, new so, then. Yeah. 2001. 2001. Okay. Yeah. It, I knew it was 2000s, but uh, it was when there wasn't a real push for Buzz. horror movies yeah. coming out at the time. And I, I really liked how this movie kind of brought back the changeling ghost story that type of thing and i think at that time there was a lot of ghost hunter kind of tv shows going on at the time too so it kind of played into that but i highly suggest this movie if you like really creepy uh abandoned mental hospitals uh man just a fucking killer killer uh, underrated movie that a lot of people don't know. I gotta about. check that one out. What's it called again? What's what's the Session name of nine. it? Session nine. Session nine. Okay, cool. cool. Yeah, I, I rented that at Blockbuster on a whim one night, not knowing what it was, but it yeah. was along with when the when Ring, the Grudge, all that shit was coming out. I'm like, oh, okay, it's gonna be another one of those, and uh, I wasn't ready for it, man. I, mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't know it was gonna be that. Creeped good. you out. Creeped you out. Yeah. Yeah, it might be my it might be my favorite horror movie the last twenty. Well, now wow. 22 years. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Ryan Arkin really. says Killer Ghost Story. There you go. Oh, so, it's Ryan a great Arkin. movie. So, you guys, hey, get that reminds me real quick. Um, and Rick, I don't know if you're aware of this, but down towards Philly, I can't, I forget exactly. It's in a suburb of Philly, but like, um, is it that prison tour, the ghost tour? Pen, no, not, not the prison tour. Penhurst, do you know Penhurst? Yeah, one of my co workers goes there every year. Uh, and I went, that's how great good God, man, almost 10 years ago now. But I got to say, that was one of the creepiest fucking places. And what Penhurst is kind of famous for is that um, Geraldo did a expose back in the 70s, mid to late set, early to mid 70s, I think it was, called Suffer the Children. Man, you want to watch something that is absolutely, that's a real horror movie. Watching that, it is fucking nightmares what the fuck was going on in these asylums um and that is about that yeah. asylum penners and it's a whole compound and it's man dude the night we went down it was like around this time 10 years ago probably i was with my ex-fiance and our kids and it started raining man and it was just like the whole place just had this creepy ghostly ambiance of just I don't know, man. Like, it just had that vibe of, I don't really like being here, but I'm not going to leave because I got to be the brave one, but I don't like being here, you know? And it did was you do the tunnels? Yeah, we did the tunnels, dude. And that, that part down there, I'm usually not very scared of this kind of stuff, just to be honest with you. I'm really not. But that creeped me the fuck out. So if you're ever in this area of the country this time of the year, in fact, Rick, man, we should meet down there and go through there. That would be fucking trippy. I don't know. Yeah, yeah I, I guess people tell me to check out this place or that place. One guy told me to go check out Gettysburg. You know, like uh, this, I don't know. Gettysburg's this not that spot. great. 
What's the oh, one? Gettysburg's got a lot of hot spots for that. Yeah, I, I've heard oh, other ones. Oh, yeah, they got a lot of. Yes, true, true. Yeah. What's the name of the prison down there, right down by the art museum? Uh, East Penn or. Yeah, Eastern State Penitentiary. Eastern That's... State Penitentiary. We did that too. <clears throat> Not nearly as freaky as Penhurst, man. Penhurst has that fucking vibe of, man, bad shit happened here. And you know it. And so it just kind of hangs over everything. All right. Um, Rick, what do you got? Uh, this was more of a favorite Can't because it's six things. Can only show one thing. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I, was gonna, I was literally going to pull a box set. But but I, but I but I got an explanation. So this right. this is the favorite because it's sentimental. Uh, so Van bought this for me uh, when we first started dating. Okay, and I'll allow that. She knew, she knew I was into she knew I was into the horror stuff and all that stuff. So she got me the the nightmare box set. And oh. this is the cool one with all the you know with the Freddy outline because oh, the, the nice. new one they have now. It's the slim DVDs. You, you don't get this. You want oh, this. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> you know you want that effect. Uh, so the sentimental, I'm never gonna part with it. You know, um, so you guys know my story. So the original used to be my favorite for years because that was the real boogeyman one. That's when the Freddy you got the real boogeyman vibe. Uh, then it got to start getting really stupid and campy. However, uh, I'm gonna go with, and I kind of a dead giveaway because I'm wearing the shirt. <laughs> so, Yo. So uh, yeah, and this is where you first start seeing the signs of the campiness, like. Uh, with with Drift Dream Warriors, but this is the one we will watch over and over again because I knew she could watch this and not get scared like the way the first two, uh, especially the first one. Uh, so you could kind of um, let go a little bit and get a, get away with the fantasy. It's a bit of a fantasy movie along with a horror movie, kind of intertwined very masterfully into one. Uh, but you know, it still had its good moments. It had a lot of the classic cast come in, you know, before some were killed, uh, but. You know, someone had to pull the Freddy, right? It had to be that guy, right? So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, so I said again, a lot of memories attached, very sentimental, not the scariest one, of course, but it's fun. Uh, but it didn't get stupid. It's like a nice, nice dial between like, you know, scary, but not stupid, still a little bit of fun, somewhere in between. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with uh, Dream Warriors. You guys know it, everybody's seen it. I don't need yeah. to go too much into it. Yeah, and it's not Batman. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Brian, I just, Brian Arkham is watching. <laughs> it, it, honestly, like, it, it almost just falls in that bracket of just like a killer 80s movie because it oh, is yeah. just yeah, dripping yeah. 80s everything. Love it. All right, Nick, what do you got? Well, I'm, I'm going to the 80s too. Uh, I'm going with my favorite Hellraiser flick. I know there Dennis and I already talked about this one. Yeah, um, yeah I, I love Hellbound, Hellraiser too. Like, this is honestly one of my favorite sequels ever they just took everything that was gloriously gory and weird about the first one and expanded on it and took you right to hell and this movie is just amazing i love the scenery the atmosphere the uh cenobites are well i mean and the original ones are cool but when we get introduced to the doctor the doctor kind of steals every scene that he's in and then murders the living shit of everything um, yeah, this is just an absolutely fantastic, dark, twisted, but grossly entertaining movie and immensely quotable, too. Um, yeah, I, I'm a pretty big fan of Hellraiser uh, up until a certain point. Like, I think Bloodline is where I cut it off and I still have not watched the new one. But this one and the first one made me a huge fan of, well, again, most of the movies. But uh, yeah, this movie's absolutely fantastic. And uh, yeah, Dennis and I had a good talk about this one, how this is like the aliens versus, uh, you know, Hellraiser is alien. And totally agree with that. This is like the yeah. bigger, more lavish production. Uh, they kind of just went over the top on everything. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's pinhead fucking rules. Uh, that's, that's pretty oh, much what look at that. Nice. Hang on. I'm sorry about this, guys. Like, I really want to have... That's yeah, right. oh, that's sweet. Is that um? Who is that? Waxworks or what? Uh, it is not. I can't remember put this out, but I know my Waxworks. This is definitely not that. Man, oh, Waxworks yeah. is putting out some killer soundtracks. They right are. Now. I have quite a few here, actually. I, I'm about ready to start dropping some big bombs now that I got my disability settlement. Look well, out, man! We're working on putting best, From best Beyond back out. Soundtracks, man. Ooh, I love, that dude, I love From Beyond. Yeah. The yeah, the eyeball sucking thing still bothers me. Which one? The what? From Beyond. 
Yeah. 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 They're sold out of a lot of stuff. Like I'm grabbing Carnival. I'm grabbing me and uh, myself and um, what's that guy in the chat? Oh, Brian Arkham, that guy. Yep. Grabbing uh, each uh, one of us uh, a reanimator. There's a couple other uh, others I'm looking at. Well, they're repressing a bunch of stuff because they just bought a record pressing plant. Oh, are they? Yeah, so they're oh, pressing okay. their own vinyl now. Oh, good, 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 yeah. good. Yeah. They do They do top-notch Yeah. Top notch yeah, soundtracks, do. man. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, actually, since we're with we're on you, Matt, why don't you go? Why don't you go next? All right. And guys, the only reason I'm not like I'm not saying hurry fast, but we got people already lined up to jump right. in. So just kind of, I know I'm the big mouth, but I've been fairly quiet. Just um, just kind of blast out what you got, and we'll move on quick because okay. I got to unfortunately dump Andrew and um and Devin out. They can come back later, but I got to move them out to get a few more people on. So, all right, um, which is cool, which is cool. So go ahead, Matt, what you got? So my number nine has already been mentioned before. We're going to mention it again. This is The Evil Dead, oh, yeah. 1981, yeah. directed by Sam Raimi before all that, that oh, Spider-Man wow. nonsense. Wow. Great movie. It's got all the boxes checked off for me. It's got possession. It's got the occult. It's got rapey trees, all that stuff. Fantastic movie. Yeah. How's that? A, that was I, weird. That was quick, man. I didn't mean to say it right before you started talking. I was just good movie. I, Done. I just gotta get I gotta get a few people through and then sure. in our later rounds we'll we'll have a little bit more time to elaborate. But um all right, Todd. I've been Todd, I've been uh just to let you know, I've been muting you a little bit because I'm getting a little bit of a weird artifact from you. So just when other people are talking, I don't mean to be a Okay. A dick can keep you out of the conversation, but I'm it's just I'm getting slapped back on, on occasion. So what you got next, dude? Oh, no problem. Childhood rawhead rex. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know the monster always always looked kind of funny, but I didn't care. I, I love this movie. Oh, nice. And I've rented it a hundred times all the time my, my my dad would always be like you're renting that again i couldn't help it i love this movie I still do. <laughs> that's why is that like a box set or a steel book or what uh no it's just it's a slip cover just slip case okay right right who'd that come out uh on what what uh uh kino lorber kino okay I've not seen that one already. That's that's two that you pulled that I've not seen. I'm gonna have to to get your list and uh, kind of go through those. Then, nice man. Everybody I mean, else look, know that one. Anybody else yeah, know that yeah, one? Yeah, man. The cool thing about yeah, like Rawhead Rex, I, I saw it at the theater. Clive Barker story, um, right? In his uh, Books of Blood, yeah. and um, I went and saw it at like the cheap theaters where you don't want to go because you might get stabbed, but. <laughs> It was like then there was like one of these. Bums, bums would go there because they could sleep there all day because it was like a dollar theater. Oh like, yeah, right, right. But it was the only place you can you could see the movie. So I went and saw it there, and the the person in front of you is spraying chloroseptic in her mouth the whole time, ah. like a sore throat medicine, and it's like, and I'm like, what the oh. fuck is going on right now? But uh, man, I love that movie. I mean, the story's a hundred times better than the movie, but. Uh, yeah, man. Especially like when he's eating the kid. Oh, fuck, man. That 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 really resonated with me. Um, the monster, even though it's just like like a prosthetic, like the, a mask that's just like the whole time, it <laughs> still rules. Um, and the priest and uh, Rawhead Rex pissing on him. Oh, man. Love that movie. Yeah, and that monster's got kind of a metal look to him. Like he's yeah. a secret yeah, metalhead or looks something. Like it on the- yeah, the Flip cover, yeah. So I've not that, seen that one at all, man. I gotta check that this out. One. That's terrible. Bob Barker. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I forgot. During the movie, Bob there was Barker a fire. Was him. They him off there the was head. a fire at the popcorn machine, so we had to evacuate. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Yeah. <laughs> Are we sure that woman wasn't spraying chloroseptic in her mouth because of all the blowjobs she was giving during the that day might in, be, in the dude. theater? <laughs> But yeah, I had to see it. I was like, "Fuck it, we're going." 
Where the hell was that? In Frisco? In San Francisco? No, that was in, that was in San Jose, downtown San oh, okay, Jose. San Jose. Yeah. Nice. Well, that probably was the blowjob thing. All right. Um, so, I, I graduated up for one beer. Juicy Monkey Hazy IPA. 9.5. Woo! All right. Jeff's going to be hammered tonight. Anyway. Um, man, you know, if you've watched any of these streams that I've done, uh, any of the catacomb streams, you will know this movie ranks super high. And, you know, the thing about it is that the actual monster in it is kind of funny. It's not scary. It's not really like – it's almost – kind of cheesy in a weird way but the story i think is so good uh the acting is so good 1957 from indicator uh this is the night of the oh, demon, yeah, dude. man it is the night and of the demon what's that it is the night of the demon it is the night of the demon and this is the uh this one's the 10,000 limited edition which it sold out Way back when, I don't know if these are tough to find anymore because I have my copy. So, fuck you, bitches. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, Indicator Powerhouse, man. I think they do. I don't know about you, Tom, you know, because I know you buy a lot of this stuff and maybe Simon if he's still around. But man, I think Indicator Powerhouse does a bang up fucking job on their, their reissues. And this one just, man, I was so freaking out. I was not going to get a copy of it. But I did, and it's you know it's got the two different versions: the U.S. version, the European, the U.K. version. Um, tons, tons of bonus stuff that I forget what it even is at this point in time. But a fucking a massive book, and it stars Dana Andrews, who yep. is really amazing in this film. And even better, Niall McGuinness is fucking. He is so evil, man. He's just. So evil but engaging, right? And then Peggy Cummings, who just died in 2017, and it comes with a killer, killer double-sided poster. Yeah. I no mean, doubt. this is like suitable for framing, no joke. Mm -hmm. um, except for it's got big fold lines in it, which I always kind of hate that shit. But look at that, man. And, you know, the monster does look like a, I guess, like a play toy, but they use, like, smoke and lighting and yeah. various different fog. effects. What's that? A lot of fog on that. A lot of fog. Yeah. And I don't know, Dennis, what's your opinion of that movie? Oh, I love that movie, dude. Very, very atmospheric. Very atmospheric. Yeah. And, yep. you know, while it's not, like, like scary, like, because none of those, let's be honest, even the, the classic Universal Monsters, which we all know and love, none of those movies are, like, scary. No. But there's something about that, those era of movies that, they move me so much more than all these current horror movies that just, I'm like, okay, that, yeah, that was, all right, that was scary. Not, there is one that I'm going to talk about that's a much later movie tonight, but that's pretty fucked up. But, I mean, just, man, Night of the Demon fucking rules, man. Yeah. All right. Um, all right, Andrew, give us your last five, and I got to kick you out. And then if you want to come yeah, back I'll... in later, if you're up, that's cool. All right. I'll just make it pretty brief. I'm just a little uh, unprepared yeah. compared to all y'all. Uh, the last yeah, half. We're just, let me just say this: we're judging every word that you say, <laughs> very yeah, harshly. I, yeah, I've just been kind of sitting back, taking in all the uh, free recommendations that I will end up exactly. Watching. That's why I haven't been saying anything. Um, but. So, like, the last half of my list is a little different. Okay, I've got to talk about The Omen just briefly. That was another one of the earlier um, horror movies, like weird, spooky movies that I saw. You know, it's just it's a little campy, but it's... Like, when you see, like, the... It's, like, seemingly innocuous kid and stuff just starts going wrong with him. Or, like while he's in the presence of it, like people start dying and the pit, then they start seeing like the lines through each other and the pictures I meaning, Oh, you're going to die. And even at the end, like where uh, the cops, uh, uh, kill the main character off, uh, with, uh, it just looks like he's killing some normal kid, not the antichrist. So like the evil little demon kid, 
wins at the end. I just always liked that for some reason. I'm a little weird, so, you know, I always liked that. But, like, the last uh, four things I'm just going to list. I was going to briefly mention the Halloween soundtrack separately from the movie just because I think the soundtrack really – I think without the soundtrack that John Carpenter made for that movie, it would not have a lot of those scenes would possibly would kind of lose some of the effect just because he had that vision for the movie and he had the vision for the soundtrack. And I think they go hand in hand. And then, uh, one of the last things I'm going to bring up was the Twilight Zone. I grew up watching that. Yeah. Two episodes I was going to bring up were the Talky Tina episode. Oh, and yeah. Uh, terror at twenty thousand feet. Yeah, sure. they do similar things, but the things that I'll, but they do them well. Like the characters, th- like a talky Tina, you think the stepfather's, uh, well, he's already a douchebag, and they just think he's being a douchebag. But the doll's talking to him, and it's driving him insane. And um, on terror at twenty thousand feet, um, the guy keeps seeing the dude on the wing. Nobody else sees it. They think he's going insane. But at the end, you know, at, at the end of both those episodes, they kind of leave evidence behind saying, yeah, these things actually happened. Or- I got a question for you, dude. Uh, have you seen the, the version for the Twilight Zone movie? Do you have a preference? Which one you like? Uh, no. Movie? I've only or- watched the um, original show with Rod Serling. That's the only one I've watched. Okay. Again, that's I'm the only kinda... one that's worth wild to me. Lithgow did a great job. Yeah, yeah that's a good one too. I'm just gonna cut my list off there. I'm just kind of like I was a little unprepared compared to what I would have liked to. I just got a little busy yesterday. That's all right. That's all right. Look, Andrew, if you're around later, oh my god, and you want to pop back in, we'll bring you in. But I just, <laughs> I just thought I'd show you how fucking hot I am uh, in my normal face. <laughs> and you know it. And you know it. You picked at it, didn't you? I did. Yeah. Hey, uh, everybody, say thank you to Andrew for being here. Thank you, Andrew. And we Andrew, if, um, you, thank you all for having me. Thank you all for putting up with me being unprepared. No, nah, dude, don't, don't, dude, chill out. Don't fucking get <laughs> like good. that. Look, if we're uh, if we're on later and you're still watching and some uh, space opens up, I'll bring you back in. But uh, right now. I got to bump you, all right? All right. All right Peace dude. out. Thank Peace you. Peace out. Peace, Dave. All right. Uh, okay. Devin, you cocksucker, you. You're up next. I'll go back to Insane Clown Posse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I do look a little like that, right? Since since he mentioned it earlier. Ah, uh, yes. Is that Wax? That's Wax worked, right? Sacred Bones recordings. Oh, that's Sacred Bones. Damn it. Yes, I almost bought that last year and I didn't. I wasn't on a spend, I, I wasn't on a spending spree yet, Devin, right? Yeah, like you've told me the last like week. <laughs> last two months, right? Alrighty, I'll be quick. Potter guys. Oh, you play, one for me. Love that uh, that movie. Horror. Oh, look at you. Ooh, look at you. Great. Wow. I bought I bought the two after that on eBay like a couple days ago. So wait for those. Probably heard about that one from Sea of Tranquility because they talked about that on some some videos. (laughs) Well played, Devin. Of course, yes, yes, good one. The only the only only one I like after that they can. Yeah, the second yeah. one's kind of weird. Dude, two's fun. Two's kind of fun. Dennis Hopper's great on that. I don't know. Dude, Dennis Hopper shopping for chainsaws is one of the <laughs> best scenes ever. <laughs> Dennis Hopper in every movie is one of the best scenes yep. ever. Yes. 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 Obviously. I mean, let's be yeah. honest. It's the granddaddy, right? And then this is a, a modern one that I really like. That's a good uh, movie, man. I like that. That's mainly because cool. I've been interested in this story for a while, so that's what made me check it out. So, yeah. What was that? 2013, right? 14, yeah. 13? 13. 13, yeah. Also a great Megadeth song. Yeah. Yes. Is, right? Oh, yeah. No, great. One of the best Megadeth songs. Right. Conjuring. Obey. All right, everybody. Den, uh, Devin will be back later, I'm pretty sure. Cool. So, no. is, Are we is okay everybody with that? Sad? Is up, everybody Nick? sad that Devin's leaving? 
DD. I just got to say, Linda Blair is looking pretty good considering what she's uh, been through. Devin, you know, Devin we'll talk to you a little bit later, all right? Uh, that's it. All right, later. Oh, shit. God damn it. What did you, what did you do? <laughs> Hold on. It, the Conjuring movies I have an issue with just because I know the backstory behind the couple. Like, I, I honestly think they're a bunch of grifters. Oh, they are, for sure. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> it kind of, kind of ruined it for me. But, I mean, you know, the first one's pretty pretty cool. Well, I, st- like I still like it. I still like Amityville, and that was yeah. total bullshit. Oh, <laughs> complete horseshit! Listen, speaking of grifters, look who's here. Eli's here. What's up, Eli? <laughs> What's up? Yeah. What, is, what is on your face, Jeff? Uh, it, what? There's something wrong with my face. <laughs> Elective surgery. You look better. Did you do something? <laughs> I went through sexual reassignment surgery on my face. I'm just dude. It insane. worked. Oh. <laughs> uh, have- anyway. Fuck, that's hot. Holy shit. <laughs> okay, oh, it's good. worse now. Good yeah, see you, Eli. Eli. We, were on, we were on number three for us. So we'll... Um, do you have a top ten? Yeah. Uh, uh, how kinda, about we let you do uh, sure. your first three? How's that sound? Okay. I kind of... Uh, I mixed it up a little bit. It's like... It's eight movies, and then I did like two music things. That's Is fine. That cool? Okay. No problem, man. How many like am I that shirt. Love that shirt. Where'd you get that? Yeah. Uh, I got this at Spirit Halloween last year. Holy shit. Places. Oh, oh you God. bastard. Yeah, they, they sold out when I tried to grab one of those. Damn it. Oh, dude. <laughs> those are cool. Oh, go wow. All right, go ahead, Eli. How many again? Three. three. Uh, just do three. Yeah. Three, okay. Okay, I'll start with the music things. Um, for my movies, I kind of mixed it up a little bit. I tried to grab stuff that maybe not everyone would be showing just so it wouldn't be boring but uh this is a uh, my favorite soundtrack of all time as generic as that might be the halloween soundtrack nice um i have this cool version that has like uh snippets from the movie and stuff so you kind of like it's almost like watching the movie with the soundtracks this, this is a pretty cool version to get um 20th anniversary edition yeah i just i love john carpenter's music who doesn't and i have this i've had this for a long time uh this came out via obviously way before my time, but via Famous Monsters magazine. And they just did this. It's one of those old records where you just like listen to the monsters talk. Nice. It's, it's <laughs> totally sweet. pointless, but it's kind of, it's a lot of fun. Like the guy that did the voices, Gabriel Dell, uh, he did a really good job. It's very entertaining. Um, even though it shows all the monsters on the front, you only get Frankenstein and Dracula. So that's kind of, they should have they done all five, but it's, it's a lot of fun. Frank, I want to well, hear the creature talk. <laughs> yeah and uh let's see for i'll do one movie um this one is kind of uh this is a modern movie from like 2007 murder party uh it's a really low budget movie it's about this just like total dorky guy who gets invited to this uh halloween party by a bunch of people that just want to kill somebody so they're like let's just get some low-hanging fruit guy so we can murder him because we want to and it's and he fights back and it's it's really low budget but it's a lot of fun this director went on to do like green room you guys probably know that one oh, yeah yeah uh, he's a really good director but this is like kind of like his roots this might one of those when the hunter movie. becomes the prey kind of things right yeah and he's like this total dork and he ends up uh you know uh rising up to the occasion it's a lot of fun um, yeah, the, the, guy that, the guy that the guy that the guy that stars in that movie, he used. I worked at a video store. And he was he was used to come in all the time. No shit. So we would be like, we tell him like, oh, murder party, <laughs> checked out a few times this week. That's awesome. <laughs> I, That's I awesome. forgot his name. His name uh, is it? Mike? I think it's Chris Sharp. Seems like he'd be a cool guy though. <laughs> he's a great character in the in the he's a great actor in the movie. Okay, everybody. Say hello to the one, the only Cecil B. DeMille. No, I'm just kidding. It's uh Jimmy from Future Ruins. Oh, man. Ah. What's up, my dude? I love you, man. Uh this guy, I don't know if anybody caught it tonight. I don't think any of you did, but maybe you'll watch it. Maybe you'll be nice and go watch it. But Jimmy did the full director's cut, as we would like to call it, of the uh, theme song for Gas Mask and Hand Grenades. The full two minute. It's only two minutes, guys. If it's, it's unrated, not- I'll watch it. But if it's not, not even quite that. No. 
<laughs> What's that? Not even quite two minutes, but it's almost there. Yeah, about minute 57. But Jimmy did a fucking killer job. And some of you guys, like Rick and Nick and Dennis and maybe Johnny Mac, I think. Maybe. I think most of you guys are in there. I think yeah. most of you guys are all, you make a cameo appearance. Appearance, and uh, thank you so much for all you guys do for my channel, especially you, Jimmy and Rick, because you guys, you know, and Nick, you guys all put a lot of effort into uh, uh, coping with my madness. So there you go. Um, and Nick, don't give me any shit about all the texts. Yeah. Fuck off. All right? Well, let me check my phone see if I missed any. Just fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> Two notifications. Fuck you and the train you rode in on, my friend. Anyway, all right. Uh, yeah. So, Jimmy, you want to catch up to us a little bit? You want to do one, two, or three, or what do you want to do? Yeah, sure. I'll do three real quick. Are you? How long are you gonna hang out? Do you think? Yeah, whatever. You know, I can hang uh, out. I'll tell you what. Do two to catch up, and then we'll go back in and we'll we'll do another cycle, and then we'll we'll sort of see where we're at. All right. All right. Cool, man. Um. So. Yeah, I haven't really seen everybody's picks yet, so... Hold on one sec. Hold on. Jimmy, Is this is your costume? You're a metalhead? Is that is that what's your costume? Uh, like a cannibal metalhead or something, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> not the best I could throw together in yeah, my really It's like, part, it's like part, like part pleasures of the flesh right now. Yeah, right there. there you go. The flesh, Perfect. There you go. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Sorry, and, you know, the guy on the back with the, uh, the bone in the mouth. Yeah. So, perfect. Um... <clears throat> So anyway, I didn't see uh, everybody's picks yet, but uh, yeah, just uh, my picks are pretty specific to Halloween. So uh, the first one I'm going to go with is going to be uh, 1988 Pumpkinhead. Ah, oh, I love that movie. Nice. Lance yeah. Hendrickson is uh, Lance Christmas. Lance Hendrickson. Yeah, man. Um, you know, I mean, it's you know, it's not a perfect film by any means, but uh, you know, for the 80s, late 80s, it's it's uh, great. Uh, Lance Hendrickson, if you love him, uh, you know the. The monster was, uh, you know, not perfect, kind of modeled after, uh, you know, the alien, 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 alien sort yeah. of, you know, but there's some great, uh, you know, sort of like, uh, I think like the uh, interplay between Lance Henriksen and the sun and, you know, kind of gives it uh, a lot of uh, emotional weight to the whole story, you know, leading up to when he goes uh, into the woods and seeks out the witch uh, to, uh, you know, ultimately conjure Pumpkinhead uh, is some great scenes, some great, really atmospheric, uh, you know, supernatural uh, sort of, uh, you know, scenes in the whole thing. And then it kind of turns into sort of a slasher flick, you know, typical late 80s. But, uh, you know, yeah, that, uh, that movie's great, dude. I love and I love me some Lance Hendrickson <clears throat> hardcore. So yeah, I can yeah, do no I, wrong. Yeah. Never can do any wrong. Really well done. And I mean, he sells the whole thing. I mean, it's just some great yes. uh you know, I mean, it could have been, if they wouldn't have had him, if they just had some Joe Schmo. Yeah, it would have sucked. It would have sucked. Yeah, it wouldn't have been good. But it's like, you know, he just sells the whole thing. And uh, again, you know, I mean, just like the whole like scene with him walking into the woods and like find, you know, seeking out the witch that lives out there, kind of evokes the sort of like Halloweenish, you know, spooky feeling that I kind of would want. You know, for me, I like uh, more atmospheric and just you know, kind of like uh, supernatural films when it comes to you know, my picks aren't necessarily going to be like you know, my favorite horror movies or anything like that, more specific to Halloween. But, uh, yeah, Pumpkinhead, man, a great one. I haven't actually watched it in a while, but I certainly had to pick it. It's great. Dude, Stan Winston <laughs> directed that, too. Like, that was his directorial debut. Yeah, he did a great job. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that. I love the Pumpkinhead creature. I think it's awesome. But you're right. they It's stolen from Alien, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, and it's, you know, I mean, there's some good scenes. It just, it kind of weaves in between, like, trying to figure out if it's a, you know, more slasher, kind of the aggravating uh, teenagers, you know, kind of thing. They all get killed, thankfully, because they all suck, and it's kind of funny. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, it kind of bleeds between those two sort of genres in a way. But uh, uh, second pick, uh, this one, obviously, part one is amazing, but I got to go with Creep Show part two. Ooh, um, there you go. Oh, yeah. And, uh, I don't know, man. Again, you know, the first one's great, but this one, I don't know, there's just something really special about it. It's absolutely hilarious and disgusting at the same time. I mean, it's the just... Raft. Yeah, The Raft. It's, man. I mean, that one's yeah. kind of still hard to watch, uh, you know, cool. some of those scenes. Uh, but then you get to uh, the hitchhiker, uh, you know, come on, thanks for the ride, lady, uh, <laughs> over and over again, and she just keeps killing him. It keeps coming back. It's funny, but it's well done. Um, Romero... 
Stephen King. I mean, you can't really go wrong with that. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, really wish they would. I know that there's a bunch of follow-ups to this on on uh, Shutter. What I've not seen any of those, but um, really kind of just like. And I love the, all the animation in this too. Like all yeah. the animation is really well done. Uh, the creep looks really cool. Uh, just just kind of like fits the Halloween vibe in a lot of ways. Like you know, if you watch some of those uh, animation scenes, it like feels like it's in the fall, and uh, you know, it's like this weird like juxtaposition between like watching something as a kid and seeing something really gruesome. So, uh, but uh, yeah, great flick. Um, you know, it's really hard to say that it's better than part one because one is just uh, absolutely a classic. But uh, yeah, really special flick here. Three, three really great and very different uh, stories. Uh, there's no, there's no one scene where like the guys, the the, the, the the fat dude is watching like the Tarzan movie and he's going loco. And every time that scene comes on, I gotta say it along with him. Me too. You know what I'm talking about? Right before the arrow goes right through him. Right. Yep. And a little bit of trivia: the guy, the, the 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 main bad guy in that in that episode is is also uh, in Fight Club. He's the guy with the, the big fat dude with the big tits. You know, oh, same dude. Yeah, I never made that connection. Really? <laughs> yeah, well, I thought that was fat dude with, with big tits. Yeah, that was meatloaf. Yeah, that what was, was his meatloaf. name? Remember, they all say like, "We." What was his name again? Uh, his name Robert, Robert Paulson. Paulson. Yeah, mm -hmm. that dude. Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy yeah. give us one more. Okay. Um, then you'll be caught up to us. Yeah, dude. Um, Suspiria, for sure. I mean, uh, one of my favorite films ever. Um, but uh, I mean, it's uh, I, I love all Argento stuff. But I mean, yeah, as far as Halloween goes, it's witches. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like, uh, even though it's a witch movie, it's very uh, like kind of slasher kind of style as well. Um, some just really amazing, uh, just the, the lighting and the, the, the film, you know, I mean, uh, you know, it's kind of like uh, I, I would call this like the, uh, the the Citizen Kane of horror. You know, it's uh, everything to do with like, the lighting, the shadows, like just uh, all the all the different images and like the, the way that it evokes the mood, the soundtrack. Everything just fits perfectly into this film. Uh, the ending is great. I mean, it's just uh, very effective still to this day. Yeah, I mean, the story is kind of it's okay, right? But it's the way it's shot. It's the ambience. It's the the color techniques he used, blending, just the, the shots themselves. It's just so weird, man. It's like dreamlike. The whole thing's like a dreamlike sequence. It is. Right? Yeah. And, I mean, like, you know, I have the Severn. I think it's Severn or Synapse. Synapse, maybe, uh, where they did the, the 6,000 steelbooks, which I've pulled out and shown a number of times, has the <laughs> Goblin soundtrack, which is, Oh, so good. And that's right. the thing, man. A great horror movie has to have a great soundtrack. And yeah. this is where, I mean, Matt's that's showing it right now. Man. I mean, that's, it's one of the best, you one know, soundtracks. Best, one of the best soundtracks ever. One of the best soundtrack bands ever. Right? Yeah. yeah. Who did that one, Matt? Uh, this is, um, Jesus Christ, I wish I had my glasses on at the moment here. That's uh, old fuck that. you. <laughs> Cinebox. Okay. I feel like you should have a monocle. Yeah, you should have yeah, a monocle. Should. Yeah. A monocle would have set it off completely. Like, oh, hold let me get my spectacle. <laughs> and then a Mr. Planner's hat, I think, would have completed it. But all right, all right. So we're all caught up. Um, so I guess oh, we Tom jumped out. Oh, there he is. Okay, Tom. I'm gonna start with you and we'll get into what are we at? Pick four, right? Are we at three or four for us? Uh, you're on mute. Are we on three or four? Does anybody know? Uh, three. Three. All right. Three. Yeah. Well, now three. we're calling up to those guys. All right. Sorry. And my Japanese, uh, it's very a uh, soundtrack from like 2000 is when I bought this. Just wanted to show that real quick. Um, Oh, holy shit. This is, this is my original. Oh, my one, holy oh, fuck. My one sheet for Trick or Treat. Look at that. Nice. That's Thank a great you. movie. It's not in my top 20, but that is a killer movie. I love it. Uh, just for, for a Halloween movie. Yep. yep. Um, so it's basically a, have, like a headbanger version of Faust. So like this uh, nerdy kid. And I have the soundtrack. Um, this uh, nerdy headbanger kid, loser. He gets picked on by bullies, so he makes a pact with 
instead of the devil, it's his favorite rock star who died in a hotel fire. Um, and there's just a lot to do with great white. Is that what you're saying? (laughs) Uh, (laughs) too soon, too soon, right? Sorry. All right, God. Yeah. Those grill parts aren't fresh anymore. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I guess Um, they're not. You're right. Yeah. And then, uh, there's just a lot of, it. it's not really a horror movie, but there's just a lot of hilarious scenes. Uh, I love the, like the scene where he's, cause it's basically, he gets power to, to be cooler in high school and, and take on, uh, the bullies. So there's a scene where he's like outsmarting the bullies and getting them to like crash into stuff while they're chasing him and stuff and slide down the stairwell and all that. And then there's a, uh, the, uh, the, the hall, there's a Halloween concert scene at this high school. Sammy Kerr is the, the dead rock star. And he's, so you have all like the headbangers in front rocking a, you know, a headbang next to the stage. And he's, he's shooting lasers and vaporizing the kids. Yeah. And like, but they don't, ca- they don't give a shit at all. Like they, there's like, a couple of kids in front that get vaporized into dust. And then like these kids right behind them just mo- are, are just like, this is awesome. We, we can get right up to the stage now. They, they don't <laughs> care, care at all that their friends are dying. They're just like, we just get to, this is so metal. This is awesome. So, and lots of other awesome scenes. Um, it's, it's, a must, a, it's a must see if you're a metal fan. Rock's chosen warriors. Yeah, Rock's Chosen Warriors will rule the apocalypse. He writes that in his diary. (laughs) And this is... I just had this crappy DVD. (laughs) But it's supposed to be coming out on Blu-ray. All right. Very, very ridiculous. That's a great... I I do like when he pulls Large Marge through the TV. (laughs) Glenn Diesel, what's up, buddy? Good to see you. Michael Skidmore, um, you've been in some of the past... uh, yeah, Catacombs episode. So good to see you here. Logan, man, I, great to see you. We had a sighting of Brian Arkham for like a second. I think he was here for like a second. And then uh, he, he blipped out. And uh, Tyler, we're going to be getting you on here soon. Just hang on. M85, I wanted to ask you, man. I asked you in the chat. Um, I've kind of been out of the Blu-ray box set game for... A while because of money and health problems. Um, curious what you're talking about with the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street box set because that's something I might want to look into. I think you brought up Screen Factory, or I think it was Screen Factory. So tell Pretty me what sure. you're talking about in the chat there. And um, let's see. All right, everybody else. Nate or Noah? I'm sorry. It's I've been calling you Nate, but it's Noah. No, Noah, hang in there, man. You're you and um, you and Tyler are up next somewhere down the road, so just hang on. All right, um, let's see. Where are we at? Where was that? I'm on Cat No G Press. Oh, shit. All right. Yo. Here's, a, here's another fucking great ghost story. I didn't even know that was Dennis. I'd been wondering who that was. <laughs> and we're going uh, death shit. Oh, nice. wow. All right. So this movie, 1980. Um Fuck, who's the main guy in this movie? Uh, oh, fuck. George, I'm... George Kennedy. Yep. George Kennedy. Um, these guys are on a cruise ship, and uh, and they have to aboard this other ship that they find. And guess what? It's a death ship by no. ghost Nazis. And Too much seafood. Not... Yep. We know what that is. Yeah, man. Um, this movie is really super creepy. Um, they get on board, and then everybody starts seeing like these uh, German officers and stuff like that, and atrocities, people on beat hooks. Uh, I saw this on fucking TV way back in the 80s, and it scared the shit on me, especially the shower scene where she's taking a shower and just blood starts coming out of the shower. I've not seen that one yet. I got I've seen it. It's it's on all the streaming services, like one of the movie's top horror picks, but I've just never seen it. Yeah, man. Um, really super creepy, very atmospheric, and uh, just a great, great fucking movie for um, Halloween. If you want to see, 
All, all my picks are, I, I think, are kind of scary, if you want to say that, because um, that's what I, I like to watch during Halloween is atmospheric movies. And this one is definitely up there. If you haven't seen this movie, definitely check it out. This was, this movie's kind of hard to get, I think, um, as far as like a physical copy of it. I always wanted this VHS for a long time because that's all. This is one of those movies that was only available on VHS. Yeah, right, I don't know right. if it's on DVD at this point, but uh, well, I, I think it is now. I think it is. There's yeah, Blu-ray yeah. copies. Yeah, Blu-ray. Yeah. So um, Wait, Richard Crenna is in there too. I, I love uh, Richard Crenna, man. I think Ghost Ship kind of like took inspiration from this movie. Yeah. Um, if you guys have yeah. seen that. Yeah. You know what? That's the one I'm thinking of, Dennis. I didn't realize there was two different ones. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Ghost Ship was like 2000s. Yeah. yeah and this one, this one's a super creepy. Like it's a slow burn, but uh, I love this movie. It always creeped me out as a kid. Still creeps. It's still a great, great movie. I mean, as Kennedy's in, like just before dawn and stuff like that. He's always a. He's really good in horror movies. Dude, George, movie, George Kennedy is a fucking bomb, man. Yeah, man. And uh, this one for sure. If you haven't seen this one, if you want to see a, a really good yep. kind of ghost story in line, kind of in line with what I've been talking about, this one kind of follows in that in those footsteps. So definitely check this one out if you haven't. It's Great pick, a man. Ghost story in the sea with Nazis. Can't go wrong with that. A ghost ship invaded by Nazis. What could possibly go wrong, right? You're haunted what? by. Haunted by. Right? They never left. They nope. never left. All right, Rick is. We don't know where Rick's probably in the potty, so we'll go to uh, Nick. All right. Well, <clears throat> well, this is a four-piece collection, and three of these movies I absolutely love by John Carpenter. The main one I want to talk about is the thing. Uh, Easily my favorite horror movie <clears throat> of all time. Um, plays on just about every single fear there there is. Isolation. Uh, you don't know who the killer is. You are essentially stuck with a creature that looks just like you. And then the second it doesn't, you are dead. Uh, some of the most gross, disgusting special effects ever. And just a great pace to it. It is creepier than hell it is well acted it's one of the few that john carpenter didn't like do the score too it was right. yeah, someone yeah. else more but Marcone. uh morricone yeah. yeah and uh it, it's just awesome it's well acted too like the cast is absolutely great i mean especially you know kurt russell keith <laughs> david um seeing uh wilford brimley sans mustache that's oh, that's true rare. Yeah, yeah. but uh yeah this is Always been like my favorite horror movie. I rented it on a whim because I saw the original 1950s version. And then I saw, like, oh, this one came out in the 80s. It did a remake. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the remake is leagues better than the original. Yeah. The original's uh, good, John but it's not. The, the original's material. good. It's just not as creepy. It's not as well, like. It's a 50s horror movie. Yeah, it's a 50s horror yeah. movie. And it's not even a. It's almost a sci-fi slash horror movie. Yeah. It's like a vegetable. Yeah. Well, man. they 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 didn't like the source material was a book. I forget the author. It was called Who Goes There. Very Lovecraftian. Yeah, from, from the thirties. Yeah, thirties or twenties, maybe. It was uh, Lovecraft, <laughs> I believe. But uh, that's that's where John yeah. Carpenter just kind of stuck with it, and you know, employed a little bit of like you know, at the Mountains of Madness. But yeah, everything about this movie is amazing and. Big shout out to Prince of Darkness and They Live too. Ah, now it's your your pulling a Rick. Your fucking pulling a Rick. <laughs> what you did what ever did you mean? I was no, Dennis. Sure. <laughs> you can go back on the next round on those. So um all right, we book. got uh yeah, there there we go. That's um Matt. There it is, yeah. There. John W. Campbell. Yep. Oh, it wasn't um it wasn't Lovecraft. Um, he took some inspiration from At the Mountains of Madness, but it was John W. Campbell's story that okay, well, yeah. nice, nice, okay. Oh, that's okay. fucking awesome! Yeah, wax oh, work, yeah, it's got a kind of reflective thing, killer. I, I never thought I'd be scared to give anyone CPR up until I saw that movie. 
Yeah. I love that scene, man. That is such a killer yeah, scene dude. from the 1950 movie, man. It's like unbelievable, like how real it looks, right? Dude, when when yeah. when the, the head detaches and starts crawling around, oh. Oh, that's yeah. yeah, yeah. When you have an right. argument between CGI and practical, you you just show them that movie. You just Yeah, dude. That's, that's, oh, dude. That's why the, the, the prequel was supposed to be more practical effects, but then you know, the studio got involved. I was like, now let's just CGI it and make it look stupid. I mean, I don't mind that prequel, but I I just feel like it could have been something so much better. Yeah. All right, Rick, what do you got? Uh, well, now that Nick went, I thought I'd pull something that uh, would involve some interesting type of humor. So existential fear. Uh, so when are you most vulnerable? When you're sleeping? When you're taking orgasm? Shit. Yeah, and, and taking a shit. So there you go. There we go. Oh <laughs> my god. Please. This is the first Charles Band thing. Are you talking about tonight? Um that I'm aware of. So yeah, so I got the I got the double pack. There's a reason yeah. why I both have toilets on them. <laughs> There's bullies three. Bullies go to college. <laughs> this could be that a bit of that night of the demons vibe, you know, because it's oh, kind yeah. of that whole satanic thing going on and stuff. Yeah. Uh so they're scared to shadow me too, man. But no one forgets the toilet, man. That something nope. about that just it's such a brief scene, too. Like it's just there it is. And then oh okay. it sticks with you. I'm like, let me pull something and involve a little toilet humor, because I know this is right for that opportunity. <laughs> oh, plus you got Blackie Lawless, you know, uh, yeah. you know, on the soundtrack, right? At least at least for the second one. Oh yeah. Second one. one. Scream until you yeah. like it. So definitely. You gotta love the purple light on the toilet too. Yeah. The 80s was a fun time for the green, just funny creatures, man. Like this and like gremlins, you know, you just got fucking silly, you know, and these didn't take themselves too seriously. It got So it's still kind of scary, but at the same time, these little bastards, you know what I mean? You, you had to really watch out. <laughs> I have to admit, I've never seen Chud. Is that sad? Oh, Chud is all The Chud first is Chud. Oh, I well, know. The hey, Chud's kind of fun. I've known about it for forever. What year was that? 84, 86? God, what year was that? I think it's eighty four. The I first one. Eighty four. I think it was a scene when I was a fucking senior in high school. Just seems like it rings a bell, but I never saw it. Crazily. All right, Matt, what do you got? Uh, my next choice. I forgot what number I'm on. It is Deep Red. Five. Argento. Ah, my favorite Argento movie. I love this yeah. thing. It, it's the bridge between the giallo stuff before and the straight horror after. This amazingly hot psychic chick dies right away. And then the usual giallo plot where there's a guy and a girl, they play detective, they try to solve the murder. Right. Basic plot. Great movie. Great kill scene, by the way, right there. Do you like that movie. better than uh, Suspiria? Kind of do actually, yeah. but Suspiria is very close, and I love Tenebrae and and uh, Inferno. That whole run of movies, yeah, for, yeah, for Dento is amazing. Yeah. What's the um? What's the opera opera one? Um, the opera's opera. after, along with Phenomena and all that. So yeah, stuff. yeah, a lot of lot of good ones in there to choose from. But yeah. Profundo Rosso and and um, uh, Suspiria and. Bird with the crystal plumage. Ah, yeah. That's the Chud was 84. 84, I told you. I'm drunk, but I know my years. Oh. Yeah, look at that. Nice. Uh, now, who's that one? Is that? Waxwork. Waxworks, okay. Yeah, that is killer, man. I remember when that came out, I just didn't have the money to do it. and I, I had yeah. to chase it down after it went out of print, so uh, yeah. I paid a little bit for it. Don't you hate when that shit happens because it's like, Usually yeah. saltier, quite a bit saltier. Mm. Yeah. All right. Yep. Good one, Matt. Good one. Um, Todd, what you got for number four? I think we're on four, right? Doesn't really matter. We're just doing whatever. Cemetery Man. Good movie. Oh. Yep. So, that one I do not know. Zombie again. movie, but not, but not like a normal zombie movie. Swabby. Uh, the dead come back a few days after being buried. Oh, good one. So, uh, I understand there's like some uh, con not controversy, but uh, theories like on this on the internet. 
strange theories about this movie and its story, but it's based off of a book. Uh, I forget what the name of the book was. But this is an Italian movie. Uh, Della Mor- Morte Della Mor- is Italian. Release now. That's right. Good to remember. This has been one of my favorites. I watched. What year is that uh, one? Paul watched. It. What, what year? Uh, ninety-four. Okay, that that one, I missed that one too, man. That's yeah. I think it's a uh, Dylan Dylan Dog is the like comic it's based on. Oh shit! I remember when they did a movie for that too. Yeah, I caught that on cable one night in the '90s, and I didn't know what it was, and I thought it was just like, and then it caught me by surprise. But it was pretty good. I think it was the Joe of... Bob Briggs drive-in theater thing. The, oh where yeah, I saw yeah, it. Joe Bob Briggs. All right, I am gonna go uh, with the namesake of my shirt that I'm wearing, and uh, we're gonna go with. Um, you know, you could obviously go with a number of films. Um, the uh, fuck, what's the name of it, man? What's the one where he plays the fucking uh, the great Houdini? Not Houdini. What the hell is it called? You guys, remember that one? The one where he's like the the uh, there's a there's a, a space ray, and he's yeah, like, I know what uh, you're talking about. God damn, what's the name of that? One of the later movie? ones. Yeah, it's later. But anyway, uh, I could obviously go with Dracula, which is one of my... I love, 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 love the 31 Dracula. I just love it. I think Bella Lugosi is Dracula to me. Yes, Christopher Lee is amazing. There's other guys that have done great with it. Langella, um, uh, Gary Oldman, you know. But, but to me, Bella's the guy, right? But probably my favorite movie of his is this one. White oh, zombie. White zombie. There it is. Yeah, dude. And I've got the original, the original version that is not kind of messed with with the um, fuck. I forget what they call this when they they wash it, they clean it up, and it's just everything looks kind of washy, like it's been blurred out. There's a name for it. I forget what it's called. When they use uh, kind of a a scrubbing technique to get rid of all the grain and all that stuff. But this this movie is. You know, it, it talks about black magic. It talks about voodoo. And I, I love, I love Bella Lugosi's character in this. He's just so yeah. dark and kind of fucked up and evil. And, you know, he's just, you know, very, but yet at the same point in time, he's still very like suave and debonair in a lot of ways, right? You know, Jeff, and, isn't that um, considered the first zombie movie ever? Or am I wrong? Is I it? I, I would it think was. it probably is. Yeah, I thought yeah, it was. yeah. But I mean, the interesting thing about this movie is that when you, when you see it, like you still see the nineteen. This was what thirty six. Um, can't remember. Hold you up. should know this. Uh, it's nineteen thirty two. I said thirty six, thirty two. Yeah, and sure. the thing about this is, in nineteen thirty two, there is still you can really. You can really see the racism still in the movies at that point. Huh. I mean, it yeah. was clear at that point in time, uh, you know, that, you know, like the black folk in the movie are still treated very much like second class citizens. And that they all have the like, they get spooked real easy. They're like, oh, you know, that kind of shit like that. And it's, but still, this is one of my favorite movies. It's just, you know, he's so creepy in it. And I, I love this thing, man. So great, 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 great stuff. Also, the black cat. Great. Movie. All right. Yeah, you had to fuck that up. Who said that? <laughs> Who said that? Oh, nice going, Matt. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> actually, I don't own that because the only way you can own that is on DVD or the. Um, it's either Screen Factory or Shout Factory did a foursome pack, and okay. I've been trying to find that, and it's you know it went out of print a while ago stupid expensive and i'm like i'm not paying a hundred dollars for four movies the black cat let's talk about that real quick does everybody know this out this uh uh, album this movie i've got it yeah okay man bella and and boris karloff kind of switch roles right a little bit yeah boris is kind of like the real evil fucker right yep 
And and Bella's kind of like the good guy, but not really, right? And man, that scene where he's whipping him in the, the fucking satanic upside down crosses, yeah. man, that is like for 1930s. You never saw that in the 30s. You yeah. never saw that. It was like so on the borderline of being like almost fucking sacrilegious, right? I mean, yep. you know, uh, what was when was the year they imposed the uh, the, the Hayes Code? Scene? What was it? The Hayes Code? Yeah, thirty. I can't remember. Th- thirty or thirty-eight. Thirty-four yeah. in the like middle. It was when they started yeah. in course. Thirty-four, yeah, right? Like the summer I, of thirty-four. And I think Black Cat was right after that, and they kind of got away with it. Maybe. And cool. man, dude, that fucking flick, Black Cat. I don't own it. That's why I didn't pull it. Yep. That is probably my number one or number two horror of all time, and it's yeah. just. How about it, Matt? It's creepy. The ambience in it is creepy as fuck, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, thanks for blowing that for me, Matt. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> all right, Johnny, what you got, man? Okie dokie. Well, uh, Nick obviously showed um, Hellraiser 2, I think, wasn't it? Yep. So, um, I must admit, uh, I thought I'd go uh, Clyde Park as well. Um, I love the first Hellraiser, but I'm not going to talk about that. Um, I'm going to go with, I thought I'll show something called a book. Ah, oh, this is my what? 90s. What is it? those reading things? What is yeah, that? Thing? Yeah. Look at those. I bought boring. it back in the 90s. I, I'm not sure what the fuck you do with it. I, I tried shoving it in my VHS player. It doesn't fit. People it's still like, read? <laughs> Maybe it's like a Betamax well, player thing. You have to have one of those. I know. It's scary. It? So I'm going with uh, Nightbleed. Oh, oh fuck yes. Good one. So good. Good one. Something that people don't seem to talk about when they talk yeah, about it. Uh, right up there. I'll meet Um. That I, I've only picked this up recently. I've, I've been after it for a while. I, I my old, uh, I chucked my all my VHSs out, so I ha- didn't have it. Uh, I don't know if it came out on DVD. This is a, a new Blu-ray version. I've, I've only had it a few weeks, oh. but it was so cool to watch it again. Um, I just like the monsters in it. It's it's almost like it's 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 only a fifteen, so it, it's obviously it's um, you know such. But I just like the the. <laughs> It's it's like a different world with the monsters, and the monsters aren't the evil. It's the humans that are the evil, right. which I quite like about it. Which is, I suppose, I suppose that you know, it's the way it was written. But yeah, Nightbleed. I I just love this movie. It's really cool. I was so chuffed to pick it up again. And uh, if you've not seen it for a while, or if you've never seen it, it's definitely worth watching. It, it's yeah. of a time, um, and it's it's not the scariest thing ever. It's a bit cheesy in places, which I think probably why everybody gravitates towards Hellraiser, but it's Nightly. It is such a great A lot movie. of fun. That should yeah. have been a series. Like, there should have been more Nightly. Oh, yeah. Movie. Big time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so the book he showed, that was Cabal. That was the uh, hmm. written version. Yeah, the original. Yeah, yeah and it's got Weevil as well, so, yeah, Cabal was obviously the... I think it's called Cabal the Nightbleed, if I remember rightly. Yeah. So, um... Weave there World is great. That's a great book. Weave World's brilliant. Yeah, it's um, yeah. it's based based the the actual it's because it's obviously uh, UK. It's based in a uh, uh, Liverpool, which is very oh. close to me. Oh really? So um, you know that, which is cool. I, I recognise some of the places it's talking about, but I, I love Weave World. I oh, have cool. the um, paperback version as well, which is excellent. So yeah, there you go. That's that's the right. having um, show, um, it. having to read that many pages is already pretty horrifying. You know? Yeah, that's, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that's a terrifying yeah. thing, right? I read the yeah. cover part. That's uh, I already yeah, had a, yeah, about the extent of the reading we'll do this year. <laughs> yeah, that, that's all I'm going to show. Don't worry, right. you guys. Eli, what you got up next, buddy? Jeff, I didn't want to interrupt you, but um, have you ever seen the movie Ed Wood? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Great, say, great. Pull the string. It's so With great. Martin, uh, Land- Martin Landau. Uh, Martin Landau. Yeah, yeah. Knocks it Love out. Love Martin Landau, man. Yeah, dude, he just he, died not too long ago, too. I, I know. A few years ago. He was and great. actually, somebody uh, brought up, I think, I, Tom, it might have been you. You brought up Henry Silva, right? Yeah, he died right. not too long ago. Uh, yeah, he's, a, he's an alligator. He just died uh, maybe 19, I think, somewhere in that range. And he was the longest lived, with the exception of Angie Dickinson, the longest lived uh, guy from uh, Ocean's Eleven. Oh, shit. How about that? Wow. Yeah, I think he was in his late 90s or... Yeah. 
well because he was he was he was old in the 60s <laughs> yeah <laughs> i knew johnny depp would come up in one way or another either ed wood or the original nightmare on elm street like one yeah. way or another <laughs> I mean, yeah, Ed Wood is just. I, I actually did. I only watched that recently. I I love the shit out of that movie. Oh, it's great. It's great. Yeah, yeah. I'm like. I I'm mean, Johnny biggest... Depp's so good, man. You. I mean, how can he's, you not? He is. <sighs> yeah. I think that's like the best thing he's done. Might that's be. Might be. Oh, <laughs> yeah. He's done a lot of good shit though. So. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Great yeah. character actor. All yeah. Right, what do you got? What do you I'm got? going back to something modern again. I think this is. Um. I think this is going to be. Kind of a future, you know, Halloween type classic. I'm going with the Terrifier two. I wasn't yeah. on the Terrifier train instantly. I kind of resisted, to be honest, for the first. I didn't get into the first movie until it was out for a couple years, but I, fi I finally caved in. I think Art the Clown is like it's going to be this generation's Freddy Krueger. Um, yeah, I think that guy just does such a good job. At they just playing. announced a new one uh, for next year. Oh no, no doubt. Yeah, they they those movies have made so much money. There's definitely going to be a third, and probably I've eight. actually not seen them. I mean, they're very mean spirited. Um, not an easy watch if it comes when it comes to like brutal, sadistic, you know, gore and stuff. But uh, ultra violence, ultra violent. Yeah. Even for me, sometimes I'm like, Jesus, come on, Dude, it's <laughs> like trying to watch Paul or something like that. Yeah, like like just super sadistic and mean spirited. But like, I just love this dude's like portrayal of Art the Clown. Like, he's just such a good actor. Like, yeah. I, I think I think the hype uh, I think it lives up to the hype. I'd recommend them, Jeff. Like if you don't mind, you know, just super, just ultra brutality kind of. No, like, I'm all right with that usually. Almost yeah. too much at times. But I just, just I know about them. I've just never seen them. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd say check them out definitely. Um, just just for Art the Clown alone. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think he's I think he's great. So, I gotta give you a shout out for the Godzilla versus King Ghidorah poster in the back. That's fucking yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's yeah, like. Um, Possibly my favorite Godzilla from '91. Yeah, yeah. Was that idea. over the right shoulder there? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. I love Godzilla. Oh yeah, I'm I'm stupid level a fanboy here. I have yeah. so much Godzilla shit. It's yeah. <laughs> Eli, do you have that uh, Criterion collection? No, I don't have any of the box sets or anything. Okay. I just have random, just random scattered movies. The book, I should get the that. book set with all the all the um he, uh, all the show uh, stuff. The show is stuff, right? Thank you. Yeah, my, yeah, my buddy definitely. has it. It's amazing. I got to flip through it, and then I tried not to steal it because he's my yeah, friend. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta wait till they do that. Uh, Barnes and Noble does the fifty percent off thing for that, or something, does, like, or does, time one. Doesn't okay. Matt? Doesn't Matt have that soundtrack box set? Mm -hmm. I'm sure he does. It's up on, on the high videos? shelf. Okay. <laughs> go grab it. Actually, it's a good time. <laughs> yeah, Matt has a lot of good stuff. We'll, we'll come back to you in a minute, then, Matt. Uh, Jimmy, it. what you got? Yeah, man. Uh, so my next pick. Uh, this is probably my favorite. I didn't really rank my stuff that I brought tonight, but um, nah, we most of us aren't. And it's quite the uh, diversion, I think. So I'm curious to see how this uh, lands. But um, and I've actually got three iterations of the story. I'm going to try and blow through like really quickly. Uh, and this is very specific to Halloween. And uh, my favorite story, not only for Halloween, but probably one of my favorite stories of all times, is the legend of Sleepy Hollow. And so uh, you know, for me, like Halloween is a lot of nostalgia. It's a lot about being a kid and, you know, like growing up in New Orleans and being in like extremely hot weather. And once like October would hit, it would start to finally cool down a bit and uh, all the, you know, Halloween stuff would come on TV. And so uh, the first iteration of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow I ever saw was the Jeff Goldblum version. Uh, this oh, came yeah. on like, you know, like, uh, Disney, maybe, uh, you know, some of the cable news, cha uh, cable channels, uh, and it's a completely cheesy and awful, but fun. And if you saw it, I don't know if you guys ever saw it. Uh, yep. if you want to see it, if you like the legend of sleepy hollow, it's worth seeing. Uh, you can actually see the whole thing on YouTube. Uh, but, uh, just Jeff Goldblum as Ichabod Crane is pretty perfect. And I've never this, seen that one. Yeah, it quite good. deviates from the original story. You know, for me, uh, I'm a you know extreme advocate for the original story, and this one uh, is the one I like the most. That that kind of changes from it, but it's it's completely you know kind of like they try to make it sort of a comedy, and it is funny. 
uh, great characters. Uh, you know, totally just fucking lo-fi. I don't think this was ever transferred to you know uh, a higher format like DVD or you know Blu-ray, whatever it was. Um, but uh, a great iteration of the story if you dig the story. And then uh, the next one would be uh, the Glenn Close uh, animation version, which you can also see on uh, YouTube. And this is actually a faithful retelling of the story. And if we talk about Sleepy Hollow, you know, obviously there's the uh, Tim Burton version, which is, you know, good film, uh, quite, quite different from the original. It kind of turned it into sort of a horror movie. This is, you know, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow is more of a supernatural not even yeah. really a, you know uh you know obviously a ghost story but uh you know if you read the original uh, text it's not really uh you know headless horseman probably didn't even really exist but um great great telling and uh you know animation good music captures the atmosphere of the region and uh and then lastly you know you can't uh you know and i'm sure you guys probably as kids saw the uh Disney version. Yep. Which yeah, is there you go. I love that version, man. Every yeah. Halloween when I was a kid. Yeah, my Bing, kids love yep. that. Bing Crosby, fucking amazing on this, and uh, great songs, great uh, narration. They captured everything in terms of uh, you know Disney doing something. But uh, I had the pleasure of uh, going to Sleepy Hollow uh, two Octobers ago uh, with my wife. Uh, we went oh, yeah? to New York. We stayed Halloween night. Uh, we got to go to Washington Irving's. Uh, homestead and hear a retelling there's this guy that does uh just like uh you know costume story type stuff and if you go on halloween to washington irving sunnyside estate you can see him do it and wow. he does a brilliant job of it beautiful but to me i mean uh again the sleepy hollow this is this is the definitive halloween story and uh you know there's so many iterations of it but um you know i mean disney <laughs> Uh, this one just, uh, it just tugs at my like heartstrings as being like a child and like going trick sure. or treating and coming back and watching, uh, you know, the glorious fucking stupid, uh, Bing Crosby classic. But I would say, you know, if you guys like the story, you know, uh, go check out the, the gold bloom version. Yeah. I've not it's, seen that one. I might have to hilarious and stupid and <clears throat> different but very well done uh i don't know maybe you'll go watch it and be like god this is retarded maybe i'm just like i saw it you know as a kid and was like still loves it but yeah uh, totally definitive halloween stuff is the legend of sleepy hollow that that echo part is one of the reasons why we were stealing cable you know that movie was completely worth it i know you say it about crane the first thing i hear is the headless horseman's laugh in the animated disney version like it it <laughs> instantly just captures the mood like oh shit and he i mean he looks like pretty legit badass in there I was yeah, like yeah does. no that, yeah. i'm not gonna fuck with that ghost Isn't there's some a... hilarious laughing in this one i mean uh and if if you haven't seen it yet i mean you know if you've seen it i mean it's just and and the twist at the end of it is perfectly done uh yeah hmm. guarantee and go watch the the gold bloom <laughs> yeah, and, and then must have been like 20 years old he looks yeah. young on the back of that. Isn't yeah. um, Ichabod? Isn't that the one that goes Ichabod and Mister Toad? Is this like like is that Bing Crosby that's singing that? Yeah, that's yeah, that's the Disney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember that from my kids. You know, another one, man, and this one, honestly, is kind of fucking creepy for a kids' movie. The Black Cauldron. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, that movie's that dark, like, man. Yeah. That's dark, dark. That's like the that's like the black metal movie of children's <laughs> huh. <laughs> fucking you know cartoon uh, shows, right? Or well, do you guys movie. remember the the Disney uh, Halloween treat they used to show like in the eighties? Yep. And it showed a bunch of the Black Cauldron, and they they would show like a bunch of the scary stuff from some of the different like Disney movies. And but that Watcher was like, a woods. big part. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Watcher yeah. in the Woods. That was yeah. it. Yeah. That's one of those movies where I'm sure like they stopped showing it because like parents kept calling and complaining, you know, with all the nightmares. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All right, let's move on to Tom. We'll uh, do another round here. And then we'll sort of see where we're at. I got a couple people. Phil wants to pop in and Nate wants to, or I'm sorry, Noah wants to come in. So we'll we'll figure something out. Maybe I'll dip out for a little bit. We'll do it like oh, this. Oh, boy. We're talking. I think I've seen that before. 
Scarecrows. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 1981, uh, Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. Uh, a lot of glare. Okay, here we go. Um, this is a made for TV movie. And it's definitely one of my, I'm big into like made for TV horror movies, the 70s and 80s, even in, into the 90s. This is definitely like a top three, if not my favorite. Um, this is basically there's this maybe a 12 year old girl she's friends with like uh uh this 30 year old guy who's mentally handicapped um and it's like i think it's small town texas or they don't really say and so they all hate this guy and thinks he's thinks he's a child predator and then uh i don't want to give it away exactly but basically he ends up morphing into the scarecrow character and like haunts the town and seeks revenge and um i love the kind of the it really captures sort of the small southern town um it just feels very real but there's like this very like sort of folk local folk tale element um and there's some really creepy scenes but it's really well written um the director the director was mainly a novelist he he wrote uh the novels for the entity and audrey rose which were both made in into movies but um definitely this is my favorite scarecrow movie there's a few couple good ones yeah that's a that's a great one and it's like it's that kind of haunting vibe that carries throughout that. I, I think that kind of, you know, it's kind of got that. What's that movie? The I always think of the movie with Liv Tyler on that. What's that one? Oh, um, where they, the people come into the house and beat the shit out of people, and they have the strangers. Oh, the strangers. Strangers. Yeah, I always okay. think of that movie always for some reason. Well, yeah, this to me, it's to me, this is like because this is technically, this sounds like a scarecrow running around killing people. But yeah. it's, it's done like in a very sort of um, I don't know, like folk tale, um, subtle kind of way. It's it doesn't come across as like a exploitation or no, no, right, at, right, at all. Yeah. Um, so it's a lot better than you think it would be based on the description. That's a good pick. That's a good pick. So I don't know if you guys have seen social media, man, but uh, wow. Matthew Perry dead at 54. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Found him in the hot tub. He was looking rough, man. I have a bad feeling about that, but you yeah. know, who knows? Um, yeah, and that guy's four years younger than me, which is crazy. All right. Um, that yeah, Tom, that's a good one, man. I I haven't watched that in a long, long time. I need to revisit. Really, it. really great movie. Yeah. All right, Dennis, you go ahead. I gotta, I'll be right back. All right, here we go, man. Talk a bit. This movie. Ouch. Not a lot of people talk about this movie, but uh, we're going Hell Night. Oh, good movie. Uh, Linda Blair. Um, kind of a fraternity type of, you got to stay in this haunted house. But so like the fraternity guys set up the house to like scare them. Kind of like House on Haunted Hill type of thing. Um, but the house is actually inhabited by some um we'll say mongoloids uh so <laughs> <laughs> it's, a it's, a, it's a super really great it's really gothic looking like because there's no there's no um electricity so there's a fucking billion candles all over the fucking the mansion where they gotta stay and they're locked in there for the night they have to stay there to join the fraternity um linda blair's acting is pretty bad but <laughs> she's always bad <laughs> i mean she's wearing a low-cut shirt so yeah it's, it's that's okay. so so you can handle it <laughs> oh. oh yeah um but uh yeah this movie's pretty creepy especially like because there's a lot of like underground tunnels and stuff under the house and the guys from the fraternity come and try to scare them so they have all these like electronics and stuff set up and then they start getting killed um but man this movie's pretty great i love the like atmosphere of this movie um 
And then nobody knows what's going on. They're just like, oh, shit, what what just happened? Like, nobody knows until the end of this movie where they're trying to get out. Um, and even then, you can't climb the gates. You can see the gates there. They got, like, these huge spikes on the top of the, the gates, so you can't climb over them. One of the kids... One of the kids actually escapes and and comes back to save them. But <clears throat> man, this movie, um, the way it's so dark, and a lot of these early '80s movies, like Humongous and stuff like that, you can't really see what's going on, um, especially on VHS, which I think kind of adds to the atmosphere of this movie. Um, so, and the way there's no like. It's those. It's one of those movies where, like, you're all of a sudden like, "Oh shit, what just happened?" And someone gets pulled under something, and you see a face, but you never see the killers until the end. Um, kind of like a Jason Voorhees type of look that they have because they're, you know, they've been inbred over all these years. So it's one of those tales where the fraternity tells this thing, but it's actually true. Um. And, but th- to me, at the end of this movie, I was like, so these guys are just living there and no one knows about them. <laughs> it's like, well, you're just still living in this house, but no one knows about it. Um, it's, and it's kind of a, a twist ending because there's two killers when you only think there's one. Well, they're alert. But uh, <laughs> uh, if you haven't seen this movie, definitely check it out if you like 80s horror and, uh, like that, there's not a lot of gore, but it's it's kind of like in the vein of Halloween meets. Um, I'm trying to think of another movie that kind of it's almost like in a mix of Halloween, Just Before Dawn, and The Haunting, or something like that. Oh wow! Yeah, so if you guys like those kind of movies, it's only four people that are in this house besides the people that are trying to prank them. Um. But uh, nobody really talks about this movie too much. I think Linda Blair kind of she kind of tried to resurrect her career. I think after Roller Roller Boogie was her last movie she did, the roller skating movie. Before this one, um, God, vaguely. Oh uh, yeah, what was that? It's yeah, like was that 70, called? What Roller Boogie? Is that what call it? Roller Boogie? Yeah. Oh God, that. There was a long apology period after The Exorcist Part 2. Yeah, and I think she was probably dating Rick James at the time. Not sure. (laughs) Really? (laughs) Yeah, if you haven't seen this one, it's really, it's a good Halloween movie just to put on. Um, Well acted, besides Linda Blair. Um, Maybe Super Freak was written about Linda Blair. Probably, (laughs) dude. But uh, it's it's a good movie, man. I'd highly recommend this one if you like gothic horror. Um, with that slight 80s slasher edge to it, where you get those like mongoloid k- killers. Um, but yeah, man, check this out if you haven't. Hell Knight. Nice. Not seen that one. All right, Rick, what you got, man? All right. Uh, so this flick, it's a bit of a, a commentary on consumerism culture and the underbellies of it. Uh, so a bit of a story is, back at school well first day kid again right so huh. you know you you went after the kids through cocktail who didn't want it uh i also had the yogurt of the kid who didn't want it there was this one particular kid it was frustrated because his mom kept packing it in there and i was like dude i'll, I'll take your yogurt man you know what i mean it's all good and uh once you see this movie everything changes so you guys already guessed it larry cohen oh, and yeah. stuff yeah. Oh, yeah. i've never seen that it's dude, you're missing out. It is. Yeah. It's, it's like invasion of the body snatchers, you know, but with fucking well, alien course. yogurt. Yeah, yeah. Alien yogurt. Yeah, he he. Larry Cohen did a movie I think called the the Invaders or something like that uh, back in the '60s, which is I they feel like he was kind of building up on that idea over the years and eventually came up with this. Uh, it, it's, I mean, uh, Paul Sorvino was in it. He passed away last year. Oh yeah, uh, right. Uh, Garrett Morris. The creepiest scene was probably the Garrett Morris one because yep. everybody look, they look normal, right? Until that fucking scene, man. He just comes in there and then all of a sudden the transformation, you're like, oh man, nobody is safe. Nobody is safe. And this thing... Is that the scene, 
is that scene where he's going, baseball have been a very, very good to me? Nope. <laughs> but <laughs> good reference. Yeah, they're like in the radio station and you know, I so I haven't seen it yet. I was I, this is one of those movies that I was too young for it, man. And my my, my calcium <laughs> levels have were very low after this. They're not young. Oh yeah. <laughs> <That's sick. laughs> But uh, yeah, this is a reissue restored. Um, yeah, uh, high depth. Power so indicator or uh, arrow. Yeah, yeah. So I almost, yeah, yeah, I I almost had that when it came out, but I I didn't. I gotta go check that one out. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. You're, you're missing out. It's I think good, I man. saw yeah. that film on Showtime or Cinemax, like really you know, it was like late night. The uh, commercials in it are brilliant. Really <laughs> Let's just give praise to Garrett Morris because he's oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very very been a better, that he's still around, like, man. That guy's like eighty six, and we all thought he was going to be the first guy to go, right? Yeah. Yep. He's outlasted uh, practically most of the dudes, right? That's crazy. All right, uh, what you got, Nick? All right, um, debatable as to whether or not this is horror. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. But Jaws. Oh yeah. Jaws. Yeah, the birth of the blockbuster. Right I've been here. in the ocean very for a very long time after. I that. still don't. After this that. movie <laughs> fucked me up for life. Uh, Has it really? Still, oh yeah, dude. I don't get in the ocean. Fuck that. that that's like voluntarily lowering yourself in the food chain. <laughs> don't don't do it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is one of my favorite movies. Period. Like I just think it's well acted, well shot. Everything about it oh, yeah. is just great. But <clears throat> it gave me, unlike you know all the other. You know, movies that I'll probably have on my list here, where it's just like, oh you yeah, know, the suspension of disbelief, that'll that'll keep me together. But I can't with this, no, nope. because it's, it's real. It's it's Could sure. happen. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, it was based on what the was the the Montauk monster or whatever. It was it was a bull shark that was in what the Hudson River. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, they decided a great white was far more marketable, and uh, yeah, this movie terrifies me like it, it still terrifies me even though yeah like the shark looks fake as fuck now who cares it's still Dude, amazing the scene, the scene where uh i think it's uh richard dreyfus is uh down diving and he comes up on that hole on the hull of that ship and the face comes out yep. and the eyes floating you're like okay i'm good fun story uh my mom saw that in theaters and her date uh which i i believe was my dad possibly <laughs> Um, I don't know if she was seeing someone else at that point. Well, this came out in what seventy six? Six. Yeah. yeah. Right, I think it was Seven. it was my dad. Yeah. He uh he took her to go see Jaws and when that head rolled out, she about like jumped out of the theater. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like that, that was bigger boat. for such a, a big like movie in terms of like again the summer blockbuster thing, like this was legit terrifying and I imagine it didn't do well in terms of like beach tourism. It's like, why is no one going? Yeah, to the right. Because they're going to get fucking eaten. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is a fantastic movie. Again, I, I've heard people say, like, oh, no, it's not a horror movie. It's, it's more of an action movie. Uh, right? I disagree. But you think about how many clones this spawned. Like, the, the Jaws clones out there are ridiculous. Even going as far as, like, we, we had Alligator on here. I mean, that's that's technically yeah. a Jaws clone. Uh, Grizzly. Yeah. Um, like Placid. Orca. Right. Yeah, oh, Orca. Orca is actually a decent movie, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, it's a Jaws ripoff. Yeah. But, Gri- uh, Gri- Gri- Grizzly is very great. Yeah, Jaws. Jaws Sharknado, still- as MJ says, Sharknado. Oh, oh, I haven't God. seen that, but um, I saw the first one and then I, I gave up on watching any other ones. Like, it'll only get dumber from here, and it's, it's too self aware. Is it like right there with Cocaine Bear? Or I still haven't seen that. I haven't and- either. I kind of want to see it. It's kind of funny. All right, what you got, Matt? I think this is my number seven. We're doing The Shining. Of course. Based Classic. on the Stephen King novel of the same name. Uh, the book is kind of different from the movie. I don't know if you've yep. ever read this. Yep. Uh, yeah. Wendy's kind of pretty and blonde. Very different than <laughs> yeah. Shelley Ball. Yeah, right. Uh, the kid's dark-haired. Uh, there's also a bunch of nonsense with hedge animals coming to life, and Jack's alcoholic past is goes into more detail in this. Are you trying but, to say Shelly Duvall is not hot? Uh, she is in her own way. Uh, sure. She is. That's After diplomatic. a couple beers, what do you? Uh, anyways, right. Her her outfit in Nashville. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fairy tale theater. 
Yeah, Tall Tales. All right, go ahead, Matt. Sorry. So 1980, again, Stanley Kubrick. It's probably one of my favorite movies from the guy. I know, again, oh, yeah. Stephen King hated the movie. Uh, I wasn't fond of the TV movie as much. I know it went more into the book, but I don't know. I don't miss the hedge animals, I guess, is the thing. Um, funny thing, uh, and this was totally unplanned by me, at least. On my 40th birthday, uh, my friend Jack took me to the Timberline Lodge, which is where the exteriors were shot. And really? Then my, and then on my 50th birthday, my mom took me to the Stanley Hotel in Estes Park. Nice. <laughs> and that's where some of the interiors were for the, like, the TV movie, maybe this one as well. But it's also the place where Stephen King stayed and thought up his idea for this. So I had a shining 40th and a shining 50th. And I didn't plan either. Very weird. That's awesome, man. Um, what's the? Uh, I was trying to find the line because I I'm very uh, I'm a little I'm a little inebriated and I can't think of it off the top of my head. But what's the line where he goes in? And he's like, "Line him up, Lloyd," or something like that. What's that? That line? Uh, oh, name? Lord, I can't remember. Fuck. He's, he's yeah. talking to Lloyd and the hair of the dog that bit me. Hair of the dog that bit yeah, you. That's yeah. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. and. <laughs> Let's be honest, man. That that fucking maze snow scene at the end of the movie. Come yeah. on, man. yeah. It's just so goddamn good. The man. book's so different. Uh, Halloran survives in the book. Yep. Because the whole scene with him and Wendy and uh, the kid at I think in Florida or somewhere. I can't remember. But yeah. Here's Johnny. Yeah, kill the movie. One of my picks too, but yeah. We'll, we'll I mean, it's out. one of mine. Yeah. One of my more modern picks, I would say. I think right, Kubrick, man, it's like this movie and probably Clockwork Orange. Those are probably my yeah. from him. Yeah. yeah. Although I have to say, what was the movie he did with Tom Cruise? What was that called? Eyes Wide Shut. Yeah. Man, I thought that movie was pretty fucked up. And <laughs> there's that scene where they're all doing the, like, the nude fucking sacrificial uh. thing. And, man, that um, that soundtrack part there, that... Where it's going, oh, hum, 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 hum. like I can't do it all. You know, it's just this weird, chanty sort of evil sounding thing. Some band use that as an intro, like a, a death metal or black metal band. Mm. Man, that is one of the most effective intros ever, man. It's, you just want to be invited want... to that party. What's that? You just wanted to be invited to that oh, party. Of course I did. I mean, come on. <laughs> Nicole Kidman. I mean, get out of here, man. All right. All right. Um, where are we at? We're on Todd. Again, sir, what you got, man? Oh, is he frozen? Okay. Ah, oh, what are you doing? Covering up some titties? <laughs> the prowler? You can probably show oh, no. him quick. Oh, no. I'm covering up Motel Hell because I'm talking about the rain. Hell yeah, dude! Uh, oh, Motel Hell is great. About Ed Gian. Yep. Uh, deranged is uh, Ed Gein's story with Steve, Steve Railsback who plays the Ed Gein character but it's called Ezra Cobb in the movie I guess at the time they couldn't real, use the real name but one of my all time favorite movies what's Probably the one the on the left there uh, uh, while you're, it's your right the blue one yeah I see Motel that, what's the, yeah. yeah what's that one it's so glary, I can't tell. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. I don't think I've seen that one before on the, the one on the right. Uh, I think it was in the step, came out in 70. 1974. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's an all-time thing. All yeah, that Ed, that Ed Gein guy. What a guy, huh? Yeah. I mean, not really a serial killer for the most part. No. Nope. Weird grave robber. grave robber. Yeah, man. I mean, that. can you imagine? What, what year was it that shirt. he was caught? 54? OG uh, shirt. Nice. Dennis has that's an OG good. Ed Gein shirt. <laughs> Oh, deranged. Okay. Yep. I have a, I have a deranged shirt too, now. but it's black. Uh, definitely this not. This is a, but... this is the original '80s uh, mutilation graphic shirt. 
That's sweet. Dennis actually has – he's not showing the back. That's signed by Ed Gein on the back. <laughs> he signed it. <laughs> uh, that's not funny, but it's funny. All right. Anyway. Ben, the guy that I mean, until, the, the the until the 80s. I'm not pulling that out. Yeah, I know. that. Right? When did he die? 84? Yeah. Sounds he right. died uh, sometime, in, sometime in the 80s, like late 80s. Yeah. Metal Hawk. Is anybody else having issues with Todd's audio coming in? No, I can hear him, but he cuts out every once Yeah, you're cutting out a lot, dude. I think it's your Wi-Fi. I don't know. So I apologize if I ask you something more than once because for some reason your your Wi-Fi seems to kind of be kind of sketchy, kind of sketchy a little bit. But, yeah, man, I, I think you're right. I think it was 84. This laptop's 84, really 85. old, too. What's that? My laptop's real old. I'm still running like Windows XP or some shit. Oh, uh, that might be what it is. <laughs> old Windows yeah. system. Windows You're like in 1989. Just, just. <laughs> I already knew Todd is not a. Yeah. You don't do lives very don't often. Do it's not very like... often. Yeah. yeah, that's cool, man. Uh, dude, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not shitting on you. I'm just uh, saying it. Just, it makes a little bit of a struggle. So I, I feel bad for you because you uh, can't engage a lot yeah. because you are kind of cutting in and out. So. Um, all right, for me, let's see. What do I got here? Oh, that's God. why I haven't really. I, I missed that. What's that? All right, anyways. Uh, you, Rick mentioned these. Um, he showed this, obviously. That's the, you know, the slip case, case edition from Kino. Uh, yeah, man, there's just a creepy ambience about this movie, but we didn't mention this one, and that is the '79, I believe it is, yep. Werner Herzog oh, yeah. edition. And I'll tell you, it's a little bit more of a love story, but a dark, kind of twisted, broken love story. And Orlock in here, man, just uh, man, so evil looking and so broken looking, right? So forlorn and sad and twisted and. If you have not seen the 79 version, uh, they call it um, Nosferatu the Vampire. I think there's a subtitle of something, uh, Children of the Night. Is that what it is? Noct, what's it called? Something Noct. Uh, Phantom der Nacht is the German. Der German, Nacht, right? German is the, cause there's Man, two, the two, soundtrack of this is great. Verse. I assume you probably have it, Matt, I'm guessing. Maybe, maybe not. Um, if like you that. don't, you should. It's so good. I love this one. So that that was just to throw them out of the way. Nick already talked about this one. Uh, I would have a hard time arguing with Nick that this might be the best horror movie of all time, monster wise. Um, just fucking epic, man. Yeah, <laughs> just epic, like. It just does not get much better than this. John Carpenter, master of suspense, so good, um, killer. And then I think uh, was it Devin? Devin talked about this one. Yeah, yeah. Frank and Werewolf in London. This is the uh, fairly recent. Uh, I want to say it's Arrow. Is it Arrow or is it shit? I forget who did this. Yeah, Arrow Academy. Man, what a killer version. Again, the box set with the with the kick ass oh, that's uh, cool. poster. You know, I like to show this swag off, guys. Come on. The original theatrical poster. Got to. And the this That's sick. Revised artwork, which is sick. And then the book. Um, okay, but those are not my picks. I just had to throw those in there because huh. You guys already did them, so I'm pulling Rick. But it's my it's my stream. I'll do what I want. Rick, anyway. Rick hasn't pulled a Rick tonight, though. I just got yeah, it. you did. You did in the early part. You did a little bit. Oh, Freddie right. doesn't count. All right. So, oh, and we didn't mention we did mention this. Nick did, but that's the original thing. Howard Hawks, 57, 58, 56. I don't remember. Do you guys remember? I can't read this. Uh, I thought it was 55 or 56. 
55. God damn it. It's too dark in there. I can't read. Anyway. All right. I'm going to go with uh, one that's kind of uh, a little bit off the beaten path. Let me just double check. Oh, we said Shining, so I got the lenticular, whatever. You guys are stealing all my shit. No, it's f- 51. 51. Was it that early? Wow. Okay. How about that? All right. Um. All right, here we go. So, I love this movie, man. Done for $30,000 in 1957? 62. Carnival Carnival of Souls. Yeah. Uh, And actually, this is Waxworks. Waxworks has this up right now, uh, the vinyl. It's beautiful. Looks fucking amazing, and I'm definitely grabbing one. Um. Man, Candace Hillegeist, who I think is she still alive? I believe she I might be. I'm not sure. If not, she's just recently passed, but I think she's still alive. Man, the scene of all of the party goers at the um the salt pavilion out in I believe it's Salt Lake City or that sounds right. Pro- Provo, something like that, Utah. Yeah. Uh, man, it's so haunting. It's so haunting, but not scary, just haunting and weird. And yeah. um, the whole premise of this movie, should I I probably shouldn't say the end of it, right? If you haven't seen it. No. Yeah. All throughout this, you start, when you look back on it after you watch the movie, you go, oh, I should have gotten it. But when you are watching the movie. It's so well-paced, so kind of eerie and evocative and strange and odd that you just don't, you don't catch what's going on. And then you finally, you get the payoff at the end and you're like, Oh, I should have known. So love this. Um, this is uh, uh, an awesome, awesome movie. Carnival of souls. And not only that great title for, an, uh, for a metal band, or I'm sure somebody's stolen that. For Kiss, Kiss had an album called that. <laughs> oh, that's right, they did. Right, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, anybody got any thoughts on this one? Yeah, great. Movie. I don't know if I actually sat down and watched yeah. that one. I, really? I love it. And yeah. it, it was uh, apparently a primary yeah. influence, a primary influence on Night of the Living Dead. Apparently. Yeah. Oh yeah, very sure. similar. <clears throat> yeah. Unique atmosphere. Yeah. Total black metal vibe on that one. On uh, Carnival of Souls. Interesting. Yep. Interesting. Um, Bleak. No solution. Show is over. We'll watch on the way home. Who's no solution? Do we know who that is? That's uh, Scott Wilcox. You know? Yeah. Who is it? Scott Wilcox. Scott. Oh, who's okay. the who's okay. Acid Witch tonight? Um, I, I recognize that name. I just couldn't put a. I'm, I'm a Should I send him a link? See if he feels like hopping out for late enough. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah. Yeah. All right, um, where are we? We are at Gianni Mac. Uh, I was thinking, Jeff, it's like uh, it's nearly quarter to five here, so I'm going to show the rest of my shit and then F off if you don't mind. All right, man. Cool. Right. Um, this one no one's mentioned and probably no one will, but I've always loved this film. came out about 88. Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Uh-huh. I, love oh, yeah. that. I love that movie. Today. Uh, shit, no, this this cover is just horrible. It's the new blue ray and it's it's it's. I prefer it with the the jaggedy lighting, but Killer Clowns from Outer Space, absolute fucking brilliant stuff. I've not I seen that. I've heard about it forever, but I've never seen it. It's great. Oh, it's, it's, it's stuff like the the big meteorite comes down, and they all go to look at it, and it's a fucking big tent. It's a big <laughs> top, and there's just aliens that are clowns, and they shoot cotton candy at people and that, and kill people it's really excellent stuff um has been shown many times but i just love this cover on the dvd the oh, whole thing the best just, just love the cover it's yep. just great i don't know if, don't know if it was just the uk one or or not but i just love that um a couple of new ones which i've only sort of picked up in the last few years uh i like midsummer yeah. i think it's a great modern movie also the witch oh, yeah. another great modern one uh, the New England folk t- Wait, it's not, very it's not, it's not Vitch. I've been saying it wrong the whole time. The, the <laughs> sure. That's how Vitch was uh, spelled back then. Yeah, um, I, I like it's just got a very creepy atmosphere. 
That's amazing. Um, this is the eight movie collection. I'm gonna I would go for the third one because I actually wow. went to see it at, at the movie in 3D Hell at the yeah. movie theater. Had the little 3D glasses and all that. Absolutely that fucking is. brilliant. But the scariest bit was when um I don't know if you remember near the start there there's a washing line and that sort of thing and the woman yeah. has the the, the pole yeah. and it just comes towards it and everybody in the theater fucking ducked it just because <laughs> you weren't expecting it. it wasn't a horror bit it was there was no it just absolutely brilliant great movie so yeah love that um gotta show exorcist um because this is we all took time off school um <clears throat> uh to my then was the first one to have a VHS player in the, the village, so we all piled down to his house to watch The Exorcist. Um, his parents had hired it out from the video shop. Um, we weren't allowed to watch it. We were too young. We were like, I don't know, 13, 14 or whatever. So we all decided to have a day off school and, and watch it in the day. And even in the day with the curtains closed, it scared the shit out of us back yeah, then. Yeah, let's be on. Uh, hang on one sec before you, you move on from that, because uh, I have that pick too. I have that let's, pick. let's be honest here, man. That is one of the scariest, yeah, fucking movies ever, and and mainly because, oh yeah, top if five. If you movies. if you believe in any yeah. slight yeah. tiny bit of a of a beyond or a after or a heaven or a hell or whatever, that movie had to scare the fucking shit out. Of you. It doesn't scare me now like it used to, but it's still creepy as fuck. I mean, fuck me, Jesus. Yeah. Fuck me, Jesus, and uh, Linda Blair on that bed spitting the pea soup out, man. That's Here you go, Johnny. The classic yeah, that, cover. Well, the, that's the spider crawl down the steps. Oh, the just, spider crawl is awesome. so good. Oh, it's this so good. Cool. Right, right, right. Pretty scary. Yeah, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Come yeah. good and knock my block off. All right, Johnny, you got you got a few more yet? But yeah, they've got a couple to show, and then I'll I'll bounce. Uh, we do appreciate you popping up in the middle of the know, AM on uh, on no, the other the side of the Atlantic. Um, Evil Dead Two, the first one was mentioned. Oh, yeah. The second, the oh, second yeah. one was the first one I saw on on VHS down in my friend's house. We missed the first one. I don't know whether it was UK or whatever, but this was the first one that was readily available for us. So Evil Dead Two was the first one I saw. I went back to watch the first one. So this has always got a bit of a a thing in my heart. Um, gotta mention this movie, um, Lost Boys. This this is the first 4K um, Blu-ray I bought. So hmm. um, Lost but Boys. Super Sutherland, so dreamy. So <laughs> always like Lost Boys. It's got a great great soundtrack as well. Yeah, I never so, ordered. I never ordered Lil Main after that. I just gotta say. <laughs> uh, talking of which, uh, the soundtrack. Other jewel nice. there, obviously. Nice. Yeah, great yep. stuff. Um, what else we got? A couple more and then I'll I'll bug it off. Um this is not particularly a horror movie, but it's a Halloween movie, The Crow. Um I really love this movie. Another yeah, you know, that, that. that movie may be creepier than a lot because the guy killed himself on the set. Yeah, exactly. Um this is the um score, yep. which is an awesome version. Really cool. And I've also got the that soundtrack's one of my favorite soundtracks. Yeah, that's, that's a good that's a great soundtrack, soundtrack yeah. of all time. Absolutely killer. Um, and last but by no means, a film that probably no one else will mention, but I've got a bit of a story behind it, is the original Blair Witch Project. Oh, now, my yeah. my story behind this is um, there was a guy back in the days when this came out, was it be the 90s, early 90s? I'm not sure. Yeah, 90. Something like that. Yeah, so sure. um, there was a guy, I'm sure you all had him back there, that used to sort you out with dodgy DVDs. You'd give, chuck him a few bucks and he'd suddenly get all the latest videos in and all that sort of stuff. He also used to chip up the original PlayStations and give you PlayStation games for a few quid anyway. So I uh, went to see him and sorted me out with a few bits and bobs, as you do. Uh, and he said, I've got this new movie. It's come from the States. Because obviously there was, the internet was just starting, I think, back then, possibly. Yeah. And he said, I've got this movie. He said, it's just come out in America. So I don't know much about it. I've been told it's a horror movie. And it's basically like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. There's loads of killing, loads of blood. You ah. love it. You like the film. <laughs> what? So 
Yeah, exactly. Thanks for that, mate. <laughs> so um, I, I went to, I picked it up, I put it to one side, went to the pub, came back one day. Um, the other guys in the house that I was, I was, uh, I, I bought a house and um, a couple of guys were, were um, staying with me and they, they all went to bed. Um, so I sat down two in the morning after the few beers, decided to watch this Texas Chainsaw Massacre type film. And the Blair Witch Project scared the shit out of me. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Because I wasn't expecting it. Uh, there, there hadn't been many of these sort of movies before. So I was just sitting there in the dark, no. 2, 2 a.m. When, when it finished, I put the lights on and I just wandered down, kind of lost. Just it, it just freaked me out so much. And I think it's because I did a lot of camping back when I was younger. And the whole idea of the, you know, being in a tent and hearing things going around you in the fucking woods, it just yeah. scared the absolute shit. And not yeah. seeing the protagonist or anything, it just, I don't know. So for me, this is probably the scariest film I've ever seen. The sequel to that, though, was horrifying because they kept playing all that new metal in the background. It was just like, it just completely <laughs> removed the movie. It, it was horrifying yeah. for a lot of I, I remember seeing that where the girl, I, it's a girl or a guy, I can't remember, goes into the corner and he's like freaking out. I'm like, there's a guy standing in the corner. This shit's fucking real. And then I'm like, oh, it's not real. Later on, I find uh, out. Like, well, there was. Up. There was a good PR campaign for oh, that. Uh, the yeah. Sci-Fi Fantastic. Channel. They had a phony documentary. Yeah. That, and yeah. I saw that before. I was like, oh, shit. Maybe they this did is a real. great job with that. There's no doubt selling <laughs> the the fear from that. But now I look back and it doesn't even like it doesn't even move the needle. But you oh, know, because you're I need... forgot, forgot to oh. mention this as well. Uh, the um, Hang on, Rick, the Rick, Johnny Rick Jr. is coming up. Hang on. <laughs> What the nice. Uh, this is the wow, nice. What's that? DVD box set of um, oh, all the George Romero, Romero the Dead. Oh, nice. Yeah, Night of cool. the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, and Day of the Dead. And there's an extra features and all that sort of shit. So you got to mention, like Bond I said, stuff. Johnny Rick Jr. is in the house. Listen, yeah. everybody, let's give Johnny Mac a big hand. I just got one more. I just got one more thing for John. John, I'm gonna put, I'm only gonna pull a Rick once tonight because I see your shirt, and I'm like, we know the reason Zombie keeps making these movies is to keep his wife employed, but I think this is Definitely. her best. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. See, Rick is trying to, Rick's Gosh, trying to pull a Rick when it's not even his, his turn. So listen, here we go. Listen, everybody. It's not among my favorites. That's why it's not even. Not Johnny, yeah. I love you, buddy. Thank you for joining us tonight and waking up and interrupting your night. Um, thank you also for doing Warrior Soul with me today. Man, that was so good. That was so good. Anybody who doesn't know Warrior Soul, fuck you. That's all I have to say, all right? You need to know Warrior Soul. How about it, Johnny? You agree? Definitely. Fucking brilliant band. Very underrated. First four Punchy hours. Hell. Um, yeah. Johnny, thank you, man. We'll be talking soon. We're going to be yep. looking down the pike for traditional metal island at some point. Cool. Right? Did, you remember, oh, the, did yeah. you remember to tag Corey? Just, I'm just curious to see what he would say. <laughs> I did. No. Yeah. I did. did I, I, I did. told you, Johnny. I tagged Warrior Soul and Corey, and I talked about it. How about it today? I talked about it extensively and i offered him a forum to come on and talk about it and i probably won't hear from him but you know <laughs> if yeah, i yeah. do it'll be hey you're a fucking asshole or something like that but whatever well he's um, not wrong <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh johnny mac great tonight. great to see you buddy Thanks thank for you okay. lovely to meet you all i'll Love catch you later buddy. see you guys peace cheers all right we're all being right. joined we're by now. Young Noah. I keep calling him Nate, and I have no idea why I've done that. Um, you guys all still – yeah, i got to kick him out. All right. Uh, we're going to be joined by Noah in a minute here, and we're going to run by uh, his his uh, top ten quick. So, now, where was I at? I was uh, at Jimmy – or no, I was at Eli. Oh. So, Eli, you were up for whatever number one, five, four, five, I think. Yeah, I'm on like uh, two, five, yeah. 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 Um, there aren't that many movies that I that I make sure to watch every uh, every year around Halloween time, really, because I mean I watch horror movies and stuff year round almost every single day. So yeah, you're always yeah. watching hard, dude. Yeah, almost almost every day. <laughs> but uh, but this one is is one of the last ten years that I just have to watch every every Halloween season. Trick or treat. Yep. Um, it's just so good. Uh, I didn't love it when it first came out. I'm not really sure why. 
it didn't really get a theatrical release, but I was uh, it got a theatrical release last year, and I was able to see it in the theater, and that was really really cool. So it's a, it's an anthology. It's like a linear anthology. You got all these different characters. They're all in the same town. Most of them don't know each other. Some of them cross paths with each other. Some of them don't. But it's just it's just awesome. Uh, what's his name? Michael Doherty, the director. He's he's kind of gone on to do some big things. I think he did one of the Godzilla movies. Um, I think he did King of the Monsters. So he's kind of yeah, oh. yeah yeah. I didn't know if you knew that or not. But uh, yeah, it's just so good. Like Sam, this guy right here, his name is Sam, named after Sam Hain. Um, just he's become one of my favorite like horror icons, and uh, it's just great. If you like anthologies and you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend checking it out. It's a lot of fun. Really well directed, well acted. It's amazing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Eli, you watch. Honestly, dude, I think you probably watch more horror than all of us do, like on a regular basis. I don't know, Todd. Todd, Todd's, Todd's well, Todd. Todd. Todd might be up there too. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I I watch a lot of horror, but that's why I wanted him to come on. I knew he was definitely a yeah fanatic. Yeah, it sucks that like, his internet's on. kind of <laughs> shitty. I I I wish his internet was a little better, but um, we'll figure that out next time. So, all right, Noah, are you here? You gotta you gotta let us see you, dude. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah, gotta let us see you. And you also gotta turn off the screen and back behind you. You're streaming the show, so you gotta mute it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I prefer my people that show up on screen show me who they are. So I'll come back to you then. No, okay. Uh, Jimmy, what you got? Yeah, man, I'm probably going to peace out as well, uh, just to share a few different ones. Uh, okay, you want to run through a couple, uh, uh, couple of them that you got left? Yeah, yeah, just like real quick. But uh, what Eli just showed, Trick or Treat, that's an amazing film. Uh, I don't have a copy of it, but great. To, honestly, like, you know, when it comes to like horror films recently, I, I haven't really seen a whole lot, you know, in recent years that, uh, surprised me as well as that one. But, uh, of course the thing you guys showed it, this one's probably a little bit different. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. version, um, uh, night of living dead. I mean, uh, of all the Romero films, this is the one that for Halloween, it's kind of more like the haunted house kind of thing. Dude. Uh, it's so right? good, man. It's so good. Like, it's like still stands up. can't go wrong with it. Right. Uh, I don't know if anybody mentioned, uh, I don't have a copy of it. Uh, burnt offerings. Hell yeah. And oh, dude. One, what's that? Burnt Offerings. Oh, that uh, movie's fucking yeah. sick. Karen Black, yeah. Karen Black. Yeah. Oliver Reed. Yeah. Yeah. Oliver Reed and uh, Karen Black. Karen Black is amazing, as she is always amazing in like, a lot of stuff she does. Uh, like Children of the Night was another good one uh, she was in. Uh, I think she died pretty recently. But uh, Burnt Offerings, man, that's like to me the, the definitive like poltergeist uh, yeah. haunted house yeah. kind of movie. Um, and it just like, I, I think it, it's one that goes kind of under the radar, but if you're a deceased fan, uh, you would obviously know, uh, burnt deceased. offerings with Mrs. Allardyce, you know? Uh, so it's just, I don't know. It's like, it's got a lot of atmosphere, just great seventies horror movie, you know, to me, like the seventies was the, the definitive, of you know, these type of films. Uh, but lastly, uh, I'd like to mention, you know, talking about Blair, Witch. uh, if you guys have not seen Willow Creek, which is a Bobcat Goldthwait movie. Yeah, Bigfoot. And it's a Bigfoot movie, yeah. And it's uh, found footage, and it's fucking terrifying. And it absolutely is. amazingly well done. I mean, just mm. so good. Uh, you know, just uh, in terms of, like, I'm not really, like, in... And I thought, like, Blair Witch was really good. I it just, like, I I couldn't help but feel like, uh, you know, it scared the fuck out of me, but <clears> I was still <throat> feeling like maybe I wanted a little bit more uh, until it took me some time to realize that, like... Uh, that was the whole point of it. But, uh, and you know, the, the Willow Creek movie really kind of brings that in as well. You don't ever see the creature. You just hear it. It's just so well done. Uh, it just, it scares the fuck out of me, man. It's, uh, that ending too is so weird. Wait, Oh, I know. On yeah, yeah. Hold on one sec. Which one are you talking about right now, Jimmy? I was Willow answering. Creek. It's by, yeah, uh, I have not seen that. I got to yeah. see that. Yeah. yeah. Bobcat. Uh, and you know, like Bobcat has done a lot of great films. Uh, if you've not really kept up with his career, he's good, uh, you know. But uh, but the Willow Creek that was like kind of a different one for him. Um, 
you know, again, found footage, Bigfoot, uh, but it's what you don't see is what, and I had to realize that over time, you know, especially with like Blair Witches, you know, that's kind of what makes it so great is like what you don't yes. see is what makes it so scary, you know? Yeah. Um, yep. And so, uh, you know, being a Bigfoot film, you kind of want to see the Bigfoot, but you don't see it. You just hear it. And it's fucking terrifying. <laughs> hey, it's just hey, absolutely Jimmy, awesome. Jimmy yeah. if you haven't seen Horror in the High Desert, very, I don't think sim- so. very similar to Willow Creek, but actually more terrifying. I haven't seen it either. Yep. So check Horror out in the High Desert. Yep. Uh, independent okay. movie uh, and found footage it, along the same lines, but it, I can't. I, I'm not going to tell you anything else about that movie. But check it out. I'm down. I'm definitely going to check that out. Yeah, because yeah, I mean it's too. just totally different, you know. But I, I'm going to go out and say this. Uh, just hey, before you leave, leave, say hi to your buddy hi. next to you right there. What up, dude? Yeah. But real What's quick, up, uh, before Talk I leave, time. Halloween, I'm going to go back and uh, eat some Halloween candy and watch Charlie Brown, The Great Pumpkin. So, Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Uh, really? Fuck yeah. You can watch Pumpkin Heads. After okay, Pumpkin boy. Head, The Great Pumpkin. Okay. Hey. All right. There you go. That's, that's a bit better. <laughs> Seriously, and man. This guy below me, I love this fucking guy. Not in a weird way, but in a in a real way because he's helped me so much. You guys have no idea, man. This guy has helped me so much. Ah, uh, come on. Uh, he did it. a he did a kick ass fucking uh, edit on you know we we worked together on it, but he did all the really hard stuff like the editing. And uh, man, this guy, I, I love this guy, Jimmy. Man, he's the best. And I'm a little drunk, but it's okay. Oh, it's oh. okay. I'm allowed to be a little drunk once in a while, right? And uh, Jimmy, you rule. Thank you for popping in. Just don't be so mean. Uh, sweet, sweet love your ass, right? Like that. I'm not going to be expecting. Okay. Say again. I said, just don't be sending me any kind of weird text tonight that I'm not expecting. You mean you mean my dick pics are not accepted? Oh, yeah, you that's it? you know. Another nine percenter will do that. Just, it's just nice. Uh, but, yeah, like, another nine percenter <laughs> might do that. You're right. It's nice, but it's it's nice. Just have the notifications. It's fine. No uh, he's gonna send that text to everybody. No, I, well, it'll be a group text. I'm sure. Oh God, he'll start a new one. Fuck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's already a solid party. party. We don't nothing, need listen, listen, guys. There's nothing like seeing an old man shriveled penis. Come on. You know you want to see it, but. All right, guys. Say goodbye to Jimmy. He's the best. Later, Jimmy. Cheers, guys. Good seeing you, Jimmy. Good to see you guys. Later, man. Happy Halloween. Later, man. Okay. Uh, where are we at? Tyler. Everybody say hi to Tyler. What's up, What's up man? Hey. What's going on? He's over there next to Eli, below below Nick. I would not want to be below Nick, Tyler, if I was you. <laughs> oh, he can <laughs> smell it. Fucking guy, he can smell it right Nick. now. That guy Nick farts a lot, from what I hear. I'm just saying. I don't know, dude. I got I, I got do. two dogs here, and one of them I'm pretty sure has gastrointestinal <laughs> problems. So hey, it's you want to throw out a title or two, quick? Sure. Um, uh, I mean, I'm not I'm not quite the the horror aficionado that a lot of you guys are, but I like. Um, I tend to find myself liking more like really intense, like psychological type movies. And if you haven't seen this one. Yeah. Oh, about it. oh yeah. Yep. It is. Takashi it is an Mike. absolute head fuck of a movie. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's like three Mike. movies at once. Yeah, and <laughs> if you go, I recommend if you've never heard heard of that movie, if you're not familiar with the premise of the movie, go into it blind because you're gonna you're gonna watch it and be like the fuck it's a rom com to start like <laughs> yeah and then it and then when the shift happens it goes all in and. Yeah. Without spoiling anything, there's a there's a certain dismemberment scene that is really drawn out and really uncomfortable and you're just unflinching. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I like movies like that there where there's a certain level of intensity, um, more so than just straight you know, blood and guts and horror. Um so like in that it's under your skin, you know. <laughs> yeah, hey, t- so in Tyler. That scene, Tyler, yep. you might be describing like that Psy album, Air to Despair. When you first look at it, it looks like all normal. And then the more you look at it, it's disturbing as fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then, so with that in mind, you know, I mean, this movie has 
good jump scares. It's it's classic, but it's not considered a horror movie. But seven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's oh, a yeah. I mean, fucking freaky movie, man. Yeah. Yeah. Very there's dark. a but th- that's this is the kind of stuff I like, you know. Um now I do have a couple like you no know, horror horror movies in my stack that I've enjoyed, like High Tension. Yep, yeah, that's good. French yeah. movie. Yeah. Yep. Now I I'd say the twist in this was a little ham fisted, but you know, still cool. Um yeah. it's classic. Yeah, you know, of course of course you can't go wrong. I think I don't know. I, I missed the first hour or so, so I don't know if anyone already brought this up, but of course, Ooh, event, no, event we talk about that. That's yeah. amazing movie. Yeah, I wouldn't I, necessarily call it a horror movie, but I would. Movie. Are you kidding? I, I would. I would call it a horror movie. Like it's, horror. Horror. it's like Hellraiser in space, in a way. Yeah, yeah. Even though yeah. yeah. Horror 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 horror. All right. Space. Okay. All right. But uh, but yeah, <laughs> this one though, like I saw, I was great so, movie. Great movie. So I was. 18, 19, when it first came out, I was working in the movie theaters when this came out, and I saw it like three times in a, in the like three nights in a row, and so good. I just I don't know, it's cool because like you 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 start picking up like you know when someone's gonna get fucked up. There's like certain little things that happen that's always a cue, like that little the sphere. There's a, it's always an image of the sphere somewhere in a scene before someone gets fucked up. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. If, I don't know if you guys ever paid attention to that, but oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, that's the kind of. I mean, I have a couple others here, but I think you you guys already talked about. You guys probably talked about Alien, and of course the first Evil Dead, and um, we got we still have a little ways to go yet. Here we've got where are we at, guys? Seven, uh, six, seven, eight, something like that. I got five left, I think. Oh, I got. I got a metric fuck ton, but a lot left. of them were covered by other people. So, um, Tom, I'm getting a beer. You uh, are on the floor. So, whoa, shit. I just kicked what him did out. You... Oh, oh right, there he is. He's back. Relax. Hold on. He's back. Hold <laughs> on. Relax. Don't get too uptight now. Hang on. Oh, shit. This is getting oh, wild shit. and wooly. Oh, no. whoa. whoa. We're all moving around. Real... I'm getting wooly. <laughs> Hang on. Yeah, well, I should be last right. anyway. So, all right, uh, Tom, go ahead, but give me like uh, at least three or four minutes of dialogue, please, sir. <laughs> Pressure's on, man. Well, I can, I, I like, can do fuck two. Fuck you, man. I can't talk about this movie that long. <laughs> I can do two if need be. Um, right, I got to go get a beer. I'll be right back. So I'll talk about this. Um, Alice, 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 Sweet Alice. This is 1977. Um this is was kind of considered like an American giallo, um, but the director said he had never seen any giallos when he made this movie. He was oh, in, He was he was. In, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Um, yeah. And he, he said he was an influenced influenced by Don't Look Now and various Alfred Hitchcock oh, don't movies. Look down. Love it. Um. But and this is this has got to be one of basically uh, this young girl played by Brooke Shields is murdered in a pretty messed up way and during a communion and um, there's you know just a killer running around so it's a, a mystery uh, but there's a lot of like really stylish camera work and graphic murders. And this is probably a movie in terms of like Catholic hangups. This is like my, my number one uh, movie in, in terms of like there's lots of that kind of imagery and just kind of the the way uh, Catholicism, Catholicism can be creepy, I guess. Um, and there's just kind of just a unique energy to the, to the to the movie um to where it's it's not a typical slasher movie um that it's it's fairly style stylized in in a unique way for an american horror movie from the low budget american horror movie from the late 70s so it just it's always really st- stood out to me as something special um, Brooke, Brooke Shields must have been really young in that one. That's before Blue Lagoon and all yeah, that. Yeah, I think right? she was n- nine. I think it was her first role, eight it's or nine. Pretty baby, even. Yeah. Um, 
I'll, I'll talk about another one. Uh, we'll go Italian. The Red Queen kills seven times. I yep. think this is 72, maybe, right around there. But this is really cool because it's it's basically a cross between uh, reading of the will, gothic horror, where they're, it's his family in, in an estate, and then the patriarch, the grandfather, dies. Um, but then there's somebody running around killing people. And the, this is the the killer. The costume is really cool. I used to actually have the action figure, but I, I, I needed the money, and I sold it. Hmm. So I, I really should have shown that off if i still had it but um and um yeah so this is there's a few movies like this where they really combine the italian gothic horror with the giallo uh seven deaths and the cat's eye is another one and there's a few like that i love giallo titles <laughs> yeah um yeah. the yeah that and that movie is, is kind of similar to this, but I but and also I love like there's uh like the evil girl that may or may not be the killer at the oh, beginning, boy. like she's such a little bitch where she like the girl is playing handball and she like kicks the ball away mm -hmm. and pushes her off the swing. So I I just like that that character in the in the movie. So, but this is like a lesser known Italian to all sort of that's really worth checking out yeah man all right um so there i did two look who's back everybody chromie d is back filthy rotten look who's back back <laughs> in town woo, 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 woo. um but he didn't bring any hard copies of anything so i don't know this guy uh it's good stuff. Canadians good are stuff. always doing their own thing. Dennis, what you got? <laughs> nope. You, you muted. Yeah. That's awesome. I've never seen that 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 Sorry, cover. The original the original cover for Killer oh, Clowns. Yeah, it's it's media. Look at that. Dennis off. Dennis is OG press. He's also OG VHS. Yeah, this oh, yeah. shit goes for like fucking three hundred dollars for some reason. What? Oh. I've never yeah. seen that cover. It's a full classic. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and uh, you guys talked about burn offering, so I wanted to show that one too because it was ah great movie. Speaking of Canadian, yeah, and and my pick, this motherfucker, James Brolin, the car. Oh, oh my god. Oh, burp, 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 burp. I hated that horn. <laughs> <laughs> that horn was stupid. <laughs> like uh you guys were talking about Jaws. And uh this is basically Jaws as a car. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh Satan driving a car going after I don't he's not going he's not going after anyone. He's just just being Satan. Everyone. <laughs> the best not okay. Satan, man, he can do whatever the fuck he wants. And, and uh, the best part in this movie is when, in the beginning, where he's going after, he's, he's driving behind these like guys on a ten speed, and the car gets up <laughs> to the wheel, and it, you can see him, and they're go they're like, "Holy fuck, this guy's trying <laughs> to run us over!" And it's yeah. like he gets up to the wheel and just starts touching it with his bumper, yeah. like, <laughs> and all of a sudden he just floors it, and they fucking fly over a cliff. Nice. And, and when they go scene. through, when they go through the, when he goes through the the living room, man, did I yeah, dude. frighten the shit out of me? I, I watched that with my parents on HBO years ago, man, and, and now yeah. I, I laugh. I, that's the that's the scene I go to all the time. <laughs> Such. I also have the uh, actual car, like this. <laughs> of course he does. Nice. Of course he does. I thought it'd be. Yeah, wow. man. This is badass. I did like how they had the headlights. They made them look like eyes, like almost kind of squinting. That's the uh, the Ed's. Oh yeah, yeah. That's cool. Holy shit, man! Yeah, man. Great, great movie, man. If you like Jaws, I mean, you got to think about Spielberg because he made Duel before he made Jaws, which yeah. was basically the car. Was because that the it, one? Hang on, Dennis. Was that the one with the the tractor trailer thing and Dennis uh Dennis Weaver. Dennis Weaver, man. Oh, I love yes. that movie. The, yep. the, the weave. 
The Wii. So, yeah. That was awesome. Dennis Weaver, dude. That was fucking yeah. Jaws before Spielberg made Jaws. Fucking McCloud, my dude. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> McMillan and, and Everybody's wife. like, oh, Spielberg. McMillan and wife. Yeah, right. You just made the same movie again, but with a shark. Yeah. I mean, the sharks are pretty scary, though, right? <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, yeah. You remember I mean, that movie, about... I mean, Duel is a fucking, that movie's pretty scary. If you think oh, it is. It. If yeah. you have a semi fucking chasing your ass. And waiting for you. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember when uh, clips from Duel were used in The Incredible Hulk? Oh, yeah, dude. That pissed off Spielberg big time. I mean, Wait, you should have expected it. He probably that was he probably like was like you can go ahead and use. He probably didn't even know. He probably just signed a contract. You know what More I mean? More likely, like, yeah, yeah. He's like, you can use. I'm just gonna. I'm trying to like make something, so I'll sign off on this. And NBC Movie of the Week or whatever it was, you can use my footage for whatever. I'm trying to remember what year was Duel. Do you remember? I think seventy four. Yeah, I think it was, it's before Sugarland Express. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I think uh, seventy four or seventy five. I'm thinking it's a it's a it's a really sweaty movie. Everybody sweats in that movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of did those. you uh, were you throwing up a horror yet, Dennis, or did you already do it when I stepped away? No, I just did the car, dude. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> seventy one. All right. Was cool. All right, Rich, Ricardo, Ricardo Montalban. All right, just real quick, uh, Nick, you were talking about how you hated that horn in the car, but is that any worse than the La Cucaracha at the end of like the Lost Boys? Is that the sound <laughs> you want to hear before you get impaled? <laughs> I mean, well, it's it's that's tied to a killer scene because like that's that's a serious yeah, yeah. impalement. Like he impaled him with like a railroad fucking tie, dude. Coming from Spanish culture, I'm like, I that's not the last thing I want to hear before my demise. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a lot of good directors I notice have a lot of like, their names start with C, right? We got we got Craven, we got Carpenter, and then we got Cronenberg. So, uh, so this is a, 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 a remake, and you did talk about the thing and how weird to go to practical effects were. But another yeah. one messed me up as a kid, and, it, oh. and, and it's a remake. Can't forget about Cronenberg. Oh, shit. Yeah. That's a good one. And the fly. So good. Awesome as Eli is, you know. Oh, yeah. Way, way bad. more, way more scary than the original. Oh, yeah. true. Dude. Oh, dude. Scary, yeah. <laughs> but it's also like I like how the 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 movie goes how it goes in phases, like the transformation of how he's going, kind of going through yeah. the process. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I, I like the sequel yeah. too. I, I do like this one better, but I mean, they're both pretty good. Really good acting. Uh, love Gina Davis in this. Um, right before it, you got a little campy with Beetlejuice, you know, <laughs> the word, but. Uh, Really good flick. Uh, even today, it's pretty pretty disturbing. And oh, after yeah. this, I didn't want to arm wrestle anymore. Uh, I was. I was oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Oh man. The fly yeah. had to be mentioned. The fl the fly two's got some really good gory. So I can't watch anything oh. that involves the dog. The first. <laughs> oh, dude, no, no. The the security guard getting his face melted. That. Yep. That is great. Good. Pick, great great flick. Yeah, so I, always I, feel was, like, uh... I always feel like directors that are special effects artists, you're going to get a way gorier movie. Chris Wallace directed that, so you're always going to get something that's like way more special effects than like someone. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude, when she swats off the jaw, his lower jaw, and then just the rest yeah. of it just kind of. Just yeah, no. they, they went through so much milk in that, in that movie. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it was milk. All right, Nick, what do you got, man? Well, I mean, they brought Creep Show too. I mean, of course, we got to talk about Creep Show one. Fuck yeah, uh, dude! One of the best anthology movies ever. Uh, it was pretty much birthed out of what Stephen King and you know George Romero wanted to do, like a legit comic book horror movie, like a tribute to all the horror comics, Vault of Terror, Vault of Horror, whatever it was. Uh, it. Yeah, they nailed it. They they actually crush it. The uh, the transitions. Where they cut to the comic book panels and the little yeah. blocks, of, you know, like that is so perfect. I'm a giant comic book nerd anyway, so seeing comics and horror meet up with horror movies, it's perfect. And I mean, every story on here I think is awesome. 
Though, I mean, oh God, it's kind of hard to pick one. It's probably the crate. The crate's always been my favorite, uh, yep. just because it's a it's a good elaborate setup. But they're creeping up on you, mostly just that last bit where you see all the bugs emerge from. Uh, oh God, who was it that played him? Fuck, E.G. Marshall. Yeah, yeah, all oh, the bugs coming e. out of his body. Oh, dude, th this movie is such a classic. I love Creep Show too. That one's also awesome. I'm I mostly just kind of watch the raft because that's my favorite story on there. But I like every story on here, especially uh, you know um, Leslie Nielsen hamming it up. He's he's just he he's a great villain. But at that point, I had already watched like the Naked Gun and some Police Squad stuff, yeah. and uh, I just I couldn't see him being you know villainous. It's like no, he's he's Leslie Nielsen. I can't see that. You know. Yeah. But Nick, you, know what I, you know what I love about that movie, Nick, is the wraparound with Tom Atkins and the fucking Stephen King. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Fucking, like, the kid jamming the fucking voodoo doll thing. Like, yeah. Fuck it's like, bad. Throw that shit in the garbage. <laughs> Dude, yeah. This this movie is so damn good. Like, honestly, it's this kind of set the standard for horror anthologies. And uh, for the record, do not watch Creep Show 3. I heard it's a giant piece of shit. Yeah, Did you catch a TV show? There's, you know, there's, there's the TV show uh, too. I saw yeah. one of the episodes, the one with the dollhouse, and that one actually that feels like creep show again. Yeah, like right, that man. captures the the whole vibe of it. There's also the traveling uh, ashtray in the in creep show. The green you marble know, ashtray it shows up in all four vignettes. Oh yeah, Ooh. yeah, and it's in the TV show too. I just watched uh, episode one of season four, and there was the green marble ashtray right on a table. Oh yeah, He's getting oh. stuck in the scenes. Yeah. What was the hey um, Nick? Nick. Hey, hey man. Uh, it doesn't recommend like this. Creepy, uh, Is that this a box of the Tales show? From the dark, Tales from the Dark yeah. Side. No, it's Dark actually the original Creep Show. It's, it comes in this hard box. It's pretty cool. Like it's you get this uh, booklet. Oh. And you get all this cool like stuff with it. That's, That's nice. awesome. So like, if you're a real fan, man, this is definitely recommended. If you um. I mean, if you ever want to watch. Ed Harris cut a rug. I mean, disco it the fuck up, man. Hell yeah. Those hips didn't trying lie. Shut up. Try to remember uh, what uh, E.G. Oh, Marshall. Awesome, what was the thing that E.G. Marshall did? Do you guys remember like what his big thing was? Because his his thing was voiceovers, right? Uh, he did a lot of acting. He was in the original Twelve Angry Men. That's right. He was. Yeah. He was uh, juror number four. That's right. With um. With Jimmy Stewart. Jimmy All right, Stewart. Matt, I'll raise you one. The Beast Which Within. The original uh, Bernie Wrightson comic. All right, Matt, oh, yeah. what do you got? Oh, my turn. All right. As part of the Alien Quadrilogy <sighs> box oh, set, definitely the first movie, 1979, directed by Ridley Scott, the brother who survived. Uh, great movie. I like Aliens as well, but Aliens is more of an action film. Alien yep. is more of a sci-fi yep. horror movie. So I'm going to talk about horror in one of these movies. It's that one. Alien 3 is okay, but it's a little weird. Alien Resurrection has moments, but it doesn't live up to the others. So yeah, definitely this one. It's also an interesting... Uh, it unfolds forever. I don't know if you've ever seen no, this. Oh, yeah, one of those. Oh, I love Holy that. Holy shit. On yeah. And on and on. It just is crazy. I would imagine you have the I soundtrack, no right? Yeah. Good Lord. It's, it's still... <laughs> Damn. It's still is that that's DVD though, right? Yep, yes. it's all DVDs. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like a happy birthday streamer, uh -huh. <laughs> right? It's, it's longer than the, most uh, CBS receipts. Matt, do you have the soundtrack <laughs> or no? As a matter of fact, I do. Oh right. man, that's an oldie. It is. Uh, Silva Screen put this out. It's a British pressing from '79. Nice. Wow. There's the back for you. Hey, right. hey, Matt, uh, I, I, I have that, right? But I bought it used, and it came with uh, two copies of Alien 4, and I'm missing three. Yeah, I, <laughs> I'm, I might have pulled this one as well. <laughs> might have. Might have. The, right, uh, the, the behind-the-scenes stuff is still worth it, though. What do you got up next, Todd? Brain Dead, also, yeah. also known as Dead Alive. Yes, uh, but this one has seven extra minutes in it because it's uh, the original cut. Yeah, 
you, if you've only seen Dead Alive, you're missing seven minutes. But I couldn't really tell what those seven minutes were that were added. This has always been one of my favorites, Total Bloodbath. Oh, yeah. Looks pretty gruesome, man. I've not seen that one. Oh, that's it's amazing. Oh, Dead Alive, dude? Yeah. Peter Jackson. No, not that I remember. Oh, yeah. It's one. It's one of the first Peter Jackson movies. Oh, really? One of the bloodiest movies. Oh, dude, it, it is an absolute blood bath. If, awesome. if you got a zombie sex fetish, you definitely will get your fix in that one too. Let's just say. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> That's he showed dead alive, didn't he? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Except the OG one, the brain dead. Good pick, good pick. The boys yeah. approve. Eli, what you got next? Go second, right, everyone. I got. I'm going for uh, another. This is a Louis. really good movie. Yeah, he's, he's indecisive right now. He doesn't know where he wants Louis, to go. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> he just took off. Um, this movie just came out this year, but I think I think it kind of has like future Halloween cult classic potential. But we'll see. Uh, Cobweb. I don't know if anyone's seen this. No, no. Um, on that watch list. Oh, let's see. Yeah, Cap-watch. yeah. It's a. Um, it's kind of like a like a folk tale put into like a movie. Uh, yeah, I just I just think it's it 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 failed badly in theaters because they put it out. They released it the same weekend as like Barbie and Oppenheimer and all that shit. Um, instead of releasing it, you know, around Halloween time, I don't know. I think the studio that uh, that that you know that made it were just like, all right, we we don't think this is going to do well. Just dump it out in theaters. So it, it had a disaster of a release. It was in theaters for like a week. Um, but I think it's I think it's got cult classic potential. Um, huh. It's basically about this young kid. He's like nine or ten years old. Um, and when you watch it, you got to keep in mind you got to have like a folk tale, you know, mentality in mind. But he like he hears like scratches in the walls, and he hears someone talking to him. And uh, I don't I don't really want to spoil it, but uh, it's kind of one of those like creature in the walls type movies. Uh, it's got a great twist to it, um, and it's got a cool Halloween vibe, like the house that they live in for some reason they never really say why but it's got like a pumpkin patch in the backyard and yeah it's uh i just think it's got almost like maybe not as much as trick or treat but i think it's got cult classic potential um but we'll see we'll see how that goes but yeah i'd recommend this one for really good modern horror yeah the only Don't talk reason... bad about barbie that is that might possibly be chromy d's favorite album of 20 20- 23 album movie movie probably sure. i can't tell <laughs> did you, you go, seriously both. phil did you go see that barbie movie did you take your kids no uh no. we uh i tried to get my kids to go to it but they just didn't want to and uh, we don't have a theater here but when we went back to toronto for the summer uh we went we went to blue beetle instead and uh i, I as a huge comic book fan as well i was so disappointed with blue beetle oh shit I heard that was, here that was not great. No, I'm just holding my breath for Booster Gold. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Uh, with the right director. With the right. Yeah. I, it's just uh, comic book fatigue, man. It's just. It's, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, DC is already trying to reboot itself. Ugh. Yeah. 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 Reboot it's not itself. going well. No, it's not. All right. I'm going with a Halloween movie, but I'm not going with the Halloween movie. I'm going with. Halloween 3, Season oh, of the course. Witch. I love Eight that movie. more days to Halloween, Halloween, <laughs> Halloween. I love this movie, man. There's something about yeah, this wait. that it might actually be my favorite one of the the whole franchise because it's kind of different yeah, and yeah, weirdly man. out there. And it's kind of um, – the story isn't really – necessarily connected to michael myers at all right no, not so, at all. well it was intended to be an anthology like they yeah, wanted yeah. to get away from right. michael myers and then you know do a different halloween every you know time they did it yep. but, right and yeah. it's yeah. just um man have. there's something i don't know there's something very 80s about it i don't know if you guys agree that are old enough to know what the 80, 80s were like but it just feels of that era and it's got that nostalgia for me. And, of course, the what they call the green shamrock, right? Yep. For shamrock. And it's like the, the mass and uh, Tom Atkins, of course, you know, the and hero. His mustache. What's that? And his mustache. And his, his mustache. mustache. Yes, yes, right. yes. His mustache got second billing. 
I think he just turned 85, four, something like that. Like 82. 82. Okay. He's the same age as my dad. And it's just, um, yeah, man. I, 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 I love the first Halloween. I like the second Halloween. I love the third Halloween. I stopped caring after this movie. And I got to be honest with you. I've watched a couple of them. What's the one with um, Mr. Banana Hammock on it? Paul Rudd. Oh, oh that's part six. Six, six yeah. yeah. That, that one's that. okay, but it's kind of, I don't know, man. It's just, it's a Not franchise great. that just kept going and going. and. When he going lost the fight to Buster Rhymes, I was like, I'm out. That's uh, yeah. good. <laughs> I don't know. What, what's uh, What's everybody's? Take on Halloween three. Look, I that love that movie. movie. I love yeah. it. Yeah. That, that, it doesn't that, have LL Cool J like each Hold on, one at a time, one at a time. Hold on. Tom. Yeah, I, I love also just how uh bleak it is and just um like the scene where they're testing the commercial on the family. It's just so fucked up. Yeah. Oh, when the rattlesnake yeah. comes out of his mouth. Fuck. How about you, Dennis? What's your take on H three? <sighs> ah, you had it. Yeah, yeah. Yep, one of my favorite fucking movies, dude. Um, I think. How about you, Rick? I like what you said. Very different. I think that's what it's what it needed. It needed a bit of a resurgence, a little bit of fresh blood, and I think going that direction. uh, Yeah, a little reimagined cover, which is pretty cool. Oh, and look at you. That's cool. Wait, it's pretty treasured. Hold on, on. Rick has reimagined covers. Oh yeah, I love that man. That would make a great shirt, man. That's cool. Ah. Yeah, All right. It's pretty cool. How about you, Nick? What's your? Uh, I think you like it a lot. Right? No, I, oh, I love it. I think it's wildly creative, and uh, it, honestly, like it, it, it's darkly humorous too. And I, I like yeah. dark humor. And yeah, there's no happy ending either. Like I, I like that sort of shit. Give me a and, really creative, weird movie. And John Carpenter's not involved with it, other than licensing wise, right? Yeah. Uh, that's it. Yeah, I believe yeah. so. He did the music. How about? Oh, yeah. oh he did. Yeah. Oh, that I didn't know. Okay. How about you? Excellent. It's one of my two favorite movies involving Stonehenge. Of course, it's the Spinal <laughs> Tap is the other one, but yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. absolutely. It's a yes, much we, had to, we had to pull in Spinal Tap somewhere on this uh, stream, right? <laughs> right. Awesome. Awesome. Do you have the uh, Mr. Uh, Accusation Network? Do you have the soundtrack to this one? I do not. Ah, look at that. We stumped yeah. him. How about you? Uh, what's your, uh, what's while, your take though. on three? Yeah. There it is. Oh, we, all, we all picked Love it. it. <laughs> yep. It's mine. Nice, nice. Eli, what about you? You've never seen it, right? I think we all picked it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I yeah. love it. Don't it's fucking it. great. It's fucking yeah. great. How about you, Tyler? Don't um, fuck this up. Don't fuck this up. <laughs> well, I'm going to fuck it up in the fact that I honestly last saw it when it first got released on VHS at the video. You store. bastard, you. You're <laughs> out of here, motherfucker. You must go back. There it is. And we already know what Phil oh, feels my. about this. Phil is my spirit animal. He loves this movie. Well, like I said, the past 10 years, people are finally giving Halloween 3 a chance because I'm yeah. telling you now, if you're an OG chud, there was very few people that loved Halloween three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was hated. I mean, oh, it was. Yeah, yeah. We'd have sleepovers, and everyone would rent the Halloween Halloween movies, but everyone was like, "No, we're not watching three. And you know, and it wasn't because I was just trying to like go against the grain. It is absolute, absolute perfection. Yeah, and this is. Um, I was a sophomore in high school. You bunch of young bastards. And uh, hang on, uh, and frankly, man, I remember going and seeing this and being like, "Well, where's Michael Myers, man?" But like, I think it's kind of ascended the cult status of epicness, right? You know what I mean? It's just so killer. So, all right, Phil, you don't have anything on you, but do you want to mention any favorites before you got a jet? Yeah, uh, yeah, because I got a jet in a bit. Sadly, yep. uh, I, I will say that uh, with Halloween three, I remember being such a nerd that I actually wrote fan fiction for Halloween three, and I thought I was such a genius. <laughs> I was like, "How are we going to tie it into the franchise?" I'm like, "Simple boy, oh. Michael Myers mask." Hey Phil, Peter just Silver get a little Jack, closer probably. to the mic, man. Just a little bit. Can you hear me? Sorry. 
There you go. Oh, go. Look at that. Ah, I want a left nostril. I want a left nostril. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all nose, man. No, can you hear me? Yeah, oh, yeah. Better, better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I was saying that I, uh, when I was a kid, I wrote Halloween 3 fan fiction and like tied together the series, and I thought it was so genius. It's shit, by the way. But I was like, Michael Myers' mask is a sh silver shamrock. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? That would be so hated. Deus <laughs> ex machina. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a couple of movies, if I, if I had known and I would have brought with me here. That's cool. Uh, That's all right. We're good. Uh, Charlie Kaufman's Mother's Day. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hell yeah. I love how it's Charlie Kaufman. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, that's the one I watched the other day. Slithers or Spawn nice. of Slithers. Yeah. I, I love a good monster movie, like Man in a Rubber Suit. Oh, rubber yeah. Suit. Okay. That's, a, that's a really good one. And I got to tell you, I went back and started rewatching all the VHS movies. They're cool. I like them. Yeah, I have my favorites, but I went back and watched the second one, and that is just the best of the series. I agree. the The, the sequence at the end is fucked up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How's the, How's the eighty five one? The new one that just came out. I I just watched. I, I just re saw that eighty five and what was it ninety nine? Those were the last two I hadn't seen. They were good. They had a couple of, you know, a couple of good scenes, but, you know, it's not as good as the, the first two. Yeah, so, I mean, that's that's what I'm doing there. And now I've gone down the rabbit hole. I've started rewatching Poltergeist 1 and 2. Uh, because they Oh, they're out. so good, man. Yeah. They're so good. They're, third yeah. one is still okay. You know, I got to say, though, I had no idea about these conspiracies about uh, Heather O'Rourke when her body went missing. Yeah, that's right. weird, dude. What about the girl that got murdered, man? Like, that's yeah, the, messed yeah. Up. Uh, the older sister in the first yep. one. Yeah, oh, what was it? Yeah. Dominique. Uh, Dominique Bunning, I think it was. She got choked out by her boyfriend in her driveway or some shit like right. that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There, there's been a whole lot of creepiness, but like, I had no idea about the Heather O'Rourke red, red shoe conspiracy. Not a clue. And when I read it, I'm like, holy. <laughs> well, I know what I'm reading later. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously, it's it's a it's a dark rabbit hole. But uh, I think th th they're implying uh, Spielberg. <laughs> it, it, no, I don't want to spoil it for you. I just I just want you. To <laughs> hey, but I'm gonna go out on I'm gonna go out on a crazy limb right here. Yeah. And I'm just gonna say Joe Beth Williams, fucking hot man. Back oh no, there. yeah, no, she, she was she was like an OG. Whoa, whoa <laughs> man, come on, man. You don't uh, have the, to be an old uh, man like me now to recognize that. The sorry. MILF Mount Rushmore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the MILF Mount Rushmore. I love it. God, I love she that. ever wear She was in really good shape in that one. <laughs> I got to tell you, Craig T. Nelson was no slouch either. No, he was not. <laughs> hey there, that coach. Was a, that was a handsome fella, for sure. <laughs> well, the, uh, the, the, the DILF Mount Rushmore. The yeah. Delf. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's why they. Yeah. Speaking of sweaty movies, when he's like drinking the whiskey and he's all like, and he swallows the worm and he's like, <laughs> I mean, if I was a lady or, or a man that was into that sort of thing, I'm like, come on home, daddy. <laughs> we should, we should probably uh, we should probably change topics before we get to Zelda. I'm just saying. Yeah, what was the um, what was the old what was the old man's name? The creepy fucker. Oh, Reverend Kane. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, God is back. in his holy dude. That guy was fucking evil, man. And then oh, they man. had he was, um, he was the dying Indian guy, the, the, the Indian guy that ended up doing uh, uh, some spots on later on X Files before he died. Uh, yep. Forget his name off the top oh, of my head. I forget his name. He was also on One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, too. Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great yeah. movie. But Sam, 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 I don't yeah, know. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. But uh, uh, I yeah. thought it was some red. I want to say red cloud, but that's not right. <laughs> I, I can't. I mean, every, <laughs> Indian guy's name, every Indian guy's name red cloud, right? Red cloud. <laughs> uh, guys, I got to go. Uh, All right. Appreciate you having me on here. And the next one. Let, let's 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 not do horror. Let's do all sleazy sex comedies. Wait, God. say that again. We'll do sleazy sex comedies for the next one. Let's get oh, away from the Valentine's. My tutor. No, I'm kind of scared. I am scared to see what you will. Screwballs. 
Uh, we, can can we, can, we, can, we can we can do an hour uh, uh, party uh, animal. Last there might be just enough sex in Caddyshack. Hard body. Well, yeah. We can have a, a, a. I can sit down and talk with you guys, and we'll get sleazy. We'll get some pink light bulbs. Right? The only way. Listen, hold on. Before we before you leave, Phil. Yeah. I am not doing a stream with you again if you're fucking sober. I'm just saying that. All right? <laughs> if, I, if I am pretty well drunk right now, it's yeah. not fair. I'm just saying. It's not Dude, fair. Listen, I can catch yeah. up. I'll get super drunk the next time. You're going you're gonna to paint your face again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, with Look, man, commit to the bit. Commit to the bit. Phil, thanks for jumping in, bud. We thanks love for you, having man. me, guys. We, uh, we will see you soon, right? Happy Halloween, and uh, yeah, right on. I'll see you when I see you. Peace uh, out. Catch you later, man. Okay, uh, somebody was trying to get in. Who, uh, uh, whoever that was, I'm not really sure. Uh, if you were trying to get in, get in. Um, we're back to Joe Beth Williams was hot. Anyway. Um, I don't think she wore a bra in that first movie. I don't, I don't think she wore a bra either. <laughs> And you no, know what? I'm just going to go on record pro- saying that. cold in that room. Get prosthetic nipples. I'm just going to go on record <laughs> saying that's okay. It was in the special um, effects budget. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, where are we at? Where are we at here? So, uh, where were we? Uh, oh, we're back at the beginning. Tom. Wait. I'm, right. wait did Noah's I here. There he is. What's up, buddy? How's it going, man? Do you have your audio on? Uh, yeah, now. All right. Cool. Hang loose. We're going to run through one. We'll give you a, a pass on five. Noah is, um, Noah is, it is Noah, right? It's not Nate, right? Yeah. I kept calling you Nate. I have no idea why. I don't know. Because again with an N? Because, yeah, exactly. I don't know my <laughs> alphabet that well. So uh, Noah right and I've been, actually Noah is responsible for me getting Jason McMaster on and nice. uh, going after Ron Jarzombek, who has never replied to me, but that's okay. Um, and actually, I have a little bit of a pull there because uh, I thought Hannes Grossman was going to be coming on, but he's kind of been hard to get a hold of lately. So we'll see what happens. But anyways, Noah was kind of the reason to uh, make that happen. No, where are you at? You're in Texas, right? Uh, yeah. Where at? Uh, southeast. Where's that? Southeast. Southeast. All right, southeast. So you're down the coastline, probably somewhere at some point. Yeah. Like so cool. Galveston. I uh, lived in Houston for a bunch of years, so it was pretty cool there. Uh, back, way back before you, your parents were probably even old enough to yeah. have you, probably. So, um. All right, we're going to go back to Tom, and we're going to get to whatever number we're on, eight, nine, whatever. Who cares? Yeah, I don't know. Um, and I just want to mention that uh, uh, as far as the Stonehenge, uh, Curse of the Demon also has the Stonehenge tie-in. So that's three three movies. Yeah. Uh, okay, all right. So that's your top three Stonehenge movies. Yep. Um, <laughs> I guess I'll bring this one up. I just watched this this again this morning. I've seen this a bunch of times. House on Sorority Row, 1982. Uh, this is a, a slash. I'm a I'm big into 80 slashers, and I would say this is top five for me. Um, it's probably a lot a uh, lot more sophisticated than a lot of other uh, 80s slashers. Um, the it's, in terms of like an underrated horror movie score, this would definitely be way up there. This is Richard Band. He, he does like a very romantic score. And it also, it's another one that's, I would say, it seems like it's influenced by uh, Italian horror movies, Argento and Bava. Like hey, the score. Hey, hey, the, hmm? What do you think it is also influenced by? Diabolik. Yeah, well, I was going to say that, dude. <laughs> yeah, well that that's the, yeah it's definitely like the plot is a lot more sophisticated than a lot of the other slasher movies and that's one element where it's influenced by diabolique yep. um so it's not just a killer running around there's kind of more more to it plot wise with the characters um and uh it, and it's really it's really stylishly uh, directed with the lighting and the camera work. The director 
was an assistant director for Brian De Palma. So there's a lot of, to me, Brian De Palma influence. And and with Brian De Palma's like his like Dress to Kill and some yeah. of those other thrillers, well, we're also super influenced by Ar Argento especially. Yeah. So to me, this is this is another one that has a bit of an Italian feel for for a low budget uh, '80s American horror movie. But this is the one that Doug, I I never get tired of watching this for for all the '80s slasher movies. And then also, there's a band that plays a bunch of songs, uh, whatever at a frat party or whatever that is. And it's this band. I had actually have the record four out of five doctors. So it's actually a decent like uh early 80s power pop U u.s power pop with a little bit of new wave in there oh cool so a little fun tie-in but yeah that's it cool nice tom i have to say you have the best hat of all of us tonight you you pretty much have the only hat but other than eli and uh captain fucking cool guy next to you but <laughs> you that hat just rules i got it's good say. i'm yeah, uh, Matt can go into Captain Tennille anytime he wants. I think that trumps oh. whatever I'm doing. Like he can. <laughs> yes, we have to do. Uh, what was? Uh, hang on a sec. So I, Muskrat, I, I, Muskrat Love was big. Right? What was the other? Was it? What was the other big song they did? Uh, love will bring us together. Yeah. Love, and then, love will bring. And there's one together. I'm thinking yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think. Was there one other uh, one that? Yeah, there's one I'm trying to think of that uh, that duet like love making. Yeah, love do it, do, do it to me one more time. Is the do song it to me of. one more yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking. Um, I was thinking. Um, the other one was uh, Kiki D. Don't that was uh, Elton John, John and Kiki, Kiki D. with Don't Go yeah. Breaking My Heart. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I don't know, Matt. I'm thinking of if anybody's going to get laid on this stream, it's you, my friend, with that outfit for sure. <laughs> We tried, we tried with our mask, but uh, they didn't. Other like than the Dennis, long lost cast member of Love Boat, but yeah, right, works. Yeah, <laughs> all right, Dennis, what you got? Oh, shit. what do I got? I got what uh, you got? Tourist what you trap. got, yo, got Tourist Trap. Oh, oh what is that? great movie, great movie, oh, Tourist yeah. Trap. Yeah, uh, is that the one with the creepy mannequins, yep. Uh huh. Oh, god, that that mannequin. Ugh. Yeah, man, super creepy. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like uh, these guys get lost into a tourist trap. Um, not guys, but a group of people get lost in a tourist trap. And uh, very, very nefarious things happen to them. Um, there's like a lot of like, this This movie's super weird because you don't know what's going to happen. It's like a lot of... Uh, I think Bar yeah, Barbie Benton is in this movie. Oh, Barbie He's Benton, yes. He's after his girlfriend. Yeah, and uh God, um this movie's so fucking weird. And the <laughs> soundtrack also is like super like it's, yeah. it's like super like like what the fuck is going on? Right. Super, I, I I love love the score to that. It is yeah, weird and creepy, but I, who did, I love it. Who did it. the soundtrack? Is that uh, Pino, Pino Pino Dinaggio? So yeah, he did. Oh he yeah, did, yeah, yeah. He yeah. did some of De Palma's movies. Yep, most notably. Oh, and, um, <clears throat> kind of a kind of a, has a giallo type of feel to it, as far as the like the the way the movie is like is shown, like the way that it's uh, filmed, but you never know what's going on and i still don't know what's going on really because <laughs> uh you have who's the main guy in this movie fuck man i can't remember uh, chuck, chuck, chuck connor's, connor's right yeah. chuck, chuck, chuck connor's, connor's man man right. t pusser yeah and he's like he's i think this is really a great performance by him this movie is all chuck connor's man it is um man. He he totally rides this movie out. It's kind of like a weird, like in between, like a slasher and a, like a supernatural thing. Because yeah. you have these mannequins that like move by themselves. Chuck Connors has he probably has like 
these like um supernatural powers like telekinesis maybe. type stuff yeah yeah telekinesis man yeah. um but you never really know so you're always on the edge of like what is fucking going on here but yeah. all the scenes are like super creepy and ah uh, man this movie if you haven't seen this movie and you want to watch a really scary movie for halloween tourist trap man this movie still if you it holds up yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, man. I don't, I don't have much more to say about this except I've never seen that one, man. Oh, oh dude, yeah. seriously? It's, it's really, it's really yeah. kind of unique. That that whole scene where the the mannequin's head turns and screams like that'll never leave me. Right. Yeah, um, well, Dennis, what's the name of it again? Tourist trap. Tourist trap. All right, I gotta check that one out. I got um, fucking uh, Amazon Prime right now. I gotta make use of it. Yeah, it's one of those full moon uh, offerings. Um, so, it's like pre, right, pre full moon. Yeah, we yeah. got Rick. Uh, all right, this is a bit different. I go to this movie specifically because of the bad acting and how how shitty it is. I know that sounds counterproductive, but I saw this at the right age, and uh, the sequel is lower budget, and some for some reason I find it better. You guys are gonna want to talk about this the moment I show it. I, fucking troll two, man. Like, no, I knew it. Uh, I knew it. Uh, is this, yeah, this thing, goblin <laughs> spilled backwards. <laughs> yeah, this is another one that lowered my calcium. I didn't want to drink milk, you know, after, after this movie. <laughs> it's just like uh cool way. Thanks. Yeah. So again, if if, if, the, if there was good acting, it would ruin this movie. It's specifically the bad acting. The sister. Oh my movie. god. It's our ghost movie too. They're like, let's just sprinkle this other shit in there too. You know what I mean? And just have this kid piss on everybody's food. There's know? a documentary, Rick, about the making of that too. It's I haven't. Yeah. yeah. It's like awesome. the best first movie or something like that. I yeah. forget what it's the, called. The lead actor, the dad was a dentist. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Acting chops, you know. None. Yeah. You could tell so yeah. when he when he pulled that belt. I was like, oh oh, like that's fucking a little too close to our comfort, man. Like I you don't piss on hospitality. hospitality. <laughs> You're gonna find this shocking, but I've never seen that. Oh, Dude, what? So many, so many quotable that. lines. I've never seen it. It's, it's like it's they're so they're eating bad. her, and then and then they're gonna eat me. Oh no! And they just kind of just oh. Dude. Uh, the the whole corn scene with the chicks seducing the one dude where they're yeah, gnawing on an ear, ear of corn. <laughs> oh, like, God. who writes this shit? Yeah, yeah right. It's, by by it's the way, there, there's there's the there's a Bigfoot uh, or no a Tarzan sexploitation movie from the seventies that does that same exact, exact no way scene really where they oh, bite yeah bite corn in the lovemaking scene and it creates popcorn. It's the same <laughs> scene. Oh, so they didn't man. actually they didn't I actually come up with that. that. I had no idea. <laughs> All right, Nick, you're up, buddy. All right. I mean, most Hit of my me picks have already shot. been, been uh, thrown up there, so I had to dig around, and I found another one that's a favorite of mine, uh, Leviathan. Oh, yeah. that's a great movie. Oh, it's a killer movie. Honestly, yeah, it, was... uh, it has been called the best alien ripoff ever. Absolutely. And it is. Oh. Uh, this this was a, kind of like the peak of the uh, underwater horror trend with Deep Star Six, The Rift. I guess the Abyss, even though there really wasn't. Those all three came out the same year. Yeah, everyone wanted to dive deep and get murdered by something. Yeah. But um, <laughs> this one actually has like one of my favorite um, Stan Winston creatures with the the yeah. mutant fish human thing. There's a lot of body horror elements, and the cast in here is awesome. You've got Peter Weller, Ernie Hudson, Richard Crenna, Hector Elizondo, um, God uh, Daniel Stern. Like yeah, they, they kind of really. Um... Just... Who's uh fuck the dude from um oh come yeah, on the man the black guy Fishburne yeah, Fishburn. yeah. Ernie Hudson Ernie yeah. Hudson no yeah. Fishburne Lawrence Fishburne he no. was in here you sure yeah it's Ernie Hudson <laughs> that's <laughs> Ernie Hudson yeah <laughs> why is that shocking fuck holy shit I'm confused I think those two guys are the same guy oh. <laughs> Man, how uh, many beers you've had? Uh, a lot. <laughs> oh god, uh, but yeah, like everything about it, like is just solid. The settings great. The underwater scenes, I think, were really cleverly done because most of them aren't done underwater. They actually just kind of pumped in gas in these large sets and just kind of floated debris with fans. Right. 
and then I think they just kind of slowed down the shots themselves. It looks legit, and oh, you yeah. know the, the suits are awesome, the creatures are awesome. The uh, it, it's you know not like Alien, but it is kind of like Alien in the sense it that is, you're yeah. infected and mutate. But uh, special effects are great. Uh, yeah, this is just a killer movie. I just think it kind of gets overlooked because there were a ton of underwater horror movies and. Yeah. Uh, it kind of does get filed under the alien ripoff thing, but there were so many of those too. So, but yeah, th this is awesome. I love this movie. I've been watching it since I was a kid and uh, yeah, still great. Nick, that part at the end where Peter Weller, Weller punches that chick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she deserved it. She fucking Nobody deserved it. That the fuck yeah, out. You know what? That, that movie is fantastic until the last like two minutes where the, the, the creature comes out and the fucking fake ass that yeah that part. I mean, well, it's still good. I mean, I the, the one in a million fucking shot with the yeah uh, exactly yeah yeah the grenade. I was like ah yeah. all right Peter Peter Weller's got a good arm and he can throw a touch pass <laughs> in the fucking corner of the end zone. But here's the thing. I'm going to my grave saying that's Lawrence Fishburne and not Ernie Hudson. It is 100% not, dude. No, Look, no, I don't legit. want to hear your bullshit. Okay? Wait, wait, hold on. Like, you want to phase in? Here, we can get on here. I can point out where uh, Ernie Hudson's name I is. Oh, I, just, I swear that was fucking Lawrence. And, no, uh, what, what, Samuel, what, what, Samuel L. Jackson was one of the... Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Samuel L. Jackson's in that too, yeah. Wait a minute. Is Sam Neill in it? No, no, Samuel no. Jackson's a fucking. <laughs> hold it, hold it. We're going to stop. Movie. I am thinking of Event Horizon. No, no Forrest right. Whitaker's in here, too. Hold on, Forrest <laughs> Whitaker, right? Wait, wait, wait. Stop, stop, stop a sec. All right. Event Horizon. Does that have Fishburne in it? That has Fishburne oh, in okay. it. Okay, that's what I'm, I'm mixing them up. Okay, it's so Freddie Morgan Green. Freeman, Jeff. Yeah. Never mind. I'm a little intoxicated. I'm just. has got Denzel out. Washington, too. It's, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure Samuel L. Jackson's in that movie too, right? <laughs> yeah, no, he was like somewhere. Truman number three or something. He's, He's in that character. song Snakes on a Leviathan. That one, right? <laughs> well, no, he, actually, he was in Sphere, which is like underwater horror too. So there we go. All right. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Go. Now you guys are painting me to be a racist because I can't. I'm too drunk to tell who the actor. You're just typecasting. Like, who's another famous black guy? Jamie Foxx. There we go. Someone, Jamie someone Fox. covered you. Jamie good, Fox. good, right, right. good looking out. Way. Key and Peel. Key and Peel. Right. So um, which, okay. Either one of them. Right. Whichever one. Whatever. All right, Matt. What do we got here, man? All right. I'm at my number five movie because I'm counting backwards. It is Friday the Thirteenth Part Two. I have the oh, original yeah. DVD as well as the lenticular. With the oh look at that oh Ooh, that's sweet New special it's nice oh so cool. yeah <laughs> this is where we get Jason uh you know after the drowning which he shouldn't have survived according to Tom Savini who didn't work on this movie you know said he went to the burning uh to me it's the Empire Strikes Back of the Friday Thirteenth movies because it has that WTF ending there's more questions than answers at the end I love it. It's my favorite of the of the bunch for sure. Do you, have, the, uh, do you have all the soundtracks to those or no? I <laughs> Harry Manfredini. I have the first, <laughs> the second, the third. Damn! Wow. You go, fourth. Matt. You go, girl. Oh shit! The fifth. Holy fuck! <laughs> and the sixth. Was that in a box set or did you buy? No, I bought movie? them one by one. Wow. Yeah, yeah God damn. That's, I am impressed cool. with the massive <laughs> Friday the 13th soundtrack collection. You have. Matt is the reason why every time I go there, everything's sold out. Damn it. <laughs> exactly. It's all massive. I, I'm weird. I, my, my favorite's still six. I love Jason Lives. I like Undead it's Jason. Yeah. yeah. I actually know the actress who played uh, Paula. She lives here in Burlington, Vermont. She's a, oh, yeah? uh, She teaches up the hill, actually. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. All right. All right, Todd, what do you got? Todd brings the heat. Huh. He does. He's got a good collection. I mean, I already love that Street Trash shirt. Yeah. That is such a cool movie. Yeah. Todd's on mute. Yeah, I think you're on mute, dude. I didn't do it on my side. Nope, nope, nope. Nope. Back to mute. Hang on, let me. I don't think I did it on my side. 
Oh, oh. Uh, you, it was probably Ernie Hudson. Yeah, they probably was. All right, hang on. There we go. Now, wait. You should be all right now. Uh, huh. Can't unmute your guest because you're muted. You muted yourself, dude. It's not me. Sorry. Looks like it's glitching out. There you right, go. Good. Good. There you go. I there you go. It was. It was stuck. I couldn't get it to unmute. This fucking computer. Uh. Old, uh, <laughs> Tombs of the Blind Dead. Oh fuck yeah, dude! I have the uh, I have both of them. Oh yeah, there's there's actually like four movies. Oh, I have two. Uh, Tombs of the Blind Dead, Return, Return of the Living Dead, Night of the Seagulls, and uh, one more. I can't think of the name of. It. But uh, this is the first one, and the this is the first one in the series, and it's. I don't know if it's my. It's probably my. These are. I love these movies. They're uh, they're Spanish, Spanish horror films. Uh, the yeah. Knights Templars. And that Knights Probably Templars the are the coolest zombies ever, ever, too. Yeah, one of my favorites. Hell yeah. And I, I love I love how they ride around yeah. in slow in slow mo. <laughs> yeah, the slow mo. Oh, parts, yeah. dude. The lighting is right. so weird. <laughs> okay. Um, where are we at? We are yeah, at... Yeah, I have a uh, dual disc version. I love the uh, lesbian scene. They kind of just shoehorn in there, too. <laughs> Eli, you sexy fucking bitch, you. What's next? <laughs> <laughs> I get that a lot, believe it or not. Um, lesbian scenes? <laughs> I don't believe that at all, but go ahead. No, I don't. No, you shouldn't. Um, so yeah, I wanted to bring another another modern movie because this one cool. uh, I don't That's hear good. a lot about this, uh, but I think this is one of the best horror movies of the last 10, 15 years. Black Coat's Daughter. I, oh wow! Um, I've never heard of that. This is directed never by Osgood Perkins. Uh, he was the son of Sam, uh, not Sam Perkins. Um, uh, what's his name from Psycho? Anthony Perkins. Oh Perkins. yeah. yeah. Perkins. So this is the son. This movie is just an atmospheric like masterpiece. Um, it is, it's hard to talk about, so I won't, I won't drone on about it. Cause it's, it's one uh, of those Emma, movies. Emma Roberts, right? She's in that American horror story now. Like, yeah, she's, she's yeah. Good. She's, she's really fucking good in this too. Um, yeah, it's, it plays with tropes of like, uh, possession, but it's not, it's not a typical possession movie by any means. Um, but it's just got the right, it's just got the right amount of like, took a little inspiration from like seventies possession movies. Um, but you, you just have to see it to, to to really understand. It's just super atmospheric, very fucking creepy. Um, I think it's I think it's a modern masterpiece, personally. So you guys should all check this out and, let, and get back to me too if you watch it. Let me know what you think. Um, yeah, if you like atmospheric slow burn type horror movies, I think you definitely got to check this one out. And man, Osgood Perkins, I think he's got a directing career ahead of him. He uh, he did that movie uh, Hansel and Gretel or Gretel and Hansel too. Which I thought was pretty good. Hmm. Yeah, check it out. Let me get back to me on that one. Nice. That's that's one I gotta check out. Cause I'll be honest with you, I do not keep up with a lot of like modern horror. I just I don't know. I just don't. Cause for the most yeah. part, it rarely ever lives up to the billing. It's all CGI bullshit. It's uh, a jump. Oh scare yeah, none shit. of that. Yeah, none of that in this movie. It is all. Yeah. It's it's an atmospheric slow burn type. Yeah, I think you would actually dig it, Jeff. Knowing the stuff that you like. Cool, cool, cool. All yeah. right, Taylor. Well, Tyler, Taylor, Taylor. <laughs> Hang on. I just want to explain what I just did there. I am buying a Taylor acoustic guitar in a couple <laughs> of weeks. That is gonna blow your fucking minds, boys. It's like the top of the line Taylor, but I was just so excited when I saw Tyler. I said Taylor. That's what it was. <laughs> That's my excuse. <laughs> no way is the beer. Not a chance. It might be the it's not the beer at all. Not at all. Have you guys seriously, have you guys seen me fucked up before? I yes. have it. <laughs> Last what? Saturday. No comment. What? <laughs> I wasn't even on last Saturday. What are you talking about? Was All I comments, on? yes. Wait, <laughs> Devin. <laughs> was I on last Saturday? What was I doing? Oh, no, last Saturday. I wasn't even on last Saturday. 
Sunday was the uh, fucking prog metal thing. Come on now. You have only <laughs> seen me drunk like this one other time when Marty Worm was around, and that was like t- almost three years ago. So kiss my ass, bitches. Anyway, go ahead, Tyler. <laughs> well, a couple of the other guys already pulled out their like massive birthday streamer link. Like Their you know, massive what? It, the birthday streamer alien and th- no, the full oh, anthology. Right. Yeah. So, I have my version of it, the Blu-ray right. one, but it's just, but oh. it's just the first four movies, because that's really all you need, and you only really need the first two. That's really true, just yeah. the really probably just the first one. Although I did like Alien Three, I like the bleak atmosphere of Alien Three. But anyway, I want like to show this just because, as as the other guys already said, the first Alien movie, you know that. There again is one of those things where you you never see the creature until the very end, and it's just purely. I mean, yeah, there's the chest burst root scene and all that, but it it's it's mostly psychological. Like you know, and um, what's his ass is in the air duct. Oh, and, and actually, admittedly, like I go back and watch that movie now. That chick annoys the shit out of me. Oh, Lambert, <laughs> he's on top, and just crying through the whole fucking thing and it's like <laughs> bitch shut up like <laughs> you're not making things easier but since everyone else already shared alien um i'm gonna share one more recent ish one that i actually really enjoyed you know kind of kind of goofy monster stuff but good scares and whatever and the mist oh oh yeah, yeah. the happiest oh, ending to any movie <laughs> oh, <my laughs> it was so first time okay i got a little funny story about this so a group of us, um, they were having like get together at my old apartment or whatever, and and all of us. It was the first time we'd seen this movie. Like one of us rented the DVD or bought the DVD or whatever, and we probably sat in silence for like fifteen minutes after that ending. We're just like, oh yeah, <laughs> what the fuck, dude? That, you're full, that was you're so full as crushed up. after that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, it was like. But then come to find out that that's not how it was written in the store in the short story, and it's like, oh, oh. that kind of that kind of sucks, but. <laughs> You, you got to check it out in black and white. You got to watch the black and white version. Oh, it's way shit. better. Oh shit, that would be yeah. way fucking cool. Yeah, it gives it like yeah, a fifties monster feel. Yeah. Well, that that reminds me. Um, there's a movie I, I wanted to dig out for this, but it's I have my garage is it's like a bomb went off in there. I got boxes cool. and just <laughs> bullshit stacked everywhere. But I have like a little collection of VHS tapes. Um. So one I I wanted to share was the original 1963, The Haunting. Oh, great movie. Good movie. And the the acting's campy, but like, fuck, dude, the scary scenes were scary as shit. That's scary, baby. Oh, dude. And there was like legit jump scares in that movie, too. Yeah. Like, but. Just just that door bending. Julie uh, Julie Christie, right? Yeah. Well, the the one scene in The Haunting that always will stand out is um, the two gals are in the room and it's just like, wait, did you hear that? And it's like that slow pan around the room for like five minutes. And there's no music, no sound, no nothing. And then when you think everything's all done and then all of a sudden just chaos, like shit banging on the walls. And what, I mean, like, I don't know. Like I, I, I talk about that movie to a number of people and they're just like, Oh, you mean like the one with Catherine Zeta Jones in it? I was like, no, fuck that. No, That remake was fucking trash. Terrible. <laughs> so bad. But yeah. So yeah, those are two more. Then I think everyone else already talked about the other ones I have in my stack, but all right. Um, hang on, I'm just checking something here. All right. Uh, so in keeping with the mist, uh, don't we have to talk about the fog? Oh shit, yeah. Um, man, if John Carpenter's masterpiece is the thing, this is really close with Halloween, right? I, I it's right there, man. It's one and one A. I love the Prince of Darkness too. That's great. Oh, uh, I love the Mouth of Madness. I mean, I love all Carpenter for the most part. Uh, but man, this one has a little something, something, right? It's just I don't know. There's, it's it's just the whole sort of vibe of this thing. It's very eighties feeling, right, or late seventies, because this was nineteen eighty, so it was probably shot in seventy nine. 79 80 and uh man you got you've got um shit 
Adrian Barbeau. Oh, yeah. Anyone? Adrian Barbeau? Oh, yeah. Huh? Swamp Back Thing? In. Does anybody remember Swamp Thing? Yeah. I do. Um, also, you've got Jamie Lee Curtis in yeah. this one as well. And um, and they all want yeah. to fuck Tom Atkins. What's that? And they all want to fuck Tom Atkins. It's the mustache, <laughs> <Yeah>. dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know, man. I, I, I love this film. Again, I'm a carpenter whore, so I like pretty much everything he does. But this one, this one is, man, it's right, yeah, it's right there below the thing. I think it's well done. It's creepy. It's fucking atmosphere. It's super atmospheric, right? Um, you just you kind of feel that that impending dread all around you. Uh, Matt's Matt's like me, me, me. Show the. <laughs> Uh, there it is. Nice. Cool. Yeah. yeah, and actually, uh, I showed a little while back, I a couple weeks ago. Uh, that all works amazing. Yeah, that's... I showed my gutter garbs, the thing shirt, but now I've got a fog shirt on on order that's coming in too. Um, really well done, man. Just so well done. So fantastic movie. Love it. So, all right, everybody, say hello. To Noah, not Nate. Nate, not Noah. Noah, That's Nate. That's a long Nate, name. Nate, Can we just Noah. call him Noah? Let's just call him Noah. All right. Let's just call him N for short. Uh, What's fine. up, buddy? How you doing? Uh, good. I'm actually kind of mad that I wasn't here about like an hour ago because um. We started oh. shit. Oh, look at that. What is that? Uh, box set. Oh, look at you. Yeah. I got it on sale for fifty bucks, and the actual price was like a hundred. Nice. Has all this stuff. It's got the little very cool. There too. All right, nicely done, man. That's what do awesome. you got? Uh, we'll let you run through five, and we'll do another round, and we'll let you blast right. off with five more. How's that sound? What do you got? Uh, I also got um. I even got some comic books too. The Walking Dead. Oh shit! Great. Oh, yeah, shit. Of course. Oh, Actually, oh, I... it's funny. It's no. funny you bring that up. I stopped to get beer tonight. Not that anyone would notice, of course. But um, <laughs> but I was talking to a dude. He was wearing uh, a shirt with uh, what's his name? Neiman Nigan Neiman Negan 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 with uh, Lucille Battle. I said, Are "You still watch that show?" And he's like, "Nah, I haven't watched it for a while. It's all kind of different series now." I have not watched that show since they beat Glenn's brains in with Lucille. That's how far that goes back. So, what, 15, 16, something like that? But I loved the first early couple years when – who was the guy that ran the prison? Was that the governor? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And you had had Rick Grimes. After Rick Grimes left, I was kind of like, eh, I'm not into it anymore. So, But cool, cool, nice. He came back. Yeah. But the comic is completely different than the show. Like the show is, it? is it's great. A separate entity, basically. Yeah. Honestly, and, one of the best comics ever made, really. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. They tend to deviate. Like that show The Boys does the same thing too. It's like, mm-hmm. I don't know anything voice. about the comics. Great. Sorry. I'm old. I don't read. <laughs> All right. What you got so, next? I also got um this. Oh, nice. there you go. Was oh, that a NECA figuring? Yeah. Dude, NECA makes the best shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think this one also is too. Yeah, on the bottom. What a pie for a, a job there. <laughs> uh, Very bad. nice. Nice. Your old bag head. Now, I don't have a CD or not a CD, a DVD for this, but um, I'm just going to show you a picture of it. Uh oh. We lost you. We lost you. Visual wise. There we go. Oh, there it is. Gates of Hell. I like that title better. Yeah, I do too. Christopher Lee. No, that's Fulci, dude. Oh, that's Fulci? You're thinking of City of the Dead. I'm City. Yeah, City of the Dead. Sorry. Yeah, that's the one where the chick barfs her fucking insides out inside of the car. And everyone keeps squeezing the back of the head. Because that's the I soft, the spongy part of the skull. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. 
What else you got, man? Um, I, again, I also don't got the the DVD, but um, oh, it's not gonna let me show it. But um, the Dawn of the Dead. Ah, great one, man. Great mm-hmm. one. I again, have the uh, um, DVD set of that. Yeah. Yeah, I remember who said Suspiria earlier, but Goblin. Every movie that they do a soundtrack to is awesome. Yep, agree, man. Goblin's the shit. Actually, I'll show something relative to Goblin that one Rick, the dreadful one, gifted me a while back. I'll show that before we wrap up tonight. So, um, hey, one thing to note here, Nick, you are, or Nick, Noah, you are, sorry, I was thinking about, never mind. Um, Noah, you're really into um, a lot of technical metal and technical death metal. So talk about a couple of bands you really dig. Uh, well, I, I like the, um, you know, the proto band. You might know of them, Rush. <laughs> no, I never heard of them. I never heard. What What's are the they like? Of Rush. What do they sound like? They're kind of like, um, old Canada. Like, I thought they were from Germany. Is Weird. that a bunch of old men from Japan? Yeah. Uh, that, I've heard of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but um, Siege is even also. They're a newish kind of one I've been into. Yep. Um, and then leaning on the death metal side, like Gore Guts and Blooded Science, all in the prog metal Ooh. thing on my list. Blooded Science is awesome. Yeah, very cool, man. You're into some uh, cool bands. And uh, Noah kind of contacted me and said, hey, man, I, I dig. I don't know what, what it was that you liked that I did. I, was it the Masvidal or Atheist stuff? I can't remember. Uh, you hit me up and you're like, "Hey, you should uh, should check in on Watchtower or uh, yeah. Jason McMaster." And I looked into it, and bam! Like a, a couple days later, Jason and I hooked up. So that was very cool. So mm-hmm. I'll move on from you, and we'll come back. You can uh, regroup and get your last couple of things together. And uh, but it's cool having you. Anybody? Uh, anybody got any questions for uh, Noah, Nate? I mean Nick. I mean whatever. Uh, um, <laughs> what's your, oh, what's your you favorite watch, food? <laughs> <laughs> Is <Any> yogurt? <laughs> Is right, it the uh, stuff? We're going back to Tom. We're going back to Tom for uh, another All right. uh, round. All right. Well, we'll we'll do a segue uh, since Noah brought up Cit- City of the Living Dead. Yeah, there you uh, go. So one mention is that uh, Swedish gore grind band Regurgitate. Yep, has an album cover, a compilation, uh, still of the girl barfing up her guts. I uh, I uh, showed it in a stream recently with uh, Metal Meltdown. Oh, okay, sixty five yeah, tracks on that thing too. Yeah, I don't actually own it, but um, and. So a an American seventies American movie that always reminded me of this. So basically, to me, this is uh, this is basically a zombie movie in terms of like zombies taking over, uh, rising from the dead and taking over a small town. But it's always had just a weird uh, Lovecraftian vibe. And there's also the the town is uh, what the hell is it called? It's Dun- named after yeah Dunwich. It was named after it had some. Lovecraft reference. So much horror, right? <clears throat> yeah. So there's like uh, just kind of a, it's a basically a zombie movie, but there's a weird Lovecraftian feel to it. And another movie like that from the U.S. 1974 is Messiah of Evil. So mm-hmm. basically, this woman goes to a a small uh, California seaside town to try to find her father, and there's just a weird shit happening and then people are turning into zombies uh and and attacking the town but there's just a lot of like creepy atmospheric things and i think this was uh based or or at least loosely ripped off from hp lovecrafter's uh story uh shadows over insmith i think is the name of it yeah right where about uh this creepy stuff on uh in a seaside town 
but but there's it sort of sort of builds to a, a zombie attack uh in the the last act um this always just had a kind of a unique really unique atmosphere and it just it's so well captures like a small like if you were stuck for overnight at a small california coastal town I, this is the best way i can describe it like it just and it like just just feels like it's taking place over you know a single night yeah and, mm-hmm. and um but I, the, yeah this always struck me as really unique and then the director of this went on to do howard the duck <laughs> no way <laughs> which you would you would never know because this is very artistic for a low budget howard's kind movie. of a horror movie Horror, horror movie of the early early seventies. I do like there's, that movie. There's, there's there's the the duck breasts. If you remember that, you see the like the naked oh, uh, the yep. duck, duck girl. So you see her duck boobs. So that's I duck mean, that, breasts. Woo! That, that yeah. Stop that's, talking about duck boobs, please. Uh, that you know disturbing certainly. Um, but yeah, this is a this is a cool one. And like I said, it always kind of reminded me of like a American version of city of the living dead or the closest equivalent anyways nice man that's one i've never heard of actually so i've I seen that cover it. before sort that out <clears throat> og press what's up are you awake yes you gotta do this man ah, yeah. Oh, yeah yeah gotta do it gotta do it you gotta essential do it. um i mean what can you say about this movie um ryan you know, is so good in it man Oh wait, Margo we... Kidder, I mean, the Satanic Panic. Uh, I mean, thousand schools that followed. I, so just based on you know, um, the story of what happened in the house. I kind of believe that it did happen. Yeah, I, don't I believe, do too. I don't believe everything, but I believe that. Um, there was something that happened in that house. Whether it was satanic or not, whether there was a gateway to hell in the basement, I mean, that's that's up to, to skeptics. But, um, I mean, you have to think, man. If you, if you bought a house, and, and it was such a lower price because something happened there, because of the fail murders, I mean... Something, I mean, if you watch the documentaries with him, he, he does kind of talk about how, like, something talked to him. And um, that kind of gets the uh, the mythos of this, this movie made. Um, it does, is it a, is, did it really happen? Who knows, man. But this movie and Amityville 2, um, I mean, these two movies kind of interject. I didn't pull Amityville 2. It's way more sleazy than this, more of a <laughs> grindhouse movie than this yeah. movie. Yeah. Um, but this movie, I just watched it recently. And uh, you, you can, the acting in this and the, the kind of um, the panic that it ensues really, uh, it, 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 it gets us. This movie is, um, it's just a classic, man. Um, that's the one with James Roland, right? Yeah, this yep, Roland. James Roland, Margot yeah. Kidder. Margot Kidder. I, I'm not trying to do a Roland thing because I just picked the car, but <laughs> no, but I mean, you know, the whole story behind that is the guy that killed his family, right? You're right, yeah, yeah, and the, he's, in, the, uh, he's still son. alive, right? In jail, I think, yeah, he's in jail because yeah. he killed his whole family. Like pushing eighty or something like that. Yeah, it's a trip, man. Might have banged his sister. <laughs> oh, that's part. That's part two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Part two is fucked up. Yeah. yeah. Part two, I think, is actually a way sleazier movie. And who's the fucking dad in that? The guy that just passed. Oh, uh, uh, Bert. Um, Bert Young. Bert Young. Bert Young. Yeah. Bert Young. Yeah. He just died, yeah. right? Didn't yeah. he just die? He's got to be the like sleaziest father in any fucking. Oh movie. yeah. <laughs> and, and the incest stuff. Yep. Yeah. The incest stuff, but this Certainly, movie is yeah. uh, very. Um, it's it goes along and 
and I think at the time, especially like the whole vibes of it and the house and the pigs and everything, man, it's just super scary. It was one of the first movies I ever saw on VHS, and I think it still holds up to today. The babysitter scene is a little kind of like over, it's like overdone. Like, I remember seeing it as a kid. I was like, oh, shit, this is scary. Now I watched it again. I'm like, it's not that scary. It's just a light. It's just dark in there. You're fine. Yeah. (laughs) But uh, I get get it. But, um, yeah, man, this movie, classic, man. Classic 70s horror. It can't touch this, man. That's another one. When it did these sequels, man, but it watered it down, man. It's like. Yeah. Part one and part two is where you're at on this. Part three has some cool stuff. The, that was the about Amity- 3D, right? Well, which what which one has the haunted lamp? Is that part four? Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> and then there was the clock one that was five, yeah. six. Yeah, then they stopped all the like haunted stuff. That was the remake Hi, with Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> Yo, yeah. yeah Remember that one? Let's go. Uh, yeah, the thing about Amityville is like he's got that hair, it always reminds me of Brad Delp. Like, just you know, that was the style, everybody had the fro <laughs> going the on. The cool thing about this one, dude, is like, yeah, James's hair in the beginning is like totally feathered, and then as it goes on, he has like this weird, like, weird, uh, perm stuff that's like totally <laughs> <Yeah>. disheveled. <laughs> it's like, what just happened to him? That he's is, always like trying to start the fire. Bob Ross tried to keep it going for years because it'll come back. I'll just it's not gonna go away. Dennis, Dennis desperately does not want to stop talking about Amityville horror. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I just put my mask on because I'm much prettier that way. I'll, I'll do a movie and an album uh pair. Oh, okay. So, Here we go. We got a Rick sighting. A Rick sighting. Okay, so this one reminds me a lot of Evil Dead. So you guys know, if you watch Evil Dead 1, Evil Dead 2, Evil Dead 2 feels pretty much like a remake of Evil Dead 1. It's kind of like the same movie. I feel like this particular movie, it's kind of like like that with the sequel. It's kind of a remake of the first one. So I'm talking about Argento, uh, Demons. It's had to be brought up. You guys talked about Messiah Evil, right? Which had the theater scene. Uh, This is all theater scene. It's all theater, (laughs) right? (laughs) Uh Love the soundtrack, love the goofiness of it, and just the way people just start to turn and all that stuff. So it's kind of claustrophobic in a way, too. Uh, well, until they exit the theater, but yeah, and uh, yeah, it kind of left you kind of shocked in the end. Not not that much, but it's a little campy, but still still pretty good. Love this movie. Uh, just just Claudio's uh, just uh, music in general. So this is not the same movie, but it's you know sync composer. Uh, uh, so still around. Uh, so I, I just showed because somebody showed Superior earlier, and so this is the prog rock version, which is the uh, oh, 45 cool. anniversary, uh, which kind of turns it into a um, because you know it's more of a passive listen when you listen to these soundtracks. And this one kind of turns it into more of, a, well, of an active ah. listen, it's pretty cool. Yeah, hey, uh, actually, is, that the, uh, is that the Sacred Bones or the Waxwork? Uh, this one is. Uh, Rust Blade. Who? Rust, Rust Blade. They yeah. put out. Uh, they, they put out yeah. stuff like this. I know they. They. I don't. I know they did editions. They do like DVDs and comics and okay, a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. Uh, They're really cool. Like, yeah, it's actually a pretty pretty well done. Obviously, you know, it's, I mean, it's, he knows what he's doing. Uh, which is you know, his work. Uh, came in this nice little red variant thing, but thought at least at least mention it. But, wow, uh, one of my favorites, man. The uh, the second one track rules. Uh, the second one had had uh, our gentle's daughter, right? I think that was her first appearance in any in anything. Might at have the been, time. yeah. Yeah, but uh, it's yeah. it's a Liberto Baba movie, not a Dario yep. true, Argento. true, true. Uh, yeah, film by. Yeah, it's just kind of a marketing purposes. Yeah, yeah. the soundtrack's yeah. a little weird to that one too. You've got like Motley Crue and Accept and Saxon and really folks. Yeah, yeah, it's got like yeah, a metal, and, and 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 part two has like a really awesome post punk goth soundtrack. Yeah, so it's got like Dead Can yeah. Dance and uh, the Cult, Jean Loves Jezebel. It's a nice t- snapshot two. of that time period and the, 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 yeah. the kind of music that was under. It's a cool soundtrack. 
Yeah. Demons. Both those movies are good. All Both right. A lot of Is that it, Rick? Are you good? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, hold on. Well, hey, Jeff, you might have to run through my last four here since they've already been mentioned. Plus, I'm going to get out here because I'm getting a little sleepy. Well, you bastard. You. I know. You're such a whiny little puss. All right. Um, is that a movie that that uh, Ernie Hudson was in, or was that? <laughs> was that no, you're, you're such a whiny little puss. That was Ernie Hudson. It's, yeah. a, it's a Morgan Freeman movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, this one obviously was going to get brought up a lot. Yeah, I, you I, I, knew I, I was about ready to bring that up, but we are. Oh yeah, yeah this was... actually Devin already brought it up. So you got the nice media book, and yeah, I, mean, that got... I love the part where Garrett Morris is in that. <laughs> the Garrett great. Morris scene is awesome. <laughs> he, he's he's got the stuff. Um, this ball have been the very very good. Yeah, I mean, absolute classic movie, one of the best horror movies ever made. One of my favorite movies, period, just in terms of acting, directing. Like, like seriously, though, is that still one of the scariest, real scariest movies? I, I went back to theaters to see it uh, when they re-released it with the spider walk, the crab walk down the stairs, right. and it about freaked out my friend that was sitting next to me, so I tapped her on the shoulder. I was like, hey, what'd you think of that? And she fucking screamed so loud. <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> uh, and then... Poltergeist, another another super old. <laughs> oh, yeah, the old clip DVDs. Yeah, look at that. Look at it's even like a two sided one's widescreen. Oh, one's was this not. made back in like 1972 or what? Oh man, <laughs> those things are old as hell. They still play though. But uh, yeah, one of my favorite movies, just in terms of just 80s movies. Great cast, great acting. Uh, great you can. Beth Williams, hot milf. Hot milf, brawlessness. I'm for it. Yeah. Um. But uh, you, know, you can definitely tell the, the uh, different points where directors were kind of shifted between Spielberg and uh, yeah. Toby Hooper. But yeah. Uh, yeah, no, this is this is a great movie, and this was one of the reasons why the PG thirteen uh, rating exists. Yeah, yeah, this was this was uh, too much for PG. Too many screaming kids, and you know, yeah. Same thing with uh, Raiders. No, not Raiders. I'm sorry. Uh, Temple, of uh, Doom. Temple of Doom. Temple of Doom. Yeah, oh, face wow. face ripping. Yeah, the face trip. Oh, the mirror scene. Yeah, yeah American oh, Werewolf. God, yeah. American Werewolf. Yeah. Yeah, one of the best werewolf movies ever. Their werewolf design is still probably the freakiest, most gnarly looking thing. Yeah, uh, that Baker. cover leaves a lot to be desired. Yeah, he's no, fine. He's just <laughs> yawning. That's um, plan. It's a very, very sweaty too. It's a very sweaty yeah, transformation. Very sweaty. But uh, you know, it's it's one of those where I get a good dose of humor in there too. I like dark humor in horror movies. Uh, but yeah, special effects and werewolf transformation scene and oh uh, man, that scene's so killer, dude. And honestly, uh, Griffin Dunn, Griffin Dunn is one of the best characters in here. Is this progressively rotting buddy who haunts? Yeah, him. yeah, yeah. This this movie rolls. And Gr Griffin and then, is, is the brother of Dominique Dunn, who died from. Oh, really? Yeah. So you, oh. just, you just mentioned Poltergeist, the 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 that's brother. Yeah, sister, the, the, the older sister. That. Yeah, the elder sister who died. That's Dominique Dunn. That's that's yeah. the sister yeah. of Griffin Dunn. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. Holy shit! And then um, I mean, it's a three piece, but pretty sure we know which movie I'm bringing up here. Right. Uh, the Shining. Like one of my favorite Kubrick films. It's yep. haunting and settling, great acting, uh, right down to the fucking cigarette ash on fucking <laughs> Shelley Duvall's cigarette. That yeah. thing fucking held on. Like that is the most impressed, most impressive cigarette ash I think I've seen in any movie. But uh, yeah, and, everything about this movie and the Creamy, scene, haunting. the scene when Jimmy Walker gets killed. Remember that, or was it? No, it's Scatman Carruther. Uh, yeah, Scatman. Scatman, 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 yeah. yeah. The dude, he just pops up from behind the fucking <laughs> pillar and acts right, right, right in front of Jeff. I was like, man, and yeah, like I, I had actually read the book. It's like, oh, he'll be fine. Nope. <laughs> For the red rum scene, red rum, red rum. Red oh, red rum, rum's red great. Rum. I mean, you know, chopping down the door, the the elevator full of blood. Oh, um, the elevator full of blood is awesome. Whatever the fuck was going on in that room with the bear and the well dressed gentleman. 
it's, it's still <laughs> yeah. a mystery. Um, maybe that's where furry porn came from. Like that one moment, like, Hey, Could be. that's my kink. Bestiality. Uh, but yeah, absolutely classic movie. And I mean, yeah, the other two in here are absolutely awesome too. Cause Cooper rules. And yeah, that's, that's all the stuff I had. And most that's people to call them out real early on. So I was like, well, fuck, I'm just going to go out in a high note and go over these awesome movies that everyone already says they love. Nice, Nick. <laughs> All right, Nick. Thanks for uh, yeah. thanks for, thanks for having me, guys. Us tonight, uh-huh. it was fun. Y'all rule, and uh, catch you later. Yeah. All right, catch you later, man. See you around, man. All right, and then there were nine. All right, uh, Matt, how you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, let's go with my fourth movie. I could have picked From Beyond. I love Stuart Gordon films to death, but I had to go with Reanimator. Yeah, fantastic movie. Uh, Barbara Crampton can do no wrong, even on a, a table with a head going. You know the scene. I don't even oh know. God, <laughs> yes! <laughs> Amazing movie. Um, it's based off a story by H.P. Lovecraft. I believe it's Herbert West Reanimator. If I'm not mistaken. Yep. Uh, yep. Very yep. cool stuff. Um, I also have the soundtrack. There it is. Is that the new one from Waxworks? Right. That's this is the new. original Waxwork one. So what oh, happened was is that. They didn't have it in press for the longest time. I tracked it on Discog, spent way too much money, and then two weeks later, they reissued it. They reissued, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, they did. I'm going to grab one for uh, Brian and I because, yeah, I got to have that one. That's a good one. Nice. How many many soundtracks do you think you own, album-wise? Somewhere between 80 and 100. Wow. On vinyl. Holy shit. Yeah. A little bit of an obsession. A little bit. And that's the, uh, what, the DVD, right? Yeah, DVD. Yeah, I have the... Um, Bare Bones. I don't, know the, I don't know who did it. Shout or whatever did the steel book. I have the steel book of it. Yeah. yeah. Probably probably Shout, maybe. I don't remember. Who. Maybe. I can't remember. Well, what would be... Yeah, it's probably I'll, I'll Any, pull it up here. Anyone have this millennial edition? It's like I do. I have that. Yeah, it's I've awesome. Seen that huh? green one before. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I used to. I used to have both of those editions. I have the Arrow Blu-ray now. Well, well, I'm on. There's a precursor to this where I'm like, this guy had to watch this movie. It's kind of freaked me out when I was a kid. Remember Silent Rage? No. It has a bit, it has, it has a bit of that vibe where like the guy kind of you know it's retransformed. And it's a little invincible. This is Chuck's horror movie. <laughs> it was to me like, when I watched it's it. Like, time. It's, like, it's like Chuck Norris versus Michael Myers, basically. Yeah. It's awesome. kind of cool. That's awesome. That's great. I, I, have, I have the VHS too. I think I'll it's uh, Studio Canal that has, um, or Arrow, one of those two has uh, Reanimator. I'm not sure. But uh, all right, Todd, what do you got, man? All right. Uh, much like Nick. I'm just going to roll through my last few here because I'm getting real tired. Bye, so, go ahead. Uh, a VHS because I don't have because oh, I don't boy, have DVD, look at that. Martin. But one of my favorite uh, George Romero movies. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like a that's cool a good one. Book. Cool. That's a good one. I don't think anybody's shown yet. No. 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 Never. That's, like that's why I kind of picked that picked that one because I didn't figure many people show it and i'm gonna go with from beyond yeah great uh, movie man it's so probably, weird lovecraft or two of my favorite Jordan, Jordan movies this would be number two yeah uh, i'm gonna go a little uh more modern here because all mine's been older with uh mandy oh yeah it's awesome i've not seen that one it's great uh it's a, it's a trip. Uh, it's, it's really out there. Uh, really fun. I don't really even know how to describe it, to be honest. Yeah, that's a tough one to just throw out there, you know. <laughs> it's awesome, man. Uh, the boys. Hell yeah. This is Lovecraftian, for sure. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're in burnout. I've never heard of that one. Hospital. It's not bad. Like a, a portal to another world with tenant 
technical god, you know, uh, very Lovecraftian, very cool. Very drippy. Oh, See you, Glenn. Cool. Later, Glenn. Um, that's a good question, oh, Devin. Eh, they're not that great. They're all right. Yeah, they're I can't great. watch Pride at all. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. I, 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 I don't. I don't like either the either yeah. of the sequels that that yeah. much. I mean, Bride Bride is okay, but I I wouldn't necessarily bother with it. Yeah. Oh yeah, Tom Savini, right, right, right. Go ahead, Todd. Sorry. That's all right. Uh, uh this has been great. Uh, with a better uh, connection, use my phone or something next time, or just upgrade this laptop. <laughs> no, I think you know what I got to be honest with you, dude. I think you got to get a um, a Wi-Fi uh, amplifier. Yeah. Because I think it's your Wi-Fi. I don't really. I I don't think it's the uh, laptop. Although I could be wrong, but um, but yeah, it's. I think it's a Wi-Fi signal. It keeps sort of dropping and coming back in and dropping. So yeah, man, we appreciate you being here. I I kind of feel bad because I couldn't really like engage you a lot because there's a lot of cutouts. But we appreciate you coming on, man. Yeah, thanks for coming on, man. It's been fun. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That I would have talked a lot more if I. If I knew it was not going to cut out on me. Yeah, yeah. So still had a good time though. Yeah, if you get it, if you get that sorted out, let us know, and we'll, um, you know, hopefully, you know, I got some issues I'm dealing with on a physical health side, but hopefully, uh, we do another episode of this in, I don't know, January or something like that, and uh, we, we kind of get back into it and uh, have a whole. Yeah, I love having large panels and just talking about a lot of cool movies. And what's cool is we've got a lot of overlap, but not a lot of overlap. There's been a fair amount of, like, really new suggestions and stuff like that. And that's what it's all about, like, turning people on to cool stuff, right? But I was trying to pick ones that I really love that I didn't think would be super popular. (laughs) Nice, man. All right, well, Todd, yeah. you take care of yourself, and uh, I'll be in touch, man, all right? All right, brother. Later, well. Later. All right. So we are, where are we? Uh, let me just do one thing here. Uh, we are at, I think we're at Eli. Sure. I picked another uh, modernish one. Um, I got it's 10 years old now. Um I don't know. I know like found footage horror has kind of like become a bad word with a lot of people, but I think this is a cool one. Uh, House is October built. Uh, Never heard of that one. Yeah, yeah, it's got a sequel too that's all right. But uh, what's cool about this is that it's like a, it actually came from a documentary. These people put a documentary together about they traveled across the U.S. going to all trying to find the coolest haunts they could find. So they took that documentary and they like stitched it together with uh, and they made like a horror movie out of it. And it it Believe it or not, it's seamless and it works really well. Um, so the movie is just about basically them going to these haunts, but then they end up finding like some nefarious characters uh, that they get involved with. And they actually start going to these haunts that are actually with people that are out to hurt people. Um, so it's, it's actually pretty, pretty scary, I think. Um, maybe I'm a weenie, but uh, it's got a pretty terrifying ending. And it, it's just a cool concept, you know, the fact that it came from a documentary. So... If you, if you don't think found footage is this, you know, all bad, which, you know, you guys brought up Blair Witch and stuff like that. I think this kind of can hang with movies like that. One of the better found footage horror movies, I think. I'd never nice. even heard of that one. <clears throat> That's for yeah, I've never awesome. heard of it. I don't see it brought up very often. Yeah, right. Yeah. Never, I, never saw it ever talked about. That's kind of wild. Yeah, I don't think I have either. I think it's really good, though. Tyler. Taylor, Tyler, Taylor, Tyler, what do you got? <laughs> uh, I got one. Again, not like your classic traditional horror movie, but um, more of that you know, intensity or just more of that intense, bleak type of thing. And that's a 28 Days Oh, later. that's a great movie, dude. Yeah. Dude, well, man, like the idea of the rage virus and like sprinting zombies or sprinting, yeah. whatever it is. You want to call these creatures 
I was like, okay, that's legit freaky as fuck. Like, you know, the slow lumbering things that, you know, just, you know, won't, won't stop, can't stop until you take them out kind of thing. It's like, okay, that's, that's creepy, but like something that can absolutely run you down. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, they kind of steal that from, you know, the, uh, the Omega man. Yeah. It's kind of like the original or actually what was, uh, Eli, what was the original story? The uh, um, Book of Eli? Right? <laughs> no, that was with Danzel Washington. <laughs> yeah, but that's that was a take on the original story by um, Charles Beaumont. Oh, Charles oh, Beaumont oh, wrote you know. that story in the 50s, right? Oh, like the Omega Man? or? Yeah, the Omega Man. They're yeah. all kind of uh, a take on the virus that gets loose and... That's true. You know, kills people and blah blah blah. And then there was, I don't know if anybody remembers this, but um, and I, it's one of my favorite movies. And Dennis, What's I know you know this one, yeah, The Last definitely. Man on Earth with <laughs> yeah, fucking uh, Vincent Price. Vincent Price. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. dude, fucking awesome flick because it's basically Vincent Price most of the movie, right? Yeah, yep. or a good portion of it, half of it, anyways. And yeah. it's kind of all a take on. That Beaumont, the Book of Eli, I think was the name of the song. I believe, or the name of the song, name of the story, a short story. Well, maybe and, it was, huh? Maybe it was. Maybe you're right. I think it was. And Beaumont ended up doing stuff with Rod Serling on Twilight Zone. He he wrote short stories like uh, Occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge, where the guy drops in the fucking. He's being hung, but he's he's make believing that he's still alive and he's talking to his wife and all that shit. Great writer, man. But I'm 90% sure that came from Charles Beaumont and book of, I think it was called book of Eli, I think. Um, but that, that flick is right from that Tyler. Yeah. No, it's, so. it's cool. I just like, I don't know. I like the way things were set up and just kind of that, um, well, it's that Danny Boyle style. So like, you know, kind yeah. of that almost like handheld camera type shit. Like, it, I don't know. That yeah, church it's, scene. Like they, it's like they did. Um, he was uh, train spotting, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, if I'm not wrong, I think 28 Days Later has massive attack uh, on the soundtrack, right? Yes, I believe so. I think. I think. Yeah, it's been a minute since I've seen it, but yeah. But that no, was just a that, great. That, that kind of documentary style, like yeah, you know, documentary, just, yeah, yeah, and yeah. that that yeah. that that movie is killer, man, yeah, yeah. But yeah, All I right. just I like the setup, like that opening, the opening sequence. You're just like, fuck, okay, and then yeah. that church scene, that church scene, actually, that oh, one gets yeah. me, like that because that one's so intense. But but no, that's the kind of the stuff I like. Just that another yeah. one that comes to so mind too. It says, "It's uh, I am Legend," which has that whole zombie out outbreak thing right, going on. That's the yeah. Book of Eli thing. Yep. Yeah. 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 But yeah, just that kind of sit on the edge of your seat and like just wait for shit to happen, <laughs> whether or not it does happen. Yeah. But but no, like I I got into those kind of those styles of movie like because uh, growing up watching like Hitchcock like Hitchcock movies like like you never see you never really see what's going on, but it's just that that sense of anticipation and dread. Yeah. I guess the Rear yeah. Window. Yeah. Rear Window is campy as fuck, but that last thirty minutes, I was oh, first time I so saw good. it. I, First, first time I ever saw that as a kid, I was literally screaming at my TV at like three in the morning, waking my parents up, like, "Get the fuck out of that apartment!" Oh yeah, like, man. <laughs> vertigo, vertigo, same thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But All no, right. that's, that that's what set me. That's kind of what set me in those kind of movies, though. You guys talked about this. I have like I don't know five versions of this. I think I have the Digibook. I have the director's box set. Fuck, I don't know, man. I. I'm not even sure what I have. I have stuff that I haven't even opened, which is kind of weird when you think about it. And this one's like two versions. Uh, man, I mean, to me, this is still the scariest horror movie. Not because, like, I'm some devout Christian, because I'm not. Uh, <laughs> probably pretty much the antithesis of that. But it's just about that unknown, man, and that thing that, yeah, a lot of us had ingrained in our head like good, bad, God, yeah. Satan. That's and, still scary, I think. 
What's that? It's. I think it's still scary. Oh, it's still very scary. I mean, yeah. I'll tell you the scare. One of the scariest parts of this is because, you know, I've been through a lot of medical testing, as you guys, some of you guys, kind of know, and um, the part where Reagan goes in and has the brain. Uh, what what you have done, like a brain, like a, is it a somewhere a biopsy of her brain or something? Lobotomy. Lobo- no, it's not a lobotomy. <laughs> um, but man, that's scary, dude. Like, yeah. And you know the the parts where Max Van Von Cito, who's awesome in this movie, and yeah, um, you know him and and Father Karras when they're trying to drive out the demon, and and the part where the demon is speaking in tongues, man. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's it's eerie as hell. Oh, dude, it's. So fucked up. And praise, praise to one of the greatest directors ever. Oh, yeah. William Friedkin, who just died about a month and a half, two months ago. Man, yeah. this sorcerer to live and die in L.A. Oh, my God. So many great movies. But, yeah, mm-hmm. so that's that. And then I'm shocked. Nobody's talked about this, man. Oh, oh man. Shit. Good yeah. call. Roman Plus. Um it's coming. <laughs> man, come on, man. This fucking e- movie is so goddamn eerie at the end, man. It, and, you know, be it what it is with Polanski and... I was going to say, he's a bit of a scumbag. What's that? I say, he's a bit of a scumbag, even though he, he made... It's the way people yeah. talk about Varg or something, you know? It's like, yeah, it kind of is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh Man, this is such a movie that moves from such a lighthearted, almost beautiful love story to a dark, demented, satanic, fucked up movie, right? I mean, it's just man, the ending sequence in, in this when they when all, all the, the neighbors are all like, Oh, look, and, and then like they pull back the little thing and that the bait the the Satan baby is Satan, man. I mean, ah, and Mia Farrow, so vulnerable, so broken and scared, and you know, like overwhelmed with what is going on because she's been violated by Satan. It's man, come on, this fucking movie rules. And just yeah, as a you. note on Polanski, um, I don't watch a lot of his flicks. I don't. Um, I have. A Hamlet by him. I might have one or two others, but the other one that he did that I think was very well done was the Ninth Gate with Johnny Depp. Yeah, that's cool. And um, Frank Langella was it? Sounds no, right? No, who was the who was Satan in that? Thought it was. We'd have to look it up. I don't remember. I'll look it up. Um, but yeah, fucking Rosemary's Baby, man. Fucking killer movie. Just killer. Dennis, you awake? Yep. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> All right. Um, we'll do a couple more rounds and we'll get out of here, guys. Um, how about we we go to Nate? You'll have to unmute yourself, buddy. And I'll pull you up and Give Nate. us your, your last couple, dude. You mean Noah? Noah, <laughs> goddamn. <laughs> he says Nate right there. It's okay. All right. So I guess I think I have just three left. I don't have any like anything physical, but um, American Werewolf from London is a movie I love so much. And a movie I found out about whenever I was super young. And it's always scared me the scene of the um oh whenever you first see Jack for the first time. Which movie was it? I'm sorry. In American Werewolf from London. Oh yeah, great, great movie. Yep. Yeah. And uh, what else you got? Hmm. Exorcist, like everybody else has mentioned. I've grown up in a really Christian household and have you mm-hmm. and like all that stuff 
all that stuff hasn't really scared me, but whenever she's in the doctors and like the, the yeah. machine, that that's all like the stuff that's crazy because I go to the doctors a whole lot. Yeah. Whenever they put the shot like right here. Oh yeah, in her neck. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That I always look away from because it's just so that's, that's what I was thinking of when I brought that up. Yep, exactly. And uh, my last one is just a game. Okay. Um, it's um the games of uh, Resident Evil, which are also zombie games and stuff. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm not a yeah, gamer Crazy. guy. You have to talk to the other dudes that know gaming. That's a great I'm game. A, I'm an old Classic. fucker. I don't do the gaming thing anymore. Oh, well, it's, like, it's one of those movies too, like the more like action. Yeah, it was right. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, Nate. <coughs> thanks for coming on, or Noah. God, I keep calling <laughs> you Nate, dude. I don't know why I keep calling you Nate. I, 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 probably because you and Nate Beltram were always in the chat at the same time. But um, yeah, but I appreciate you jumping on, dude. And uh, Noah also has a top ten list and then some on the uh, Prog Metal Island. Uh, stream we did so he's got quite a few uh good picks on there actually a couple i didn't know about so very cool to have you on buddy and um i don't want to get you in trouble with mom so you should probably crash <laughs> but we'll right. have you on again we'll bring you in uh for something and uh good meeting you anybody got any uh final parting thoughts for nate or noah or nate or <laughs> noah or noah or nate? norman Norman, <laughs> just go to put a face with a name, you know. We see you in the comments. Just what's in the name, problem. right? Exactly. Yeah, it's always cool. So we appreciate you jumping in here, Noah, and uh, have a great night. All right, buddy. All right. See you. All right, dude. Peace out. Later. All right. Um, how many more rounds do we want to do? Yeah, I'm asking you guys. I'm getting tired, so I kind of want to just rapid fire my last three. All and right. I have Three honorable mentions and then a little collectible here. All right, I'll let you roll. Okay. My number three movie is my favorite werewolf movie ever. I know you guys talked about American Werewolf in London. That's my second favorite, but nothing for me tops the howling. Oh. Yeah, oh, that up next, damn it. yeah, definitely, without a doubt. Great movie. Howling. My number two movie, y'all mentioned it. Here it is again. It's the thing. Amazing. God, I love this movie. My number one, you just mentioned it, Jeff. Of course, it's Rosemary's Baby. Ah. I've seen the movie a hundred times or more, it feels like. I have dialogue so memorized. So evil, man. Of course. <laughs> Anyways, uh, three movies. I don't think I saw any one show, and I'm really tired, so maybe I slept through one. I don't know. Got to talk about Pieces. No, nobody mentioned it. Nope. Total Gore Fest is exactly what you think nice. it is. You need to see it. One of my favorite movies as a teenager, gory as hell. Wonderful ending. I won't ruin it for you. Never seen that one. Oh, you got to see it. I'm sure. Uh, of course, also, Return of the Living Dead. Woo! Comedy uh, or Punk rock zombies. <laughs> Great soundtrack as well. Yep. The 45 it's Grave song just beats in my head every time. I got the, oh, actually yeah. the record it's on because of this movie. It's not a costume. It's a way of life. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Punk rock is not is not a costume. <laughs> and I don't think anyone mentioned this. Maybe uh, Videodrome? No. No, we didn't. Yeah, we talked no, about Cronenberg. It's kind of on the fence because it's more sci-fi. I know, comedy, but it, it has a body cool, horror yeah. thing. It's Cronenberg. It's, yeah. Yep. So there's that. Well, the, the sequences where James Wood's reaching inside his uh, gut to pull out the gun and, yeah. He's yeah. got the he's got the gun attached to his arm that's grown into it. Yeah. Any uh soundtracks that you haven't shown that you wanted to show? Uh some I've shown on my channel before. See the prom night one? Oh nice. Yeah. That's pretty sweet. great. Um yeah, just quickly looking. I I've shown so much of this. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I kind of just flipping through it here. Mm -hmm. Uh you talked about uh mm -hmm. the Langella Dracula. I actually oh, yeah, have yeah, yeah. to it. Would have been. Pretty great. That's uh, okay. One That's collectible okay. I have, I just want to show one more thing, is my signed copy of Satan's Cheerleaders. No. Oh, <laughs> the director, Graydon wow. Clark, signed it for me. It says uh, to Matt, 
Happy birthday, uh, Satana, blessed be, great and Clark. <laughs> awesome. Nice. I love this. I, I had this movie since I was a teenager. I had it on VHS. I had it taped off, I think, cable or something before that. Then I found it in a clamshell box on VHS in a, in a rental store. I begged the guy to sell it to me. And I'm like, how many people have rented this movie? He's like, zero. I'm like, sell it. <laughs> he gave me for like $5. Nice. <laughs> so I actually have the clamshell of VHS. This thing even has cheerleaders. Yeah. Awesome. Great movie. All right, Matt. Hi. Hey, man. We appreciate you stopping in tonight. I hope you enjoyed yeah. it tonight. I did indeed. I had a good time. Yeah, yeah. And um, we'll have to connect on some future stuff and uh, Absolutely. You know, see how things go. I but love uh, the everybody, we did. So, yeah. Everybody, thank Matt for being here tonight. This is awesome. Aye, aye, Captain. Woo! And um, Matt, just do me a favor. Would you leave your actual street address in the chat so I can stop by and borrow some <laughs> records? Sure. Not a problem at all, Why right? Not? Sure. <laughs> keep, 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 all right, keep, man. We had a, we had a blast having you in, man. A lot of good stuff, and uh, we uh, we appreciate you, brother. Right on. Thanks, man. Bye, right, man. Peace out. All right, later. I do. Later, Matt. Cheers. All right. So, uh, how's everybody else doing? I'm good. Yeah. I only like I only have like one or two more. I could probably okay. plow through a few so that you know, just to kind of pace it up. Okay. Hang on one sec here. All right. Um. So where are we at? Uh. I guess Tom. We'll go back to you. We'll do um. Three more <laughs> rounds. That sound good with six of us. Uh, I I need to get out. I'm falling asleep. Okay, you want to run through uh, your stuff? Yeah, I'll just run through a couple. All right. Um, well, I also I have a Chinatown poster behind me. So I don't know if you. Yeah. What? Talking. Chinatown po or. <laughs> oh, okay. Chinatown poster. Roman plans. Yeah, right. Right. We're talking. Um. Okay. Talk about Devil Times Five. Hell yeah. 1970, I don't know that one. 1974. Leaf Garrett, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> um, hey, before you go any further, uh, hang on one sec, because I wanted to ask this earlier. Have any of you guys seen the Oliver Reed movie, The Devils? Yeah. yeah. Ken Russell. Does anybody own that? Um, I have it, not on not an actual case. I think yeah, I, I got to get that. I've heard that's one of the sickest fucking movies ever. But there's a lot of different versions of it, so Is you there? have to find like the uncut version. It's kind of hard to find. Okay, I have I like a, yeah that I I've heard is one of the weirdest, sickest, most fucked up like movies ever. Because it's what seventy one two somewhere in that range. I think, think seventy two. So. Yeah, something like that. All right, go ahead, Tom. Uh, so I saw this movie on TV as a kid, and I did not know the name of it until I found it in the um, maybe around 2005 on VHS. I finally figured out what movie it was. Um, but basically, <clears throat> the, these kids escape a uh, <laughs> mental asylum, and they and they get holed up with, or they they get. Uh, hold up with uh, just a group of adults at a winter house, um, like a big bear lake, I think. And it's there's a snowstorm, so they're sort of stuck at that at this winter house with these kids. And then the the kids start murdering the parents, and and but there's just something like really off and creepy about this movie because it's not really explained why the the other than like they were at a mental asylum, like why the kids are killing the parents. So it's, or not their parents, but the, the adults, it just, it's just sort of, it's, it, it just kind of has just this weird atmosphere where you, you don't really, uh, there's a, there's a, the lead kid in charge pretends to be a nun for some reason. And, um, it just feels like they're they just hate adults and they don't value their the lives of adults. They only care about their you know themselves kind of thing. 
so it, it gives it kind of like a bleak feeling because usually these type of movies they're possessed kids where like the devil possesses the kids so there's a reason why the kids are killing and that's the one that's not so much explained so that always creeped me out um and then i well we i don't think no, i'm surprised nobody talked about this at some point but night of the demons in terms oh, of a yeah, horror, yeah. this is like a quintessential halloween movie it's uh so it's it's sort of like uh hell night that um that dennis mentioned in terms of these kids going to this house where um that's supposed to be haunted and it's like uh uh a hazing ritual or something for college and then it's like evil dead where uh, everyone gets possessed and starts killing each other so it's very evil dead inspired and of course there's the the lead the goth girl angela who does the dance to um stigmata martyr by bajas that's sort of like oh, the, fam- yeah. the famous scene yeah uh and then Linnea quigley uh get naked multiple times of course wait a minute Linnea yes, quigley got naked really <laughs> i can't you had to see you had to see the unrated version <laughs> uh for all, all of that action and she wow. sticks, her, sticks her ass in the camera before she gets naked that's in an earlier so there's there's plenty of that mm. uh but this is always you know just a super super fun uh kind of evil dead knockoff and very halloween and then finally I'll, t- I'll talk about the movie that's been playing on the tv screen um this is the all the haunts be ours full core box set wow well, and um so there's a ton of movies in this i don't know if i can find it so the movie that's i've been playing is called v spirit of evil or v it's a russian uh witch horror movie from 1967 and it's based i don't know if it's like 14th or 15th century but the um it's just a uh i think i think a seminary student is trying to exercise this uh church like this witch is basically possessing this church and um the student is trying to exercise the witch basically over the course of three nights i think and then um it's sort of built slowly and then in the last act the witch like opens the gates to hell and there's all these monsters that come and attack and visually this movie is is super awesome um and 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 it just has a totally unique um visual way of doing it again a sort of like an evil dead type of thing where you have all these monsters come out and, and attack um what year was that 68 67 67 what's the name of the movie again it's 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 v v i y it's the russian word for witch so it's you can't v i y v i y or i've always heard it as v spirit of evil okay um that looks cool it, what, it was uh, what collections that in is that a Severin uh, set? Oh, this, this is this is the Severin. All the haunts be ours. Oh. I don't know how easy this is still to get, but I know that that the the movie you can see it otherwise. Like it, I used to have it on DVD. Um, Does it have the Eyes of Fires on that? Or yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's a million things on here. I wanted to get that. Um, but yeah, it's it's such a visually cool. Uh, movie to you know taking the sort of you know the witch um just with a bunch of monsters attacking but a totally unique take on it what well, uh tom what's that set called all 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 the all the haunts be ours all that haunts the hours all the haunts be ours oh okay all the haunts be ours okay yeah um are you still get it holy fuck that's not cheap buck 70 for all that wow okay yeah i got it when well it was expensive just even when it came out because there's right. like there's like like 15 discs or something 
holy shit, that's a lot of stuff. Yeah. So it was it was probably at least at least is that I mean is most of it all quality or no? Uh it's kind of a mixed bag. Mixed there's bag. Some, there's some great great uh there's some great movies on here and then some super like low budget made for TV things. Right. Uh but Eyes of Fire, Witch Hammer, um Celia, um uh, Allison's birthday is a fun Australian movie a field in england is on here dark waters anchorus is probably one of my favorite movies on here the british film nice that's cool man i'm glad you turned me on that kind of maybe i'm scared actually so you see this is the witch oh you saw her oh is that it back there yeah so like that she's un trippy. unleashing a bunch of shit on this poor bastard that looks awesome man Nice. I'm glad you turned me on to that. I'm gonna try to figure out how to get that one. So, all right, man. Y'all, y'all set? Yeah, I think um, oh, um, coffee's I'm the coffee's uh, I think that off. was I think that was ten. Well, I've been up for since four. <laughs> yeah, you're twenty four hours. Yeah. Well, look, man. We appreciate you being here, uh, all of us, and. Uh, Always good to have you in. You you've got a wealth of knowledge that we enjoy uh yeah kind of tapping into. And uh, you know, if uh we if uh if I can do another one of these in a couple months, we'll we'll have you back. Yeah, awesome. Lot lots of useless knowledge. Yeah, so put, I put, mean put, that, it, put it to use. Isn't that the thing, right? You know, but whatever, man. <laughs> I mean that's why we enjoy this shit. We enjoy each other's company because we uh we all have like a kind of a little connection of weirdness, right? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks Bye, for hanging man. out, man. We'll yeah. see you, Tom. Thank you, guys. Take care, bud. Thank yeah. you. Better, Tom. All right. Um, Dennis, you got a couple more? I got a ton more. You, got it. <laughs> you probably have like 8,000 fucking VHS. You might have to phrase movie. the question differently. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this movie scares the shit out of me still, man. Um, the entity with Barbara Hershey. Oh, I remember that. Man, this yeah. movie's fucked up. Um, she gets raped by um, the entity. It's based on a true story. Barbara Hershey plays it off very, very well, man. Um, very unsettling movie still to this day. Uh, it's very fucking... Uh, yeah, it's it's... It's not a good. Um, it's not a good movie to watch with the kids for sure, <laughs> or, or on a first date. I made that mistake, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, definitely. I mean, this is uh, I think 82, 81 or eighty two. Um, yeah, if you like uh, ghost stories with rape, this is the movie <laughs> for you. <laughs> I'm not a big fan, but I like this one. Um, check it out if you want to get scared shitless about getting raped uh, by a ghost. <laughs> uh, it's not great, but Barbara Hershey pulls it off, and it's scary as shit. And uh, not a lot of people know about this movie. I never talk about it for some reason. Um, but definitely check this one out if you want to. Who's get... in that, Dennis? Who was Barbara that? Hershey? <laughs> oh, okay, Barbara Hershey. Yeah, and yeah. she's great. She's great in this movie. Um, what year is that? I think it's eighty-two. Yeah, I was gonna say it looks very early eighties. Yeah. Yeah, and it's. Um, I think it's based on a book as well, but I'm not positive. It's been. No, I'm sorry. It's based on a true story. Oh, really? Yeah. So. If Do you, you want, guys, uh, you want. Do you want to double up and throw another one up? Well, we already talked about this one, but The Haunting. Oh, yeah. Uh, Shirley Jackson book. Sweet. Another great... Um, I mean, that's one of the best fucking horror movies. Yeah, Black for sure. and white. Yep. Um, man, this is a great fucking movie. Here's another one. I'll just pull this one out because... It's kind of a kind of an obscure one for me for Halloween. 
Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but this is a TV <laughs> book. The original TV version was Holy first shit. time shown on TV. So I Did actually you have get that version from Toby Hooper. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, but, uh, I think um so uh who's on this? Bob Shaw. Bob Shaw on TV put this he's he's hosting the movie no from shit. 80, yeah, 80, 87. Also on this one is 2020 Children of, Children of Heavy Metal and <laughs> Cheers the last episode. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my original copy, but man, I love this version because it's it's not cut because Texas Chainsaw was never that gory, honestly. Right, right. No, yeah. But he's he's always like in the like in the middle of the movie is like, this movie is not intended for children. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I mean, I mean, he's right, kind of right. I, I know, but it's it's just super cool to have yeah. this. Like that's awesome. It's like a history type of and thing. Then you, yeah. And then you end the night with with uh with Kirstie Alley and Shelley Long. You're good to yeah. go. Yeah, right. It's just fucking <laughs> awesome, man. I love this. I watch this every year on Halloween. So, do you, uh, Dennis? Don't lie. Do you have a copy of an OG copy of the Money Pit, where in the middle of the film they go, "This film is not intended for viewing of children." <laughs> Was Shelley Long? Yeah, the Shelley Long. Uh, what's his Tom name? Hanks. Tom, Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep. You know what? Here's here's a little bit of trivia. Do you guys remember, Dennis? I'm going to be disappointed if you don't know this. Do you remember the final scene when they get the house filled and they get married and everything's fine? There's a metal band playing at the end. Do you remember who that is? Who is it? Fucking White Lion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> White it's Lion. It's White Lion playing Fight to Survive, I think. Yeah. Or wow. maybe, uh, uh, what was that heart song? I forget. Anyways, uh, funny shit. All right, Rick, what you got, man? Got a couple you want to roll through? Yeah, sure. Uh, it both came out 88 and I put this in the category of it's almost too fun to be horror, even though it's kind of in that category. And then I'll show one because it's got a related actor in it and I don't own a physical of that one. So here we go. Uh, first one, uh, the actor actually passed away this year uh, in, in a motorcycle accident. You guys might know treat, treat Williams dead heat, man. Oh shit. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Fucking Piscopo, man. Uh, so like I said, it's, it's, it's too fun to be. It's got all the tropes of a cop movie. Just throw a bunch of zombies in there, and you're. Uh, it's got Vincent Price. That's a weird one, man. Really oh, weird. One. But it's done on purpose, man. And it's like, it's you know, it's again, it threw all the tropes in there. It's kind of self aware, and we're like, we just fuck it, we just throw zombies in, in, in this thing and try to make it work. Um, and then the other one is, of course, another carpenter. They live. Another fun one, and, and you know, it's just got all that all that stuff in there, and. No, this is a kind of a social commentary, just kind of another one with consumerism and just kind of how how blind we are and everything else. Uh, but another classic. So Vincent Price, I did bring him up, and I actually don't want a physical of this one, but I'm sure Edgar Allan Poe have, have to bring him up. It's Halloween. Yeah. Uh, Mask of the Red Death. Yeah. Uh, Good one. This shit. This shit right here, man. Uh, That's one, a great one of my movie. One of my favorite acting uh, from him yeah. uh, right here. I uh, just was I, watching uh, The Pit and the Pen Pendulum today. That's oh, yeah. Good too, yeah. Yeah, which is, that's a good which one is um, Vincent Price. But uh, he doesn't have much of a great role in this one. It's just kind of, you know, but, it, it, but it's kind yeah, of fitting I mean, because, yeah. you know, just, just the rich guy. But, you know, it's pretty old. Pretty old. I mean, I guess kind of old here, but it's really old <laughs> in Dead Heat. So uh um, what year is it? what year is that? Like eighty five something? Eighty six? Like uh, both are eighty eight. Oh, eighty eight, okay. Uh at least that's what's coming up for me. Yeah. So yeah. All right. Um what do we got here? We got Eli. What you got a couple? Yeah, I got I just have two left. Um these are my generic picks, I guess. Uh you know, gotta go with the original Halloween. 
it's like the quintessential American slasher. We wouldn't have had uh, Friday the Thirteenth or Nightmare on Elm Street without it. And then I picked uh, <laughs> Halloween Three as did everyone else apparently. Yeah. Is that Nothing which much. one's your favorite? I mean, I always go with the with the with the original, but honestly, I mean, I think Halloween Three is as, as good of a movie as any of them. These are my two favorites. It's yeah, kind right. of. I like a lot of the. Well, I don't like a lot of them. I you know, two's good. The first three, I guess, are really all you need. You don't really need much beyond yeah, that. Yeah, you really don't, man. I mean, <clears> they <throat> just go on and on and on. I think they could have kept like, the anthology thing going. I think that would have been cool. But yeah, I like some of the newer ones. But I'm not gonna what, go there. The, like Halloween ends or whatever it is. Or what? I like Halloween ends. I liked Halloween kills. Uh, kind of has a dumb storyline. Halloween kills, but it had a lot of cool like <laughs> gore scenes and stuff. But... It's just um, just so absurd. It just yeah. keeps existing, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's like yeah. You know. I mean, Tyler, what do you got, man? You got a couple? You said. Uh yeah, one of them's the one everyone already talked about, but I want to show my version of it. And that's the Evil Dead. Oh, the book. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, the ultimate. Oh, nice. Open it up and. I don't open, own that. That's shocking. I don't own Open it, it up and. Yeah. Open it up. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's a, it's a three disc version of it. It's really, really cool. It's got a poster with it. DVD or Blu ray? Uh, these are DVD. DVD, yeah. I bought this, fuck, I don't know how long ago. Um, and actually, one I wanted to. Then we were talking about, like, no fun movies, and um, I want to bring up one that it's a horror spoof, but unlike scary movie where you know the kills are just, you no, know, it's so over the top for comedic value, you know, you're just like, you don't take it seriously. So the first time I saw this, Club Dread. Oh yeah, <laughs> no, Book of Lizard. It's, yep. it's 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 one of the it's it's actually not. Like I was really hyped to see this because of Beer Fest and Super Troopers and everything else, but I didn't like this as much as those ones. But I will say I was very shocked at how it went from this like campy, goofy spoof of a horror movie, and then all the kills. I'm like, and it got there's actually kind of a serious, weird, serious tone when it gets to the actual kill scenes, and I'm just like, this is kind of fucked up. Like this is a broken lizard movie and I'm not laughing. Yeah, right. I'm actually kind of shocked at the gore. There's actually pretty, pretty legit gore scenes in it. And that was not, that was something I was very much not expecting from that movie for sure. But it's fun. I mean, it's, I mean, it's an absolute spoof of like this, you know, classic like 80 slasher flicks, but yeah, I was not expecting an actual slasher kill and gore, like <laughs> in a broken lizard movie. Yeah, that's it. All right. Um, let's see. What I got left here? I got a couple. I'll roll through a few that I'm pretty sure I've mentioned some of these. Probably because, I mean, I I don't think I've gone through every horror movie I have, but I've hit a lot. Um, I know I talked about this one last time. Eyes Without a Face. Yep. Oh, Which, yeah. uh, has anyone seen this? Yep. Seen that, Eli? Yeah, not for a while. French movie, uh, man, it's, uh, obviously it was the impetus for Billy Idol's Big Smash song. Um, really kind of fucked up, man. Guy has a daughter, her face is all fucked up in a crash. He starts to harvest bodies to figure out if she, if he can, uh, fix a uh, face to her and it's just creepy man it's creepy it's really atmospheric really cool 1960 1960 um talked about the exorcist so we got that we're good there <laughs> oh who's this we got scott no solution yeah oh hey okay. what's up what's up scott what's up, dude how about Acid Witch? Oh, they're freaking awesome. Oh, there we go. Hold on. There we go. All right. There we go. Cool. Am I on? What's up, Sorry. man? Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? Freaking great, man. I just got back from Acid Witch. It was a two-hour drive home, and oh, wow. I'm here. So <laughs> That's a heck of a drive. We'll, uh, we'll include you in on festivities in a minute. I got a couple of movies to roll through. Quick. No, no problem, man. 
Um, you know, obviously, I talked about Bela. He's one of my favorites, maybe my favorite of all of the horror kind of guys, right? You know, the you know, when you get into the the, the universal monsters, you got um, you got fucking Boris Karloff, you've got Lon Chaney Jr., you've got you know all the the various guys, right? But this is the guy for me. I some about him is just super cool. And this is I have about I don't know seven different version of Dracula, <laughs> the thirty one movie, and this is the um, forget who the artist was. Do you know who it is, Rick? Todd. Oh uh, no, Alex Ross. Alex Ross, yeah. He did these. Oh, now these yeah, you yeah. can you can find these usually anywhere. Uh, but um they're the slip the slipcase ones and the you know the plastic slipcase. And cool. I think these aren't these aren't the four K yet, are they? Or are they? I don't think so. No, these aren't. It's it's been done in four K now and you man the player for the four K. It's still just such a evocative movie, right? And you know, you get into you know that part where he's coming down the staircase when Renfield is arriving at the castle, and he's like, "Listen to the children of the night," you know, listen to what what sweet music they they make. You know, it's just man, he's just iconic. The dude was just amazing, and um, yeah. yeah. So Dracula. Let's see what else do I have here. Uh, oh, speaking of. Speaking of Bella Lugosi, one of my favorites here, the Body Snatcher, with uh, also with Boris Karloff, and uh, you know, Karloff is the bad guy again in this, and he has his lackey who is uh, Bella Lugosi, who goes out and grave robs essentially to snag bodies for the uh, the professor. You know, there's always the professor, you know. But, yeah, this is a great one here, man. I love this one, too. I'll do one more, and then we'll do one more round. We'll get to talking to Scott here a little bit. I'm going to go with um, – I'll leave those last ones. So, uh, a little bit more sci-fi than horror, but still kind of horror because, you know, we don't know, right? We want to believe, but uh, – you got your invasion of the body snatchers. You got oh, the yeah. original or the original here with Kevin McCarthy. Uh, and you've got your 70s version here yeah. with Donald Sutherland. And I don't know which one I, I prefer the, the 70s version. Yeah, me too. 78, I think. Is that it's right? Great. I right? think so. Yeah, I think I'm without looking. I don't remember. The, that movie yeah, really holds fun, up, too. So. It's, it's amazing. Is it Anybody know for sure? I'm not sure. 70 something. 78. 78. Yeah, 78. Oh, okay. So, 78. man, this one's a little bit more eerie and a little bit more prescient, a little bit more political and socioeconomic and everything. This one's yeah. a little bit more, you know, the 50s vibe. And this is, um, fuck, who did this? Um, I have two versions of this. I think this came out through. Olive, Olive did a super high techy, you know, slipcase version, and one of my favorite films. And the very ending sequence where the girl runs up to Donald Donald Sutherland and goes, "Oh yeah," you know, and and he turns around, and he's like, <gasps> "You know, it's like yeah. fucking freak." Every time I see that, like, trippy. Trippy, yeah, he points. He's like, I, "You're like, whoa, man." Yeah, that gets me every time, no matter how many times I've seen it. So, it's all right, ending. us. Devin, you already showed your stuff, or do you still have stuff? I can wait to the end. Let's Scott go. What's that? I can wait to the end. Okay. Scott, you have a couple things you want to show or talk about? and Yeah, I do. Uh, I, I, and I apologize because the first half of the show, I was kind of in a concert. And the last half, I was watching while I was driving. So hopefully sure, I have some sure. stuff that people have already shown. That's but fine. I That's not fun. I want to chime in on the 78 um, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Yeah. That, was, that was one that, as a kid, that really freaked me out. My dad showed exactly. me that. And, yeah, I mean, I, I know the uh, the original one has its place, but for me, as a kid, I mean, I can't 
I can't feel that uh, as I did as the one I saw as a kid. So are you a kid? Of, are you a kid of the seventies? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I was, am I. And think about it. What was on in the seventies? You had In Search of. You had. Uh, right. the, what was that mystery show? I forget what it was called. Um, yeah, In Search of and. Uh, uh, there was a mystery. I, guess I, always, show. I always think of Ripley's Believe It or Not with Jack Palance. And... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So all that shit was kind of scary, and all the stuff like uh, the the um, Loch Ness monster and all that shit was real, right? We believed right, in this right. stuff, right? As kids, For sure. right? yeah. For sure. Um, so I, I just I picked out a few. I, I obviously don't have ten because I you guys that's are fine. At, that's fine, dude. You guys are at the end, so yep. I picked a woman. Oh, uh, that's a fucked up movie. <laughs> don't know that one. By Lucky McKee. Uh, this is a it's an adaptation of a Jack uh, Jack Ketchum novel that he actually co-wrote with Lucky McKee. Um, he had a series of, of books that were based on a cannibal clan kind of living in the caves in the um, east coast of America. And this this was... Uh, Excuse me, sorry. Specific, specific, the <laughs> specific story is uh, based on the one woman who lived from um, being discovered in the caves, and uh, she was kind of foraging for herself in the woods, and this guy found her and captured her, and. Uh, revealed his own kind of perversions by capturing yeah. her and doing whatever he wanted to her. So this is a really... It's a really perverted story, I guess you would say. Right. Um, people it's were very up. upset about this movie. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I think as far as horror goes it, in, in the modern times, I think this is one of the most horrific stories you could tell. Is it, um, it kind of like a twisted version of like the collector i yeah you're on the right track yeah right 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 yeah i think it's disturbing yeah. is that it's one of the more disturbing movies i've ever seen okay all right yeah, yeah it's, it's, <laughs> it's very disturbing um yeah. where where this um basically bar barbaric woman a cannibal woman captured by a supposedly civilized man is is kind of cast as the hero in the story so that's kind of where you're going with this. Um, yeah, kind of gets a little twisted. Yeah, it's it's very twisted. Yeah, but yeah. as far as far as a modern um, horror movie, this is this is one of the one of the most effective I could think. We of. know it says right there must be eighteen to rent. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure. It's not it's not like super graphic, but. As far as the themes of it, I would say don't. Yeah, you you don't want a your kids. Lot of, a lot of implied weirdness. Right, right. Yeah. Um. Okay, we'll we'll go a, a little more family friendly with this one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't. You, did you guys show this earlier? Probably, right? Yeah, I think a bunch of people have showed it. Yeah. Is okay. that Ozzy and Gene Simmons? Yep. Uh, sort of. <laughs> I kind of forgot they were. Are they in that movie? I mean, if you add their screen time, it's probably like four minutes. Okay. Dean's in it more than Ozzy. I kind of yeah. forgot they were in that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, this is the this is your Satanic Panic kind of heavy right. metal movie. Um, it's just it, it's super fun though. Oh, it's I a mean, great film, man. I love it. You got the Fastway yeah. soundtrack, and yep. you know, it, it, as much as you can like goof on Mark Price as you know Skippy from Family Ties being the star. He does a great job, yeah. and I watch this every Halloween. I love it so much. So good pick, good pick. Uh, let's see what else. Um, I'll save that one for last. Uh, you guys seen Cure? No. Okay, so. so this is a. I believe it's Korean. No, I think it's Japanese. Please, please excuse my horrible, horrible cultural ignorance. I believe it's Japanese. Um, so this is a film based on a um, 
kind of like a mantra that's passed on between certain people. And if you whisper this, whatever the phrase is, to the next person, they become a vicious killer. Ah. Um, yeah, it, 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 it's a super creepy horror movie. <clears throat> I really, I really recommend it. Kind of, kind of sounds a little like that Juon Rengu thing, right? Yeah, it's kind of in that vein. Yeah, it, it is right in that time period too, where kind of Japanese horror was the the, uh, the pace of the day. They but. they kind of have that trope, you know, that passed on sort of thing, right? That that passed right. on either whether it's a saying or a you know whatever, you know. It's, it, just always kind of happens that way, yeah. Right. I've right. not heard of that movie though. Um, this is one of those movies you don't want to say too much about, but basically, don't stop watching it until the very end because it, it continues on, and the very end really matters to the uh, entire storyline of the movie. Okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, yeah. Cure. Good. Good. Very uh, good, film. good suggestion there. And you want to. Hold off for another round. We'll do one last round. Oh, yeah. Yeah, cool. All right, cool, cool. All right. Um, Devin, did you have some or you want to hold off? Yeah, I got a couple. All right. What do you got? Let's go with your T-shirt. Oh, God. The course vanishes. Yeah. <laughs> That's not the greatest movie of his. No, it's he, cheesy. cheesy he did a lot though. of real cheesy, cheap shit to keep uh, a paycheck coming in. It's still fun, though, but it's yeah, good. Yeah. Murdering people movie. Speaking of cheesy fun, I don't know that one. Oh, awesome! People get wow. stuck on the desert island, and there's a bunch of like Nazi zombies. The only, only way to kill them is to take off their sunglasses, which is kind of a dumb way to kill them. But <laughs> 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 kind of like uh, what's uh, they live right? Yeah, and then you it's can like see the opposite, them. right? Yeah, the yeah, old the guys. Opposite, yeah, you see that old dude's Peter Cushing. So older Peter Cushing yeah. movie. And then this one we talked about a couple days ago, Fight Night. Oh, that's man. a great movie, man. Love that movie. Yeah, that's a good movie. Killer man. vampire movie. That's the one. Uh, if I'm not wrong, is that the first movie where they use like latex for people coming through the wall? Do you remember that sequence, or am I dreaming that? Like coming through the ceiling, like they're kind of coming down through like that. And and is that am I remembering that right or am I remembering it wrong? I think that's a different movie. Wait a minute, what was the movie that Michael J. Fox was in that was like uh oh, that's the Frighteners? Yeah. Oh, it might have been the Frighteners. I'm thinking of Peter Jackson. Yeah. yeah. That might have been the, the one I was thinking the, of. The, the thing about Fright Night is it's Ryan McDowell's in it, right? Like they they, they give him the name uh Peter Peter Vincent. Which is like yeah. kind of like a combination. <laughs> Peter Cushion, yeah. Vincent Price. Like I thought that was Are we sure his funny. name wasn't Peter North? Peter. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a different movie. Yeah, that's a different movie. Is that a different movie, Dennis? Peter North? Yeah, I, I have uh, I have a collection of those. <laughs> <laughs> the box set. All right, what do you got, man? We'll do we'll wrap one, one Let, more. Let's do up. let's do some more classics, man, because no one right, ever let's mentioned this. Let's do um, them. The Legend of Hell House, man. Oh, that's a great one. Man, great, great ghost story. Man, what no one mentioned this? Um I know, no one, no one mentioned it. No. Again, you got Roddy McDowell from uh fucking Fright Night on this yeah. one. Um, great ghost story, uh, haunted house story, super creepy. Fucking love this movie. Yeah, I, that's one of my favorite of the seventies, right? Yep. Killer movie. Definite watch. And speaking of that, gotta watch this one, man. The original Tales from the Crypt. Oh fuck yeah! Yeah, I think Jimmy oh, didn't yeah. Jimmy bring that up. Nah, he brought up the new one. This is the oh, the OG. new one. Okay, all right. That's it's the OG, OG, dude. The OG with Peter. The Cushing. OG. Yeah, this is Peter Cushing one. Um, oh shit! Yeah, that's OG. Yeah, it's a Amicus one, right? Yeah, I want to say it's uh, Amicus. Yeah, it's got to be Amicus. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, uh, with the uh, shit, what's her name from? God damn it. 
What the fuck's her name? Uh, Joan Collins does. Oh, Santa Joan Collins from Dark Shadows. Yeah, she does the uh, Santa oh, Claus. Santa Claus. Santa Claus one. Man, this is the creepiest shit movie. Um, but it, again, it, and then they got the one with the razors where the guy got, he has to walk down the hall and there's razors all along the side. Oh, so yeah. Got, oh, man. And the and the dog's chasing him. Man, this is a great, great uh, anthology besides Creep Show. Definitely check this one hey, out. Speaking of Joan Collins, though, real quick, I got I'm gonna blow like does anybody own the Dark Shadows complete box set? Does anybody own that? Scott? I want to, but no, I don't. Man, I man, I've I've been so close to pulling the trigger on that years past, man. The 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 uh the coffin box with all the yep. I mean, if they would do a Blu-ray version of that, I'd jump on it. But it would be, what, like a grand or $1,200, probably something like that. But I was always, like, right on the verge of doing the DVD box. And I'm like, eh. And then you'd find one on eBay. And you'd find a cheap one. You'd be like, yes. And then you'd pull it up and you go, oh, it's missing three discs. You know, one of those. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. I was just going to say, I saw it at a thrift store one time. And it was, it was missing oh, something. Yeah, it like, had to be uh, missing discs. Because if, if it wasn't yeah. missing discs. It was probably like 800 bucks. But we know Dennis probably owns the whole bet. There's one on eBay right now that has every disc. It's 300 How much? 300 Ah, uh, don't Okay, I gotta go. Bye. <laughs> don't fucking tell me that. We're all gonna... As soon as the stream ends, Scott and me and Dennis are gonna go, like, bid on that fucker, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, Dennis. Sorry. Go back. All right, let's do. Let's just throw these fucking things in. Everybody talked about the Beyond, but oh yes, oh god damn it, man, <laughs> that I is like... have this version, the fucking uh, thriller video version, and uh, the Gates of Hell. Man, these are the two Fulci classics right nice. here. Oh yeah, great fucking movies. And of course, man, gotta get that fucking Tombs of the Blind Dead in there. What's oh, that? Tombs sweet. of what? Tombs of the Blind Dead. Wow, I've never even seen that. You know Hood and Menace, right? Yeah, of course I know Hood and Menace, but yeah, this is what they basically built. Oh, is it really? In. Yeah. Shit, I had no idea. Wow, that's crazy, man. Yeah, man. What year is that? Dennis? Uh, probably seventy. I don't know the year. It's a Spanish movie. I think I mean, you know uh, what those look like, right? Those look like the little creek, the sand dune, the dune creatures on fucking um, on uh, Star Wars, right? Jawas? <laughs> no? <laughs> sand people? Yeah, the sand people. That's what I think they look like, those little sand creatures. They're kind of. <laughs> this is a they were a cloak. Atmospheric. Also, you got to get, get some Rocktober blood in here. Ah, okay. another great fucking flick for Halloween. Um, Hack o' Lantern. Hack o' Lantern. <laughs> oh shit! This movie rules, dude. Great fucking guy. Guy's grandpa like gives him a medallion because he's a Satanist. And the DC Lacroix uh, metal band plays a video. Yeah, game, dude. So. Definitely no check that one out. Another Halloween classic, Hollow Gate. Man, I've never <laughs> seen that either. Yeah, man, that was a great fucking slasher based, I mean, in Halloween. Uh, but uh, for me, man, for me, Halloween, it's all about these fucking compilations. Uh, previews from, from hell. hell. This has all the fucking classic like trailers from the 70s and 80s on it. Uh, great fucking flick right along this one man. Either. jeff would like this one because it's got uh all the like old school trailers <laughs> from sci-fi to like um to the 80s man this is a fucking banger of a fucking video to watch her dude the cool Wait, thing that... about, cool thing about this man is somebody just uploaded this movie to youtube today no way yep I I, I I 
shit you not, man. I was Dude, on I'm YouTube. I'm watching that tonight after we're done. I was on YouTube, and all of a sudden, I was like, Monster Mania uploaded eight minutes ago. I'm like, holy <laughs> fuck, hell yeah, dude. It's like they were reading your mind. They were, because I was looking for this like two days <laughs> earlier, and then it showed up. Oh. But yeah, check this one out. If hey, Jake, what's going on, buddy? If you want to jump on, jump on quick. And, of course, the Creep, creep Show. Yeah. Gotta get this, man. Best anthology, probably better than any anthology ever put out. Now, dude, when you buy this stuff, like in VHS in, in particular, do you find it on eBay or do you find it in like... Oh, man, companies? I had that shit when I was young. I don't... Oh, you had all that... This yeah, shit. man, I'm not, I'm not fucking posing that shit. I bought this shit back <laughs> in the day. You ain't no fucking poser, guys. Yeah, trick or treats. I'm not like that fucking guy that's like, oh, I gotta get this on VHS, man. No, I had this shit back <laughs> when I was fucking a kid. I think he's trying to. I think he's trying to send a message to some of us. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but uh, trick or treats, man. Check this one out if you like Halloween, because it's pretty much an exact replica of Halloween, but it has a kid from uh, Friday the Thirteenth. Part four, Corey. Oh yeah, is, Corey Feldman, right? Corey Feldman. Yeah. No, he's not. Uh, he's not in this. He's not in this. But it has a kid just like that. That's uh, like doing all these special effects and shit. I was gonna say, you're tempting me to pull up some Corey Feldman footage, aren't you? Not Gosh. again. Oh God, no. Hey, did <laughs> no. you did you see him when he fucked when they fucked up his fucking intro? No. Yeah, and he's like, come on. Can you not fucking do this right? He's like, <laughs> where was this at? What was this on? It was like brand new, probably like three weeks ago. Oh, really? Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got it. Well, I like we got to go. Professionalism. Find it. You pull that Christian Bale YouTube? stuff. Yeah. Is it on YouTube? Yeah. Oh, we got to go find that. We'll we'll close on that note. Rick, what do you got? <laughs> got a few. Uh, you know what sucks? Fucking following up Dennis after all this, man. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of it's kind of hard. I got. It. Uh, all right, that, elephant in the room. Fucking Sadam's lot. It's got to be mentioned. You know, yeah, I, yeah. I don't think anybody saw this one at all. But fucking great movie, man. Uh, we didn't it's talk great. much Stephen King. I think uh, just in general. Uh, th- I thought it would be brought up a lot more. Uh, another vampire flick. It's kind of a newer one, but it's it's. I think at this point, it's a modern classic, and it's kind of a kind of a higher brow one just because it's the, the budget but bram stoker's i love this movie man yeah it's um, great no uh, it's all in the right year and uh shit i almost know, pulled I, that one out <laughs> more faithful to the to the novel right i think out of, at the time yeah. when this came out that was the big deal about hey, rick, it check this out yeah. man i just found this in a box <laughs> oh, you might have to pull it up jeff yeah. Oh, oh. In a box. It's like the fucking big ass thick book of the movie. Holy that's shit! Sweet. I don't even remember owning this, but holy yeah. shit, man! Yeah, that's. A... I'm about ninety nine percent sure Dennis owns every piece of horror memorabilia <laughs> possible to own. Oh, almost. If you could, if you could, one up Kirk Hammett. Yeah. Well, okay. No, there you I go. I yeah. can't. Yeah, um, Dennis, Dennis, look, Dennis owns a lot of shit, but I don't think he has the deep pockets of uh, Kirk Hammett. Yeah, no, not many people do. You gotta pull out your own yeah. ride of lightning, man, and you can then you yeah. can. <laughs> oh. So uh, we we heard about Matthew Perry uh, tonight, which is you know it's sad, but you know, but bringing up uh, a friend's actress, fucking Jennifer Aniston. Yeah. Uh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Warwick Davis killed it, man. In fact, he was the perfect casting, you know, for this thing. Uh, All so. right, I'm gonna be the weirdo who who wasn't listening to the stream. Did Matthew Barry die or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, really? Okay. They found him in his. Uh, this cool. is, you know, I mean, kind of. You gotta wonder. They found him in his hot tub, drowned. So, okay. gotta yeah. believe he was. Yeah, he was a mess. Who dr- who drowns in their hot tub when they're not fucked up, right? right? My wife is a big Friends fan, so yeah. I I need to know for my own personal reasons. So yeah, just uh, I actually yeah. I I clicked on Instagram while these guys were talking. And I saw Mike Portnoy mention. I'm like, wait, what? Like it, just the way he phrased, I'm like, uh oh. Right away, mm-hmm. I knew something was up. So yeah, right. bummer, man. Guy was four years younger than me, man. 
crazy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what else you got, Rick? Sorry, Rick. Anybody bring up house? Anybody bring up house at all? House one, house two. No, I mean, nobody I mean, did. Great I'm surprise. It didn't come up. This is one I, re- I watched over and over as a kid. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a, it's a fantasy movie at the same time. Really weird, twisted imagination. Uh, it's just great. <laughs> Uh, yeah, rest, rest in not. peace, man. Hey. Rest in peace, oh, Richard mind. Mole. Richard Mole, yesterday. Yeah. Really? Yeah. He just oh, passed man. away yesterday. Like, no shit. This news is coming in so fast. I, I, what's uh, the main I'm guy? Uh, Kat, Richard Katz? No, what's his name? William Katz. William Katz. William Katz, yeah. 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 Uh, great American, great hero. American hero, right? Or greatest yeah. American hero? Uh, so uh, Dennis brought up Cheers tonight. George went. <laughs> oh yeah, George went. Yeah, that's he, right. Please, please that first major. movie's great, man. I don't know the other ones. Yeah, the second one's kind of a comedy. It's just kind of yeah, it's very good. campy. It, it, it is. Campy, yeah. Uh, I got this. Four, I got this four pack. But one in particular, I want to point out that really messed me up. Uh, was the the remake of the Blob? Oh yeah, I did. Dude, I that didn't know it was a remake. Eighty eight remake is killer. Yeah, yeah. Kevin yeah, Dillon. Way better uh, than the original. Way better. Devin already showed Friday night, but you know it comes with it too. It's, it's just a nice pack, man. Uh, yeah. You know you get all you get all four movies, so I said, "Fuck it, why not?" So uh, figured that's at least what I'll pull for now. You know what? I'll do um, I'll do one more it's simply because I don't think anybody brought it up either. Uh, night of the Creeps. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Great one. Uh, kind of a good, Tom Atkins. You know, it's just Tom Atkins again. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Great movie, uh, kind of, kind of bit of sci-fi, right? Good with the laboratory and everything. Then it turns into this alien and zombie movie. It's kind of a mix of a bunch yeah. of other stuff. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of a coming of age story too. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah. Key emphasis on the word coming. Just saying. Anyway, uh, <laughs> when Tom Atkins is around, man, someone's gonna come. <laughs> when Tom Atkins <laughs> is around, yeah, everyone. <laughs> Eli, you got one or two more? Or are you good? No, I showed all mine. All right. Uh, yeah, Tyler, I'm... you got one or two more? Or are you good? Uh, I'm good. I'm actually going to bounce out. I got to get up in the morning. So. All right. I got a couple to show if you want to hang out quick. Um, all right, man. We didn't talk about any. Well, wait a minute. Hold on. Yeah. So we'll go back to the oldest one. Uh, I know I showed this before, but 1932, man. The old dark house. Yeah. And oh, wow. the weird thing about this is it's creepy, but it's also kind of campy and funny. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's, it's almost it's, humorous. At yeah. Some point. There is. And it's, yeah. I mean, and, and the main guy, well, the main guy, the main star is Boris Karloff, a young and budding Karloff. I believe was this, does anybody remember whether it was before? Or after Frankenstein, I think it was after. Am I right? Yeah, I think it. I think it was after. But um, he kind of plays a comical character in a weird way, right? Yeah. Um, it's almost like it's kind of funny, but but there's a the the way it's shot, the way uh, the kind of the the jump scare stuff is, man. Great, great flick. The old the old yep. house. Um, and we'll go in order of age. So I think this. Let me just check quick. Oh, was that the fifty nine mummy? Might be. What did you see that, you fucker? All right, first Dracula <laughs> with uh, Christopher Lee, and uh, the horror of Dracula. Man, man, this is a good movie. And yep. Christopher Lee is so menacing compared to. Bella Lugosi, who's almost kind of milk toast by comparison, right? But I mean, Lee is like fucking evil, right? I mean, just you see that, like he's just he's he's maniacal, and this yeah. this is probably my favorite one of the the Christopher Lee, um, when we get into the Hammer stuff, right? Yes, you saw it. You got good eyes, Devin. Jesus Christ, <laughs> I would have never noticed that. 1959, The Mummy. I think it's 59, right? Yeah, 59, The Mummy. Uh, again, Christopher Lee, right? Um, dark and brooding, kind of menacing. Um, man, I like this one. I don't know about you guys, but I really dig this one. Didn't he hate playing The Mummy because he didn't really have any lines? 
Yeah, yeah. he didn't speak at all. Yep, yep. Yeah. Yep. Can't really blame um, him. Last thing I'll throw up for tonight is of all the kind of modern day horrors, uh, Devin, you showed uh, The Conjuring, which I think was 2013, actually. Um, and, you know, I don't know about the rest of you guys. I don't see a lot of modern horror that just does much for me. Now, I've missed a couple. I've not seen The Witch, and I've heard that's pretty good. It's great. Um, but I just, you know, a lot of modern-day horror just doesn't do anything. It's all CGI or total jump scares that you're completely ready for. But I will tell you, this fucking movie freaked me the yeah, fuck out, man. That's a great um, one. This thing was sick. Yeah. Like, especially the sequence where she's on the ceiling, man. Like, has everybody seen this? Oh, no. yeah. Mm-hmm. Dude, okay. it's, it's, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, I that's seen it. it. Spoiler alert. Wait, you haven't seen it? No, I've been waiting to watch it. All right, all right. Well, let me just say this. Uh, there's, there's a sequence in this movie. A lot of this is psychological horror and kind of building, building, building. Yeah. But there's a sequence in this that is so fucking... Oh, it's so jarring, man. It's just it, it so is. sick. My skin's crawling right now, Jeff. I yeah, it's about fucked it. <laughs> up, man. It, it is fucked up. Yeah. And I don't know about anybody else, like, without ruining it for Dennis, because, but, uh, has everybody seen it other than Dennis? No, yeah, I haven't. Uh, I haven't seen it. You haven't seen it either. Uh, yeah. Uh, I would say this is one of the better modern horrors because it's just it gets in your head and then when the shit starts going down you're like please let me out of here well, please, Tony please Collette should have got an Oscar for that yeah. what, what's that? Tony Collette should have got an Oscar for oh, that she should have yeah. yeah you're like man I just uh, you, you don't want to watch but you can't look away it's one of those things right you know and so yeah Scott what do you got la- uh, last oh wait Devin you did yours right yeah, he can go ahead. All right, what do you got, Scott, to wrap up things tonight? I got a couple left. Um, I think somebody already showed this, right? The Beyond. Yeah, yeah. Todd did. Yep, yep. Okay. Go um. Ahead. Yeah, I mean, I gotta show it anyway. I don't care if it's somebody else showed it. This is like my favorite. This might be my favorite horror movie. Right. Um, and and it's weird because I. Kind of don't care about Lucio Fulci. I know a lot of people worship him, but I most of his movies I don't care about. I think they're garbage. I'm kind, this one, yeah, this one is just a, a, a weird anomaly that I think the the atmosphere and the the actors he had in it and the music and everything just came together. And this is just like it feels like it's from another world. Um, yeah, I love this movie. It's like yeah. one of my favorite horror movies. I gotta time. see that one, man. I gotta see it. Yeah, awesome. yeah, it's it's great. I mean, City of the Living Dead is also another one that that uh, Fulci people talk about, and I like it, but I don't love it. This one, I think, just everything comes together. It's got the gore, it's got the atmosphere, it's got the music. Um, yeah, this. this Wait a minute, this, what's me, that one? What's that one called? The Beyond. The Beyond. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that was the one I showed, but it was Seven Doors of Death. Right, ah, right. Okay. I, 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 did, I couldn't think of the other name, right? It was released at, as Seven Doors of Death in America. But, yeah, the beyond. That's mine. And then my number one, and this is the movie I think that ruined me for horror almost forever, is Martyrs. Oh, yeah, man. Man, I don't know that one. Uh, <laughs> Probably one of the best uh, 2000s movies for me. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a French movie. It was it was re, re, remade as an American movie, and the, the American movie completely missed the point. Nobody saw it. <laughs> Nobody saw it. It came out on Redbox, and it was a fucking flop. Um, I guess on the face of it, this is a torture porn movie, but it's not really. No. Nope. Um, this is more of like an existential horror movie where it just makes you question everything you've ever even believed in. Oh, wow. Yeah. The, the, ruin the, day. Ending, <laughs> the ending scene for me, Scott, man, that shit like blew my yeah. mind. I was like, yeah, oh, yeah, it's, that was so it's, up. 
so it's a little better than human centipede? A little oh, yeah. better, yes. A, a <laughs> tiny bit better than human centipede. Though, I mean, I don't want to dis disrespect human centipede. I love human centipede. But this this goes beyond that. Um, yeah. yeah. You yeah. can't even prepare yourself for it, really. If you oh, have I, I, I don't, I mean, I've said, I've said that this, this movie has ruined me for horror movies, and I don't want to oversell it, but, I mean, I can't, I can't really spin it any other way. Like, this movie makes you question your ex fucking existence. Wow. And, um, All right, I'm going to look for that, uh, see if it's... I'll yeah, and it make sure you watch right. the original French version, not the. I was gonna say, version. make sure you watch the unrated version. Okay. Not the American version where they kind of soften it and make it about friendship and fucking whatever the shit they made it about. <laughs> but yeah, this this version, the French version, um, yeah, watch that one. Yeah, those, that's, that's when all those those very French cool movies, like that and Frontiers. Frontiers, yeah. All so right, I, guys. We're going to we're going to wrap up here quick with oh, Jesus a couple Christ. minutes of 40 <laughs> Oh hell yeah, dude. Because <laughs> we have to, right? That's we the have one. To. I haven't seen it. All right, here we go. Can you guys Ryan hear this? Fest. He's got a big yep. crowd. Nope. It looks like a great, are you watching? They're anxious to see him. Just listen. And the guitars are all set up. Guitarist so comes out. They're chanting his name. The guitarist is out. He's ready to rock. Yeah, he's got his guitar strapped on. The bassist and drummer are going to come out, as well as the uh, the angel, who I don't know who it is. It's no longer his wife, but this angel. Is that the chick that, that they end up yelling at? Yes. She doesn't ever shit together? She's behind oh, the laptop. Boy. She's the one that's supposed to what control that a lot of the music, and she ends up getting yelled at quite a bit. The drummer's just now coming out. <laughs> Excuse me, the bassist. He's going to get the crowd pumped up for this concert. And, of course, Corey's backstage. He's the grand entrance. Yeah, he's waiting. He he doesn't. Do you think these people are really fans of his music? The comeback king. Well, here he comes. The, the comeback come king. Here, here he comes. comes the comeback come king. Oh, this is embarrassing. Here he comes. The comeback king. Here, here, here we go. Here he comes. You want to come out of here? No, better chance. So what happens is what's comes. supposed to happen is Corey's supposed to come out and boom, the music starts and he's supposed to go and oh, start. Oh great, he's gonna come out and no music. It doesn't happen the way he wants. And yeah. just watch Corey because he's gonna yell at the girl behind the laptop, and then the guitarist <laughs> is gonna dress her down too. Oh, Let me guess, none of these guys, guys are actually side playing side. their instruments. No, they are actually. That's the problem. That yeah, the, uh, that's the problem. Uh -oh, he's uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh oh, he's already chewing out the lady behind the laptop. <laughs> Just yelling the guitarist. On the same count, everybody, really. <laughs> he's on mic complaining. Now the guitarist, he's not plugged in, so he's getting pissed off. So he runs over to the girl on the laptop, and he's pissed. Oh Everybody my god, dude. Are they playing like a state fair or something? <laughs> Did you catch that guitarist yelling at him? Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. What the fuck is this? Corey Feldman. Oh, uh, Buster Fuck. Oh, my Lord, dude. I mean, you recognize that outfit, right? From when yeah, he was yeah that's the from when he played at the pool. <laughs> wait, this, wait, that was that riot fest? Yep. Yeah. Oh, fuck, man. <laughs> man, are you kidding me? You can just oh, go dude, this off. is so bad. Now you got you got the fat guys out on the stage trying to trace out problems. There's a roadie working with the oh. angel and another roadie to get something plugged in. <laughs> like, how, like, seriously, how bad do you want to be a member no, of these bands? Like the guy in the who's just having a conversation with the person next to him. <laughs> oh. Not into it at all. <laughs> We're doing this song. Well, the guitarist is living. Guitar is still isn't even oh, playing back then. Finally, fucking around. He just got plugged in. This is the greatest song I've ever heard. He just got plugged in. 
I mean, can we question There's, probably, there's probably, probably like about game, 17 the people right in. there in front of the stage. That's Ascension uh, Millennium. Well, it should be the first. All right. Well, we better get that off because I'll get, uh, I'll get, uh, I'll probably get a, I'm sure I'll get a, uh, a copyright strike for all that. A letterhead from Corey Feldman. Cease and desist. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Cease and desist from Corey Feldman. Corey, Corey will want his, uh, he'll want his, re uh, uh, what, what are they called? The, not the revenues, but what am I trying to say? Royalties. Royalties. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, um, all right, Tyler, good to see you, buddy. All right, man. We'll, we'll talk to you guys later. All right, man. Later, man. Thanks for joining Hi, us. Tyler. No Very problem, cool. man. Fucking Corey Feldman. Um, Jesus. Fucking Corey Feldman. <laughs> Scott, where do you live at? You live out in uh, Michigan or what? Yeah, I'm in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Okay. Where were they playing at? Where in Detroit or what? Yeah, they're in Detroit. I'm about two hours away. What uh, what venue? Sanctuary or what? Sanctuary. Yep. Nice, nice. I've never seen those guys, but they seem like a lot of fun. Yeah, they're they're always a great show. I've seen them a few times. So they do the the annual Halloween show, you know, in Detroit adjacent. So I try to make it out when I can. Yeah, I tried to get uh, Dave to join us the last time, like a couple months back. Okay. And I I sent him a direct message and he looked at, it, but he never got back to me. So I probably wasn't you know wasn't feeling it or something like that. And then. I was going to ask him again for this one, and then I saw that they had the show tonight. So, right, right. Figured he wouldn't be there, but um, and you have a channel, man, or no? Yeah, yeah, I do. It's it's no solution, and uh, I did not research my channel name, so there's a, a thousand no solutions. So yeah, that's the thing. Good luck, whatever. <laughs> Check out no solution. They usually have to leave a link so people can actually get to it. Look for the one with a bunch of cats in it, and uh, that's me. <laughs> nice. Well, you got anything going on over there that you're doing lately, or? Oh no, I mean I'm just doing random videos and you know just talk about shit I am into. So. Yeah, I I recognize your name, and I think you did a response video for uh for Rick, right? Yeah. yeah. Like recently, right? Yeah, right. In the contest. And um, Eli, what have you been doing? Well, you always do something. You're always dropping a couple of uh couple of videos a week right yeah just uh short ones. Random, random stuff yeah i've they've been pretty short lately i i just kind of go with it i never really plan out the length or anything yeah i kind of like it though man like you're you're we don't know we don't know what's gonna drop you know with your channel yeah, I, try, I try to mix it up a little bit try to try not to do the same thing all the time i think i got in that rut for a while when i'm like oh man i'm doing like one thing so I tried to do it. Yeah. Tried to mix it up a little bit. Keep well, we're glad you popped in, man, because I I didn't even think about yeah, it till the like late in the day. I'm like, oh shit, I didn't say anything to Eli. So I'm glad you uh, yeah. were able to pop in and hang out a little bit. Uh, Devin, where yeah. are you at? You just appear? <laughs> Where'd Devin go? Devin's quite the mysterious cunt. He slinked. <laughs> he just slinked away. <laughs> His parents Rick, said, what do you got going on, man? You got that, you dick. You got some... <laughs> oh shit, he came back. There he oh, is. Yeah, uh, hang on, I'll come back to you, Devin. Uh, Rick, you got something tomorrow night, right? Uh, I'm doing that thing Monday. It's a live. It's a live premiere, so I'll be in the chats. Uh, so it's me, Logan's on board, Classy Lonnie, and I got Brian. We just basically what we're doing tonight. It's just not as much movies. It's right. more and, and not as long of a stream. Yeah, yeah, not as long as the stream. We're, we're closing in on seven hours in a minute here. Um, Holy shit, are you serious, dude? Yeah. All right, Rogers are chimed in. We're, we're officially been on very long. We started at nine o'clock, so... Um, oh, Roger's in now? Roger. Wait, who? Rod. Roger just chimed in. Yeah, he's on the chat. Roger! My dog, my main man. What's up, Roger? <laughs> we're going we're gonna to... Good morning. Probably called here shortly, Roger. But you got, um, it's Roger, actually. Roger, yeah, it's true. It is. You're right. It is Roger. Um, <laughs> I just call him Raj. <laughs> Kevin, what are you doing over there, you cunt? Nothing. On nothing. uh, where uh the main the, nothing planned right now. What's that? Nothing planned at the moment. Nothing. 
Uh, you Devin, just got what? some though, didn't you? Yeah, you got the was it eighty eight, right? I think it was eighty eight. Yeah, that's a good year. I mean, Devin, when he called you a cunt, I mean, you got to come back hard on that, and you just said nothing. I mean, come on, he's got nothing. He's got nothing. <laughs> I have, I have been a foot taller than him, so okay, he is. He is. No, you're not a fucking foot taller than me, asshole. I am fucking five eight, and you are six four. So bite a dick. Well, you are six inches taller than me. Your mouth. Yeah, I you demand a live. I, I want. I want a live measuring. I want to see what's going on. Come on. Maybe, maybe we'll see. Um, <laughs> Dennis, what's happening over there? Uh, before we get into that, you and I got to set up a time to get our. Our forgotten metal gems. Oh hell yeah, plan, dude! But probably won't be for another week or ten days, something like that. Yep. Yeah. I, I don't have shit going on. I'll probably do nothing. Like a, I'll do like a response video. It's a couple of guys I gotta do because gotta support the VC. So. Uh, are you doing? Are you doing a jazz fusion episode soon? Yeah, it's gonna be a jazz fusion episode. Maybe some rare funk. Let's go. I can't wait. <laughs> I'll hold off on the yacht rock, my man. Are you, <laughs> Dennis, are you doing a deep dive on pure prairie league? Don't lie. Yeah, I mean, it's that, and uh, I got a Seals and Croft episode coming up. And, uh, <laughs> we're going to get, get deep into some fucking uh, Dr. Shrinker and some <laughs> diamond, diamond Lost. Diamond cuts with the diamond girls, right? <laughs> um, all right, so yeah, I know on my end, um, just the only god, what's going on? Well, Dennis and I are gonna hit episode seven. Is it seven or eight? I think it's actually eight, it's actually eight, believe it or not. Um, because the first one was called something else, and then Oh, the, fuck, the fucking name of the show's changed like eight times. Um, but yeah, we've got... What are we doing? We're doing... Merciful do, Fate. No, well, that's you and I doing the dad thing. Oh. We're doing uh, King Diamond and Merciful Fate. But the yep. Forgotten Metal Gems is Blue Murder, Fields of Nephilim. Who else? Devastation and Nasty Savage. Devastation, nasty sound. Damn, how do you even know this? I have no he's, idea what we're doing. All right. He, dude, he stalks <laughs> us. He stalks us. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> um, yeah, I got a UFO deep dive later in the month. Uh, we're probably going to do... Oh, shit. What am I doing? Oh, a couple of interviews that I've talked about and I probably ought to not talk about, so we'll just sort of sit tight. But... The horrendous guys got in touch with me today. They're going to jump on with me maybe next weekend. Um, my daughter and I are doing George Harrison on the dad thing. Dennis and I are going to do King Diamond and Merciful Fate uh, at some yeah. point. And, uh, hey, look who's here. He's back. He's back. Peter's back. He was with us earlier, wasn't he? Yeah. Oh, no, that was – I take that back. That was with Johnny and I when we did uh, – hey. Go check out that dad episode with uh, Johnny and I doing uh, Warrior Soul because you're missing out there, man. That's a great fucking band. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff I plan, and I just don't know what's going on with my health. So we'll we'll sort of Jeff, see. Jeff, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the deep dive into the Steve Hogarth era of Merlion that you and I will do. The what? The Steve Hogarth uh, era of Merlion. That yeah, actually, uh, you and I, and I guess – Johnny Mac. Johnny's a big uh Hogarth Oh really? Guy. Yeah, yeah. Oh I, I was to... tro- I was trolling because I had asked you about it before and you said you weren't interested. So did I? I didn't know anyone else cared about that. Oh, you asked me about that? When did you ask me that? I mean I think it was like when you and um I think you did the when you did the original like fish era Merlion. Okay. Uh, deep dive. I think and I you asked were, you, about you said you, oh, didn't you were in the it. chat, and I said maybe, yeah. maybe not. Okay, yeah. I kind of remember that. Yeah. No, I, I probably would be down for that. Although I do not own the last couple. Okay. I own pretty much everything from Seasons End on up through probably Marbles and beyond a little bit. I think I okay. have. I'm trying to remember what did they put out after marbles was that um 
Uh, they did somewhere else. Happiness, sounds. happiness is the road. Happiness sounds. And then uh, sounds, and then uh, fear. fear, and then yeah. the last one, which was an hour before start. Which I actually liked the last two. I thought the last two were pretty good. So, um, I mean, I, I I started this as a as just kind of a like kind of poking at you, but yeah, yeah. No, if you really no. if you really want to do that, I'm I'm down. Now we'll talk about because um, yeah, one of my favorite bands of that era, okay. and certainly the fish stuff is. Right here, I mean that's near and dear to me, but um, yeah. and I like a lot of the Hogarth stuff, and I've seen the Hogarth incarnation three times, I think three times. Okay. So, yeah, so we'll we'll talk about it, man. Um, okay. Anybody else got anything they want to wrap up with here? I can show some comics real quick if you want. Some yeah. comics or comments? It's got like comic books, not just oh, any comics. comics. Sure. A little near and Do near. that quick, and then we'll wrap up here in about five minutes. I remember it was a bit of contraband, but this is this is kid who uh pretty good pretty good illustrator actually. It kind of uh he got me kind of going in that momentum. He would bring in these comics, and he, apparently comic shops had a back room like the way video stores did for for a certain <laughs> for a certain audience. And uh, he, he, you guys you guys remember this? Faust. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah! Wow, that's so, badass looking. Yeah. If, if, think of a fourth grader looking at this shit, man. It's just like oh, my, yeah. my eyes were. Now I don't know how safe for for um, YouTube work this is, but there was also this. Uh, we'll cover yeah. the boobies. Oh, there just show go. it. Who cares? The, let's uh, go. Oops. <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> this, is, this is the kind of shit. That was, and the illustrations on this is so fucking badass, man. Like, and then we got this one here, right, which is kind of kind of censored. And uh, so if you open it up. You kind of get you kind of get all this stuff going on. Ah, this yeah. is like he must have been listening to death metal, man. Like, this is like this is such a death metal thing. Oh, it um, is. Yeah. That's Tim Vigil, dude. Yeah, yeah, guy's amazing. I mean, look how detailed, like this shit. He did the uh, banished cover. If you don't know, oh, that was him. Yeah, fuck, man. I'm like, you know, I'm like Tom McFarlane, man. Move over. We we got this guy. Yeah. <laughs> This just, just blew my mind. And uh, so I've been kind of hunting these down over the years and uh, just kind of kind of reliving because I couldn't, I could not head, go to the comic shop if I can get some money from my mom and then come home with this. It, it was just, uh, <laughs> it wasn't, wasn't going to happen uh, until sometime later. But they, there was you a movie. Me. You guys know the movie? I don't know if you've yeah, seen uh -huh. it. Kind of, kind of campy. It's, it's not, you know, it's, kind of a cop drama but at the same time it's it's okay <laughs> rick i have a question for you i'm confused now i yep. will admit to something i have not eaten all day today because of like intestinal stuff how the fuck are you sober right now and i'm about half smashed <laughs> i did kind of eat a big meal maybe uh i don't know but how much did you drink tonight did you not drink much I just had the two bottles. Um, I mean, but well, that was it. Two, okay, two eight. Yeah, two. I got two. All right. Okay. Two, I had. I basically had four. So and they were all. Oh they're, yeah. There you plus. go. Plus, that's probably why I'm like feeling like I'm feeling like like I rarely have I ever been on streams where I'm like slurring and struggling with words, but I'm like. Struggling oh yeah, I'm drinking this bourbon barrel stout too. By the way. Well, you're a you're a fucking alcoholic. So what are I you? <laughs> <laughs> what is that shit? Oh, stout. Uh, Brewmaster stash bourbon barrel stout. Yeah, I like that. I like that can. That's pretty wicked looking. Yeah. Is that a know. local brew out there, Dennis? I don't, my wife brought these home yesterday for me. Nice. Well, guys, man, we uh we kind of crushed it here tonight. Seven hours. Hell seven yeah. Seven hours, ten minutes. And uh, we had uh, fuck man, I don't know. Did we have like seventeen people in the night or something like that? It seems like you were up in the twenties, man. Especially the beginning, you were up in the twenties, twenty five, twenty six, something like no, that. No, no, I meant no, I meant seventeen people joining us on the stream. Oh, yeah. it was yeah, maybe. I think we were up close to seventeen with all the the jumpers in. 
you know, Jimmy and the guys that left early and stuff like that. So um, the fact that it didn't completely collapse into uh, insanity, I don't know. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. I just want to say that I think that the people who were here at the end count more than the people who um, dropped out before the end. Yeah, well, I mean, a couple of the guys, um, you know, well, actually, so Peter, the metal vault, was on earlier with Johnny and I when we did our Warrior Soul thing at like 3 o'clock in the afternoon, 4 o'clock. And uh, he's back now. <laughs> See, he's a glutton for punishment. All right. All right. Mick. That, up, <laughs> yeah, okay, that wins. That wins. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, it's, um, you know, I, I do appreciate all you guys. And, yeah, we're at 15 now. And I think, Rick, actually, when you said how high did we get, I think it was 32 was as high as we got. So, okay. um, which is cool. Yeah. Considering, you know, I mean, um, it is funny. It, you know, Dennis and I talk about this sometimes. He's like, man, I don't know why you, you do these killer videos or these long panels and stuff. And then you only have like 600 people to watch. It's like. I don't know, man. I have no fucking clue. I, I don't get it, you know. Um, it is what it is. I you know, it's but a, just a weird algorithm. That's what it is. It's gotta be. Or maybe just because I do these well, Dennis, you brought up about the fact that I do all these as live streams. Yeah. That as opposed to doing videos, maybe that might be twisting the the algorithm yeah. a little funny, but um but that said, um, I think I'm closing in on 870, so I'm moving in the right direction of 1,000. Devin, you're getting close. Where are you at? I think like 920 maybe. 920? There you get there. Nice. Rick, you just uh, – what would you do? You just passed 620 or something? I'm still in that six – yeah, whatever, Mark. I don't, I don't do much like you guys. Like I just – whatever. I don't make any effort. <laughs> Just you know, you while. spend all your time joining other people's streams. So. Pretty and, much. Um, Eli, where are you at? You're up there. You pushing two? My videos never get any views, so I don't really understand. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. What do you have sub-wise, though? Do you know? I oh, like 1,300 or something. Oh, 13? Which is weird to me because I'm like, oh, where are all these people? <laughs> yeah, right. I get right. like the same 20 people to watch my videos, and that's probably, that's cool. yeah. But it's fun. We got OG Press over there. He's like the king fucking hoo ha <laughs> guy, you know. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but yeah I, man, I support. Is... I support all you guys, man. No, That's you funny. do, dude. You do, man. We uh, we have had a lot of fun over the year doing uh, the last year and a half, probably doing the deep dives, doing the fucking um, you know, the forgotten metal gem stuff, which. We literally, when we started, was going to be what was it called? Do you remember, Rick? Something of the eighties. What was it called? Uh, forgotten shit, bands know. of the eighties, or forgotten band. I don't know, whatever it was. But forgotten like gems that. of the eighties. Yeah, I don't remember, but it was like we we probably figured we'd do like one or two of those, and that was the end, right? And um, but hey, Aldo Nova made it happen. <laughs> <laughs> Aldo Nova willed us to further episodes, right? Oh my God, and dude! Now, I man, our hours in Aldo Nova for hours of Aldo Nova, one hundred and fifty views. Said no one ever. <laughs> no, nah, hey man, I love that first Aldo Nova album. I like second yeah. album too. It was actually Kick X, by the way, not Aldo Nova. <laughs> What's that? It was Kick X. No, Kick X was just the last one. We that was the last one. Kick X. Yeah, we dude. did the first one was. Zebra, Aldo Zebra. Nova, and uh, Stone Fury. Yeah. And then we did uh, Fifth Angel, Icon, and Omen, Yeah, I think. And in that interim, we've done a shit ton of shit. I think our Crim Crimson Glory one was the best one, probably. Oh, that's right. Yeah, which... Shit, I forget which one that was on, but yeah. Yeah, we've done, we've done a lot I think of fun was, ones. Was that with Nasty Savage? No, it was with Keel. Keel. Keel and someone else. Oh, Savage Grace. Savage Grace. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then the the guy that promotes Savage Grace started chasing <laughs> me down for an interview, 
with that <laughs> guitar player. And I'm like, man, oh my I, don't, God, dude. I don't know if I want to interview that guitar player. The guy that sounds like this, like <laughs> his voice has been destroyed. <laughs> and I don't know, that guy like was selling like fucking fake cancer treatment to people that were dying of cancer treatments back then. Yeah. It's a weird, totally weird story, man. And then today we do the uh, we do the Warrior Soul thing, and I get to recount how Corey Clark just fucked me off when we were supposed to do an interview, right? Ah, such fun oh, yeah. Good times on, just, on YouTube. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt. What happened with Corey Clark? Corey Clark? Last May, um, myself and – do you know where Eric Bauer is? Eric Bauer? Yeah, yeah. So – Eric and I did a deep dive on Warrior Soul. And we Eric was just kind of straight up. He's like, man, some of these lyrics are really juvenile and, you know, kind of coming at it from a bit of a perspective of not the 90s and coming at it from a 2000s, 20s perspective on lyrics. Okay. You know, there's some of the lyrics that are – probably things we wouldn't say now readily okay. but Corey used some words that were you know of the era right yeah. right and 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 eric just kind of he didn't go off on it. he's just like yeah i don't know these lyrics are really banal and they're stupid and blah 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 well we posted this thing and then i got it in my head hey i'm gonna reach out to Corey clark and see if i can bring him on and do an interview well I included the deep dive thing because I didn't think it was very, I just didn't think it was like very attacking or aggressive or anything. Well, Corey watched it and he didn't like it at all. And he started <laughs> writing comments in the comment section. You guys are fucking retarded. You guys are stupid. You know, it's like, okay. what dude? Like really? And I like hit his, I hit his press agent up who was his <laughs> Who was his girlfriend, basically, right? Shocking. And she, um, she's like, "Yeah, Corey." I said, "What's going on? Are we doing the interview tomorrow?" And she's like, "I don't think it's a good idea." I'm like, well, "What's the deal?" And she's like, "Well, Corey's fine with you, but your your uh, partner in that, he's not real cool with." I'm like, "All right, whatever. Then we'll just cancel it." So, and okay. what sucked, what sucked was. I went to delete the stream I had set up for him and I do this interview. Oh, yeah. And I wiped out like three other streams that I had that were like enslaved was one and a deep dive we did. The I wiped out the, the Warrior Soul deep dive. So I lost like three videos. And yeah, so it's funny. When we were talking about Johnny and I tonight, I'm like, we have a little bit of history. He and Corey Clark and I. and just, okay. you know, But I still stand by the fact that the first three albums of Warrior Soul are fucking amazing. I, I'm with you. I, I actually like the. What did the What did they change the uh, title of the Chinese Democracy album to? Um. Yeah, what is that called? Fuck, I forgot. But that album's not bad. It's solid. I really like that one. Yeah. After that, I. Well, yeah. after that, dude, it's not good. Uh -huh. And. I'll tell you what, one of the best albums they did was the Space Age uh, Playboys after yeah. Yeah. it was essentially the fifth Warrior Soul album. But then, right. you know, I mean, you know, I don't want to I don't want to shit all over the guy, but a lot of the new albums sound like very poorly produced ACDC albums that should never be listened to. So, you know, that's yeah. that's where I come from. So, all right. Hey, I'm going to end it here and then we can you can hang out for a minute and we'll We'll wrap up. But everybody that was in here, Roger, Roger, sorry, Roger, AZ, Mick, Peter, who else is here? Earache, My Eye, Frederick, Mike, I think he dipped out a while ago. So a lot of these guys, I don't know who all these people are, 14 people watching this. Um, yeah. But we appreciate you, and uh, thanks for being here tonight. And hopefully uh, we drop some titles on you you weren't aware of. Yeah. And uh, you might check some of them out. And I think that's kind of it, right? Yep. And hang on, guys. End stream. Stop. Oh, shit.